We will start the talk with correspondent of the writing. Correspondent number one between Gabriel Abraham and Ken Kaimarat. This one here, too. The symbol is released by the English of the Star Nation there, which got it from the opposite of Barcelona. Here, Kiao, Ken John, and Gary Richard of the Star at 10, 3. So, a little bit of a new request in our team with Abraham and Gabriel Abraham, the Australian and Kaimarat. The boys will squat in our game, but they want to have a squat in our game. That will stand by as no risk in our game, you know. The game will be on the other side of the side of my side. But for now, for now, for now, let's see if it's going to be a normal game for 30 minutes. For the squat in our game, it's going to be a game. 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 Starts the start of the competition area. Ten minutes at the stretch. Ten minutes to start. Competition is on for a 7-0-3 start. Here is the first heat on the latest quarterfinal between the Alliance, Gary Alabrian, and the Australian, Tyler Wright.
Good morning from Portugal, a crisp and bright Tuesday morning. Starry skies overnight, puffing offshore winds greeting us this morning at the break of Super 2 bus for the Mia Ripco Pro Portugal, presented by Corona. And with some freshness in the air, the world's finest surfers limbering up, all smiles, anticipating a crucial day of competition down a quarter final stage. Getting towards the pointy end of things, game faces on and a clean ocean greeting the world's best. And joining myself, Paul Evans, in the studio to talk you through this morning's action. Kaipo Guerrero, Shida Wazalewski. How are we feeling, chaps? Um, feeling great, right? We made so much progress yesterday, getting through 24 heats. We have it set up for the quarterfinals. I mean, we're 14 heats away for a men's and a women's champ, so feeling really good about it, Paul. Shida, how do you like your eggs in the morning? Uh, scrambled on a roll. With a kiss. Yes, thank you. Uh, you know what, though, this morning I went down to the beach and from eye level, looks really fun out there. Let's find out exactly what's happening this morning. AJ is with Renato. Good morning, you guys. Renato, really important moment in this competition. Give us the call for today. Yes, uh, AJ, the call is starting at 7.03, as announced, and um, with the women's quarterfinal, we went, went back to normal hits at 30 minutes due to the conditions. Conditions dropped further than we expected. So we're guaranteeing to the surface the quarterfinals today. We'll monitor closely the conditions. We have that 10 a.m. low tide. If we manage to go through and the swell holds it, we might finish the event today. If not, we have the backup plan tomorrow. Another west swell comes, hits the Portuguese coast on a four to five foot range. We have to deal with winds as we have to deal today uh, as well. So fingers crossed we can do it today. If not, backup plan tomorrow. All right, so there you have it. We're guaranteed some women's and men's quarterfinals. We'll send it back to you in the booth to call it. Thank you very much, AJ. The update from Renato. Their quarterfinals are on right now. Women first out in the water. And we will be looking at Gabriella Bryan 
at Hawaii, taking on Tyler Wright, two-time world champ from Australia. And look at those velvety smooth conditions on the wave face, the wave height. We've lost a little bit of that. Opportunities out there this morning. We've been watching the free surf. There's waves, various spots up and down the beach. It's going to be really interesting to see some of this positioning and some of the tactics from the women. And a moment we could be looking at finals day, as Renato was saying. We don't know. We're just going to have to make the course, Kuiper. Basically, there's a lot that could happen with swell, tide, wind. <laughs> Gabriella Bryan keeping her feet up in the uh, cold air right now. Great surfer from Kilauea, right? She took out Molly Picklum, rankings leader in the last round. So let's see if she continues on that rampage that she's been running through here. So half hour heats, of course, no overlapping format. Just your standard half hour for these two women, best waves. And that will find them a spot in semis. And at the moment, we're just gonna see what unfolds in terms of conditions. Talk of a little more swell potentially coming through tomorrow. We'll see exactly what happens today. If it looks fun throughout the day, we'll just keep on going. That tidal swing will be a factor for the moment. We're in the pretty good part of the tide. And we saw that have such a dramatic effect throughout yesterday. Really changing conditions dramatically and delivering us well, throughout a long day some incredible moments. And this morning's about regathering that energy. Taking on some of the info that our surfers would have seen go down yesterday in some of those ways where they were caught and trying to bring it back this morning on a, on a chilly morning strider. Yeah, it's definitely a lot colder and, you know, a little crispy. But, you know, when it's crispy, that I feel like we're going to get the sun coming out and warming up in the daytime. It's a, a typical European morning on a clear sky. You can see the, the result there. Her best result, Gabriella Bryant, was at Margaret River, that runner-up finish. This is her best result so far at this location uh, at, at in Portugal at Super Tuba. She's got pre, pre, uh, previously two nights. So Gabriella Bryant, I mean, I think she's coming into new territory and has uh, certainly has some momentum after that tremendous win over Molly Picklum. Um, so we'll see. But I, I feel right now it's kind of like a standoff on who's going to pull the trigger first and, and, and get the first wave with this open priority, Paul. Time to have a peep at our surf line forecast and see what's in store for us. And you got to say, so far, really, it's been pretty spot on, actually. Very accurate forecast from what was a big storm and now much cleaner conditions. Yeah, leftover clean conditions on Tuesday. And, um, you know, we're, we're looking at another little bump coming in for Wednesday. So, you know, that's a good thing. We get a, get a little bit of wind with that, though. So that, that could be the only problem coming from the south. Uh, it's supposed to start out kind of southeast, but then coming around a little bit more south. So. You know, as that day plays out, it could change things. Yeah, you see the winds right there? Offshore in the morning today, this afternoon. That's the what we're looking at is light onshore winds. However, wave face is staying the same. Three to four foot. It's really the tide that's going to be the factor for, for most of the day as far as the call. Looking at the long term here. A bump up. Three to five, four to six. And so, Paul, I really think, you know, when we look at Wednesday, crystal ball for the future, do you want good win or do you want more swell that's gonna be the choice yeah definitely we'll see how that unfolds exactly because we're dealing with a peninsula here and generally speaking those sea breezes that kick up along the coast here it's actually quite a significant little local factor that changes things yesterday afternoon we saw that to great effect as that sea breeze kicked in actually blows offshore here that north wind there's those tides that we were talking about that big coefficient that we're going to have to monitor throughout the day on how that affects conditions nearly 11 feet strider of tide change yeah it's wild and and with the tide change you get these big rip currents that come through the lineup and those rip currents completely change uh where you're sitting and and where the waves are going to approach and where you can do your workout in the, in the lineup so the athletes having to adapt to oh, so many different parts of this playing field Steely nerves right now for both of our competitors, Paul. Just, you know, sitting out there yet to establish any kind of score. Yeah, they're just waiting for something to come through really and fire up and really settle those nerves down and set the tone for this encounter. Potential for a big, big result here and really fire up your 2024 campaign in Portugal. I feel like uh, the, the two surfers are are kind of known as power surfers, but I think Gabriel Gabriel Bryant has 
uh, the number on power in this heat. Uh, so there'll be a difference in, um, you know, that big power gouge on the face. And then I think Tyler Wright has a, a little bit better of an ability to maybe go up into the lip line and get loose and, and throw the tail out a bit. So I think that might be the, you know, we got power against the technical side of surfing, whereas usually it's just power for Tyler that we'd be looking at. Yeah, and, and that's a good point. I mean, I feel that Gabriella Bryant, she's able to exploit that front hand power gouge that she has, but given today's conditions, it looks like it's going to be a little bit more of a soft shoe out there because, you know, you, it's, it's, a delic it's a delicate surf right now, Strider. Yeah, yeah, but like we talked about, the tide is going down, so we'll, the waves will start to kind of cup out. Uh, unfortunately, I think, you know, the, the, the swell is laying down a little bit, so that with that, the consistency might be a little lower than and you know that you want in a heat so i think a good start is going to be everything in this unfortunately nothing yet as this thing ticks away the mental fortitude as well ever a question in a surf event in any kind of condition but when you have to paddle out early morning and sit there in a becalmed ocean and then your preheat visualization of what you thought you're going to do and then all of a sudden the Atlantic has other ideas. It's going to take a bit of that mental resilience. We know all about this woman's Tyler Wright. And she's going to need some of that resolve and some of that steel at the moment just to bide her time. But at the same time, the other flip side of that is nothing really going on. You don't really have any choices. You're not second get, guessing yourself. You just got to be patient. You got to be patient and you got to mind yourself to, to stay warm, right? There we go uh, here, the, her career at Panish. Best finish was a quarterfinal back in 2022. Uh, she had to sit out 2019 uh, with that injury. So she's matching her best finish. But for someone like Tyler Wright, who's very goal driven, certainly she wants to add this to her trophy and a little bit of power right there. That's not going to affect anything, Strider, in that we still have open priority. So you can paddle around as much as you want. The priority has not been established yet. A little bit of almost action there as Gabriella Bryant looked interested. That wave just slipped underneath. Let's see some lines fill in, hopefully bring us a set. Yeah, another thing to, to talk about is, you know, we got three minutes remaining. And when we had the call this morning, I did not see. Usually we get a, a message that says that there's going to be no restarts. We did not get that clause in this morning's call. So... We'll find out, you know, if tours and comps will allow us for those resetting of the clocks if no waves are ridden. Getting down close to 22 and a half minutes remaining in this. No waves ridden. And just a patient game from these two surfers. That is all part of it, though. And they'll be very well versed in slow start to heats. And ultimately, nervous moments as well for those watching on land. Dog Marsh been coaching Gabby Bryan for... A year or so now. I think they started working together in Hawaii last year. And it's been going all right. Gabriella Bryant has been showing us some of the quality that she kind of burst onto the stage with on tour in that big rookie class of 2022. And that result in Margaret River was crucial for her in solidifying her spot and making the cut. We know all about those power turns that she's able to do, those carving maneuvers. And of course, Tyler Wright. Oh, her very well decorated career entering something of a different phase now just in terms of the personnel she's up against and coming up against oh. the young breed she'll be enjoying that so the inside will be with the Australian and Tyler right on a right hander here we're underway Tyler swinging an opening <sighs> wave that one's gonna run away so all she did right there was ensure a restart not happening and so now these two are going to be surfing a 21 minute heat strider yeah uh, and it's interesting to kick out of a wave that you know you've, you've hustled for and not attack the lip yeah um you know i guess maybe just wanting to get down the beach reposition herself or do something there but when you say interesting you mean questionable like yeah, why, because, why not hit the lip? Yeah, you know, that's a, your opening ride, you got a little momentum. It looked like she was winding up a little waft of the tail in the lip line there coming out with a 4.55. You know, just to me, that's a, that would be a better option than kicking out of a wave. To follow up with you, Strider, for sure, because what you did also was you committed to this clock. So getting up to your feet, you committed to no restart. Now you know you have a 20-minute heat. 
the clock is, you know, time management is going to be an issue. And so that's actually a big advantage right now to Gabriella Bryant because she, she can sit with priority, maybe get the only good wave in this ne next 20 minutes and move on to the semifinals. Interesting. Yeah. We're underway here in Portugal. Quarterfinals for the women out in the water right now. The call from Renato. We're going to run quarters women and then men this morning. Beyond that, we'll see. We could be potentially finishing here if conditions cooperate. As Tyler's wife, Lily, looks on. And if it's nervy moments for surfers out in the water, their crews back on the beach. We've seen the emotions go through their faces. Nothing they can do really other than just look on and see what the Atlantic delivers. Here's a straight line of energy, and it's too straight for either of our competitors to be overly enthused and to paddle in for it. Gabby Bryan, top of the peak with priority here, trying to get herself towards the left. She might be deep on it. It's a solid looking wave. All right, here she goes. Gabby Bryan, backhand attack in that morning sunshine. Sticky from the opening turn. The wave will go a little flat and she'll reach towards a section and just about almost running out of steam. Manages to get a turn done. Tyler split the peak, went right, and we catch the end of her ride. So we got our first legitimate numbers coming through. Feeling is that Tyler got the best of that exchange on the, on the split peak, even though we didn't see what Tyler did. We saw the applause from her support squad. And so that's a huge indicator that Tyler was on the right side of the peak there. And uh, we'll get the best. Here she is, Strider. Yeah, looks like a nice, clean wave. Uh, you know, finding multiple maneuvers, great warm up, uh, and, and it's going to work out for her uh, on just that kick out we were talking about and finding a. Um, some space from her opponent, Gabriella Bryant. I feel like it was a big mistake for Gabriella to paddle, um, or not to paddle over and sit on Tyler at that point after she, you know, had established priority in the heat. Because the luck factor of being away from somebody, you give them the opportunity to do what she did. Yeah. So now, you know, she's going to get a better opening exchange score, and now she's sitting in the driver's seat. Yeah, ex great analysis there, Strider. In that. Gabby could have been on that right. And then she would have been, have been in, the ex, in a supreme advantage because she would have taken away from Tyler. She would have had the bigger number and she would have been controlling this heat. Right now, no doubt when Tyler's number comes through, she's going to have the advantage in this opening exchange. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it, it's so interesting, too. You know, you sit in the heat and you kind of have your eyes on a, on a certain peak and an understanding of where you want to sit. But then the game comes into play and, and the strategy of a heat and what you need to do to um, keep your opponent at bay, take away the, their, you know, ability to find a wave while you have priority. And to do that, you really do have to just, you have to stay next to them. Gabriella Bryan has established priority again. She's back in the lineup, numbers in. A bit of a margin on that, two and a half points on the split. Five, six, seven for Tyler. On the right hand are the multiple maneuvers connected up. Gabby, a three, one, seven, a paddle from Tyler again. And here she goes driving down the line. Nice opening carve, snapping into the pocket and then releasing that tail. And now she has a bit of a spring in her step, Tyler Wright. She'll back up that five, six, seven with that wave and a couple of quick scores for her and from nowhere she's gonna have a bit of a lead going here yeah you know like, like we talked about now she's on a little bit of a roll separation of the peak between her and gabby uh and that and you know for her just what we talked about in the beginning of the separation of styles of surfing she's gotten loose in the in the lip she's throwing the tail around there's a pep in her step and it's going to be you know harder for gabriella bryant to get back into the driver's seat of this heat now. Even though she had priority there, she was just too far away from her opponent. And with the, the swell today, there's kind of a long straight line. There's not like a really, uh, a lot of peaks in the lineup. So with that, it's gonna be harder for Gabriella Bryan to do those patented big wild face carves that we love from her, that power gouge. Uh, that's gonna be the separation of styles of surfing. And it's gonna be harder for her to perform that today. So. She's going to have to be on the best waves. Just the flip side to your point, though, with that priority early from Gabby, it's really early in the heat. She's got priority. She, she was kind of sitting on the apex of the peak. If Tyler pops out into the lineup wide, if you go and try and sit on her and cover her, does that look a little bit defensive? I don't know. 
Here she goes. All right, live action here. Oh. And that one will stretch out away from Gabby Bryan. And not a great use of priority for her. We're still waiting for a number to come in for Tyler. But to your point, Paul, it, it is. And But that, this is a heat. We're not trying to, like, catch, you know, the best wave and, and do a video part. We're trying to win a heat. And to win a heat, you have to take away your opponent's ability to be on the best waves. And, and to do that, you have to, you know, you monitor them in the lineup. And, and she has given her two great waves in this heat already. I agree. And, and that's a huge mistake. She's going to pay for a mistake right now, too. Look at the numbers. Yeah, great number for Tyler for her second legit scoring ride. Seven points for her. Meanwhile, back at it, Gabby. And trying to use some of that frustration and put it into maneuvers. So hits the lip. Didn't have loads to work with there. Not a lot of section, really. Just a quick one from her. But nevertheless, it will be a completion. It will help her cause. But the number's a big requirement for her at the moment. Yeah, look at this. I'm not a lot that, that Gabby can do. Just get up in the lip. Nice turn. But the limited opportunity on that wave is going to suppress the score. And she's going to continue to be chasing Tyler Wright um, with the clock ticking down. Yeah, that number that came in for Tyler, the seven, that's a, that's a hefty number in terms of the context, the energy out in the ocean, the scoring opportunities as well to get yourself a seven out here. And that's going to feel great from her point of view, just 14 minutes remaining in this one. Tyler out with priority and a solid lead. Gabby's number's in for six, seven for that one turn. And the requirement for her at the moment, it's eight points is what she needs. Let's see how she goes about putting herself in the lineup, where she's going to sit. This will have, will have been worked out with Dog. What to do, you don't have priority. What part of the wave you're aiming at? You're looking at the right, saw the left. How are you going to sit? But so far, after that slow start, it does seem to be the Australian, the former world champ, two-time world champ, Tyler Wright, in the ascendancy. And Tyler knows now that Tyler has heat control, a big lead as well as priority. She knows how to control the heat, and that's exactly what she's going to do. Good-looking wave here. Yeah, another great-looking choice, and a good extended float from her. She hung it up there for a while, and then made it look good by dropping back in, releasing the tail, and just stomping that one. Unfortunately, no second section, but just showing form and style and control as well. Good read on the ocean. Look, the... The, the technique of, of Tyler is just on point when it comes to riding in the lip line and having control over her equipment. She really stays based out over her board um, and, and can drop the tail of the nose whenever she wants. And really, you know, it's interesting to watch her, her center of balance, and that's where everything comes from. I'm still going to count that as a priority error for Tyler, right, because she did not improve upon her, her position. She did hand control over to Gabriella Bryant. This feels like a crucial priority for Gabriella Bryant. She needs to get going here. Still 12 minutes and change remaining in her first quarter final for the women. Tyler Wright at the moment, she's going all right. More live action from Portugal right after this. Vamos colocar para o 
The Mail Rip Curl Pro Portugal presented by Corona is brought to you by Mail, official title partner of the Mail Rip Curl Pro Portugal, by Rip Curl, the ultimate surfing company, and by Corona. This is living. Welcome back to live coverage of women's quarterfinals. Mayo Rip Curl Pro Portugal presented by Corona. You're watching Tyler Wright at the moment with a bit of a margin over Gabriella Bryan, who's got a work cut out here. She still has priority 10 on the clock, a heat which was slow to start. And it was Tyler Wright really that ramped up the pressure, a couple of quick waves from her. The better of it was the seven. And it feels like a decent cushion. This woman, Gabby Bryant, at the moment needs to go excellent. An eight-point ride is a requirement for her. She's looked thus far a long way off excellence. Well, I feel like she just has to surf a, a nine-minute heat, right? Take each uh, piece of it and looks like Tyler Wright sliding in there on the on the replay of uh, what we missed out during the break. So looking like in, in good form as we've seen her through this heat, but Gabby. All right, here we go, running left for her, really important wave. And she was desperate to get out in front of that section, a tee off on the lip. And yeah, she's, she needs to, re to run, rerun this heat, basically, uh, and, and just try to put it together in, in nine minutes. And she can do that. There's a short paddle distance. Um, she can separate herself from uh, Tyler in the lineup and, and just try to get away and, and hopefully get lucky. But uh, another turn out of this wave, and she's right in it, you know. Um, unfortunately, this wave only gave her the one, and that's not what you need. You need to get at least a couple of turns in. She's going to have to stack up a couple of, you know, seven-point rides will get it for her to see if she can do that. But it's going to be it's going to be hard for her right now to separate herself, find the open space, and, and do the, the work in a short amount of time. Yeah, you can see the concern on mom as well as her coach, her coach, uh, Dog Marsh's face while they were watching that ride. And they know that the situation is still pretty, pretty dark right now. She needs excellent score. Tyler's got priority. Yeah, and, and uh, that all got set by that f those first decisions after priority was established, you know, and sometimes you pay for those, you know, just the first few minutes of the heat. Yeah, she needs to get going in and find some of the fire she showed us um, earlier on in the competition when we we're up at Molly Lester. Of course, that tough heat against Molly Picklam in the yellow jersey. And Gabby Bryan really just opened up the draw by being guns blazing. And a solid, a comprehensive defeat, really, and all power, all action. Gabby Bryan, she needs to find some of this stuff again. Yeah, she opened up 5.73. That was a nice start for Gabby Bryan. Had Molly Picklam. On the ropes, Pickles trying to come back here. This is a 5.1 for Molly Picklum in the yellow jersey, but then this is the deal breaker for Molly. Sorry about it, because this was a 6.33 for Gabby Bryant, and Gabby, with the upset, taking down the rankings leader with some sharp surfing over there at the East Jetty. So Gabby Bryant opening up the draw by taking down that yellow jersey setting up loads of interesting storylines here in Portugal. One of the storylines she won't be enjoying, particularly at the moment, is the fact that she is struggling hard against Tyler Wright, still looking for an eight. Well, She's coughed that priority by getting that four as well, so Tyler very much in control. Yeah, and Tyler's probably just sitting right next to her, doing what Gabby should have done to Tyler earlier in the seat yeah. when she had the priority, um, and basically gave her that seven-point ride, you know, just a big mistake and on a day like today with the, the swell dropping the opportunities are kind of slim picking so you if you're not on them right away you're you know you're putting yourself in the back seat exactly and here comes the block there you go tyler wright will use priority here on a right hand and looking down the line and just compresses into the lip keeps the speed going and then releases that tail ultimately unsuccessfully. So I'm not sure. A she'll glimpse threaten. of hope. Okay. A glimpse of a glimpse of hope for Gabriella Bryant getting that priority back without the finish from Tyler Wright. So Tyler did the block here. Just floats over that section. Fine. Needs to find some clear water. Needed to make this. Poked the nose. Caught the toe edge. Went down. Go one more time. I feel like Gabriella Bryant did her job right there, though, sold that wave, because the wave wasn't great. It had a little open face on it, but not a lot of substance. Uh, and so if Gabby can, can capitalize, she now needs to surf 
a five and a half minute heat. Brian Let's again go. on the left, loading up from the high line and then an opening turn. Just belts one and whips it. There's the combo she's been looking for. Uh, I like it. I like it. I. You don't think that's a complete? That was my. That's my that's question. A, that's that's a question mark. That was, there, that was my question mark exactly. Um, when we're looking at this, we're going to take another look at what Gabby was able to do. I mean, she's solid. Sweet, sweet carve, but this finish. Got to ride in front of that white water. I'm giving it to her. Let's go, Gabby. Nice first turn where she's, you know, getting some energy out of the back there and then goes to the, the decision to go vertical instead of more lateral, which I like. And I think that, you know, for me, it's a, it's a make. I feel like she's, you know, done the work. Well, I think. Gabrielle would be loving if you were one of the judges right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all would. We all would. <laughs> Who wouldn't love that? <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll see. Gabriella Bryan looking for an eight-point ride. I don't think we saw that, but let's see where it puts her in the context of this heat when the score comes through. She's not going to hang around for that number, though. She'll keep hunting out here. Four minutes and 20. Time to get to work for her. Just catch waves, keep surfing, find opportunities out here. But at the moment, she, yeah, she she needed. She, we, yeah. we, we took break. Look, look into <laughs> like, did she did she did she not ride out there? But overall, what she what she really needed was just a ride that gave the overall impression of there we go. Yeah. Anytime she finishes that ride, you think mm, the maybe that, that, the, that circuit, the bobble didn't do her any yeah, favors. Nah, that second turn was incomplete. The judges already said, already gave us the number. Three point two for her doesn't go in her top two. And again, it feels like at every stage in this heat. Whether she's made a slight error, whether she's just not maximized the opportunity available to her, there were more points than that on that wave, and she was unable to really maximize. We'll check out Betty Lou. Last instructions from Ross Williams as she'll head down for a great looking matchup. Second quarter taken on a former winner here, Tatiana Weston Webb. Betty Lou has looked so good so far this year. Tatiana will want to have something to say about that rekindle that winning formula that she's shown us here 2022 it's coming up in just over three minutes time at the moment it looks like tyler wright's heading to semi-finals unless gabby bryan can get into the excellent range yeah didn't get a look at uh sakura's board i know she's been riding a bunch of different boards I didn't, yeah i didn't see that one it was she's been, she's been on an almeric okay throughout this event okay so okay she's looking really good um, I saw Britt Merrick in the in the area. He came in a little bit late, but he was here all day okay. yesterday. Yeah. So two minutes 40 to go. Tyler with priority. Gabby trying to find a bit of room, trying to find an option. She's deep on this one. Now Tyler will take it. Here she goes on the left hand. A great looking wave. Look at this steep face from her. A nice hit. Again, good rhythm to the surf. It doesn't need to do too much. Thinking about a backup of five, six, seven, trying to improve on that and make things really tough. They're already pretty tough for Gabby. Eight point still that requirement. She'll have priority now, though. Yeah, it, it's going to be hard to yeah. come up with a score that big. Um, she'd have to get the wave of the morning. Yeah. And uh, with a couple minutes left, it's and and the pressure of it all too at the moment. You know, she's she hasn't looked comfortable this entire heat. She's. I only had one good clean turn where she went, you know, on that a forehand to make it look good. Tyler, on the other hand, has been in control the whole time, looking strong, just really clean rails, which is what, you know, you wanted to impress the judges with just good, solid fundamental surfing that she doesn't need to go crazy right here. She's in such a great position in the heat that just keeping her opponent off of this wave was enough, but the cherry on top was going for a couple of really nice turns to finish through the wave. Yeah, Tyler can already just start thinking about her semifinal at this point. Looking really, really good. Her form on that wave, so much control from her and just doing enough in this heat to put a bit of a margin and make it something 
I'm going to say one way traffic, but really Gabby never really getting into this final minute for her now. Still looking for the eight. We're still waiting for a number for Tyler. If she improves, that number will go up. Gabby in all sorts of trouble right now. Quarterfinals. Is that a good result on the women's tour? Uh, Finals that, day. Yeah, it, yeah it'll, it'll, it'll keep you above water. When we look at that, when we look at the, the mid-season cut, it will keep you above water. It'll keep you on the upside of that cut line. So, yeah, you'll take a quarterfinal going into Australian Lake. Final 30 seconds for her. Still hunting down at least an eight. Gabby Bryan here. Final chance for her. Decent looking right hand and nice and steep. Good speed from her. She'll load up off the bottom hard. Beautiful wrapping carve on that rail. Incisive again. Another one, bit more venom. This is what we needed to see earlier on in this heat. A third turn with some spice to it too. So she got herself a wave and asked a question, but she really needed one of those to build a platform much earlier on in that heat. Yeah, and, we, and we'd have to compare that to Tyler's seven, right? So this is the gouge that we were waiting for, that forehand power turn that Gabby's got. And she links it up with some quick feet and three big dynamic maneuvers. I, I would have to compare that to the seven strider and see if that's a point better than that Tyler seven. I think it's definitely better. Yeah. It's just a matter of where they go with it. Um, but that was exactly yeah. what we were waiting for yeah. out of Gabriella finally finding her feet and her flow and going into that big gouge and really comfortably tearing that wave to pieces. So fun to watch. And we'll see where the that score drops in at. Tyler's number. Her last wave came in as a 5-5, five, five, so she didn't improve. So situation remained the same. It was the eight that Gabby was chasing. And she got herself a wave of 20 on the clock. She ripped that wave, actually. That was well surfed. Yeah. But she kind of needed two of those. So let's see. Eight, the requirement. We're comparing that in our minds to the seven. Yeah. I'm really trying to think back on that seven-point ride and what Tyler did. I think it was three turns as well were they as big as that no though? there was there was nothing like that gouge right? nothing like that gouge i mean that even that second turn had yeah. like a lot of viciousness in it but uh, doesn't look like the judges no, not uh, even close you know like no, it numbers in for gabby six six for her comes up short i think dog will have a few things scroll down in that notepad and it d did certainly seem like ultimately the right handers were the ones one wave you know, she just, she just well, so there we go. Tyler Wright is through to semi-finals here in Portugal. And her season, which didn't kick off great in Hawaii, is looking a lot better here in Europe. More live action, quarterfinal number two, Betty Lou and Tati, right after this. Molly and Betty have grown up sparring against each other their whole lives. They bring this intensity together, which I think is going to be amplified in this heat. She's a great competitor. She's hard to beat. She's got some little tricks up her sleeve. Betty Lou is all fireworks. Sakura is so competitive on anything. Yes. She likes to get the claws out. She's like a spicy one. 
She's crazy. She's feisty. I'm spicy. She's like gonna do whatever she wants to get what she wants, and then all of us are like, well, we will we'll do that too then. Me and Molly like love to compete against each other. We have a great understanding of where we're coming from and how bad we want to get there, and whatever it is, we're gonna like fight for it. New rivalries unfolding on the championship tour. Get more insights into them inside Pro Surfing. Meanwhile, let's check out live action in the water. Quarterfinal number two, Betty Lusakura Johnson from the North Shore of Oahu taking on Tatiana Weston Webb of Brazil. And these two have big prize ahead of them here. It's all in front of them in chance again, very deep into this and looking to set up for a win here in Portugal. When you get to quarters, you gotta be thinking, guys, I'm all about going all the way, taking out the W. Yeah, let's take a look at the analytics for these two. Tatiana Weston Webb, she's, she was a champion in 2022. Portugal, she has a 64% heat winning percentage. She served 14 heats in Portugal. She's won nine of those 14s. Sakura, 40% heat winning percentage here in Portugal. She's only served five heats and has two wins out of those heats. And this is the first time, Paul, that these two have been matched up head to head in a CT event. Half an hour for them to get two ways. Strider, right or left? What are we favoring this morning from what we've seen? Yeah, definitely the right. I feel like, um, you know, it's got a nice wall on it. You, 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 that's where the points have come through on, on the score line so far. But we also had two regular footers in that first heat. So, you know, we, we've got a goofy footer in the heat now. And we, we'll see what, can, what kind of damage she can do on the left. When it is a little softer and running like this, how hard is that to surf on your backhand if you're Tati, though? You know what? I, I think Tati kind of has an advantage on the backhand because you can get more vertical in, in, the, in the sections. Um, and I feel like that's a, that's a plus for her. It's just, you know, like it's going to come down to that, that heat management like we saw in that first heat. It's just about there's not a lot of waves. There's not a lot of opportunities. You're going to have to surf a really smart heat. And at this level, you cannot make a mistake that like we saw Gabby well, make. That's what I was going to ask you, Kyber. It does feel like when it comes to quarterfinal stage, mistakes will be punished, and that's exactly what we saw in the first one. Uh, yeah, and then and, and it allows your uh, competitor to to exploit that mistake, right? And to make you pay for any kind of mistake that you make. Here goes Sakura. She's going to get the, oh, no. Well, still open priority remains. Second wave, uh, Sakura took herself kind of out of position there. And it's going to be Tatiana. On the left here, tight bottom turn. Oh, releasing those fins, recovering really well. And again, setting up on a smaller face snap for her. And another little tag to finish. So a well surf left hander from Tati. We'll see how that affects the rhythm of this heat. We're just saying, you know, that mistake by Sakura for that paddle, set this up for Tatiana. Tati just really um, was fortunate to have a wave that had a shoulder on it because, you know, doing a turn like that, she got to recover and come back and finish the wave. Um, and that's something that, you know, this morning we've had a lot of straight handers, really hard to actually find a wave with this much opportunity on it. So great wave selection for Tatiana. And I think she capitalized well on that. I, I, I like the fact that she pushed really hard on that first turn um, and kind of almost hey, had to recover. You know, the fins came out. She got a little bit loose right there and then almost came off the back foot. So, you know, great core strength, got it back around, and then the wave was there for her to finish. Nice work. High risk surfing from Tatjana West and Webb. And the board doing so much on that opening turn. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of boards, she's on a, a Felipe Toledo, a 77 model from Sharp Eye. Here goes Sakura. Loads of speed on this left. What she got here into the lip, late into that lip and really squaring up against it. That was always going to be a tough one. And by the time she got there, unable to ride out of that. It will be an advantage to Tati. Good looking wave, though. Good looking wave, but did not execute on this wave. Still plenty of time, but you can see trying to be patient here, make it happen. Let's see what went wrong. Yeah, just late on the heels on the landing and unable to make the completion for Sakura. And since we're speaking about boards, Sakura, I got from the CI camp, you're right, Strider. She's on a uh, Channel Islands. She's on a CI Pro. 
and it's five, uh, five foot six and a half. A half. Does a half inch matter really with with a five six or five six and a half? I think everything matters. I, I feel like point one liters. Yes, it I, matters I, I, that I, one little yeah. bit. I feel like, and, and and whether the number just makes you feel better yeah. mentally, that's that's all that matters, right? It, it, it almost seems like it's a, it almost seems like it's a new trend where guys are getting five tens and a half, five eleven and a half, five six and a half. Cool, things are getting dialed in. Ross is going to have a heat win here. Yeah, yeah, he's got friendly fire, right, in this <laughs> in this heat. Good point. He's got Betty Lou and Tatiana on his roster, so Ross is going to be successful. That's why he was up there smiling. Must be tricky coaching, to, to, you know, two of the people in your camp when they're coming head to head. Like I said, this is the first time they've matched up in championship tour competition, but that must be tricky for a coach, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. And you're dealing with, I guess, pretty distinctly different personalities as well. And a lot of stuff, we call them coaches. And it's interesting really to dial in how much of that is really the technical aspect of surfing, how to do your turns, what wave to catch, and how much is kind of simplifying the process and knowing what gets a person going, what one athlete needs is, is different from another one. It's about people, ultimately. Yeah, right? the job's I about mean, people. we call them coaches, but they're sometimes cooks, psychiatrists, board board carriers, board repairers, wetsuit dryers. 21 minutes and 20 seconds to go in this. It's Tatiana with the advantage of the 4-5. Let's go and hear from our first semi-finalist. Tyler Wright is with AJ. Tyler, what a way to start the morning. Your first semi-finals of the year in your 100th CT. What did it take to get it done? Um, you know what, today was like, because it's so early, it's, and it's quite dark before we go out, so you can't quite see as much as you would like, so I kind of just going off like bank research that I've done over the last few days, and like when it was not stormy, um, and so, yeah, like I know Gabs are like, she's a fierce competitor, and I have a lot of respect, and she's also a powerhouse, so I kind of knew that if I could just get a couple where I, I connected on, um, and then, honestly, just be, try and be really smart, really selective uh, through the back end. You shared with us the last time we talked about everything you went through this off season and how you're having to sort of manage extra thoughts in, in heats than you have had in the past. In a situation like this with the semifinals on the line, how do you do that? Um, honestly, it's like I think the best way to, for me to explain it is like it's learning to like work with a new system work with my brain and kind of also it's like giving me like a lot more choice and what I and how I want to compete and I feel like sometimes you know like I've been doing this for a while and, it, and it's hard I don't have the same drive as when I was younger and obviously with all the changes going on like it means I'm a lot calmer as well um, most of the time but like I also have access to like my prefrontal cortex more than I've ever had so it's kind of like managing that and also like giving me something to do um, and something to think about. And I feel like it was actually the heat the other day that kind of showed me how I, I love to compete and I haven't done it in probably since 2016, 2017. And like, it was such a like, um, I don't know. It was honestly like, I talked to my wife about it. She's like, honestly, that was the fun. It looks like the funnest you've had in years. And I was like, yeah, that was just, I love going to work and I love being able to like clinically do that and um, and then kind of leave work at the office and then go and live my life. And so it's been, yeah, it's kind of like figuring out how to work a new system and what I feel about it, how I think about it. And yeah, it's fun. It's frustrating at times when it's, but now, yeah, like it's, I'm figuring it out. It's going to take a process. The system's firing on all cylinders this morning. Congrats, Tyler. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thanks, AJ. Tyler Wright is reconnecting with us, surfing with her, competing, enjoying herself here in Portugal. She's through two semis. Who's she going to face? One of these two at the moment, Tatiana. We saw this during the interview. Another left for Tati. Yeah, you know what? Buckets out the back, and I feel like Tatiana was uh, really smart in identifying the best waves of the heat so far and it's really really giving yourself the best opportunity i mean to have a a, a wave offer up multiple maneuvers like that again 
um, just shows you that she's being very, you know, she's done her homework. She sees the part of the bank she wants to sit on, and, and she's finding uh, an opportunity to smash it up. Here's a replay of Betty Lou. Betty just just not feeling that flow yet. You can see it in her surfing. She hasn't, like, on her first wave, she came up, and she was a little bit late to it. Um, and then didn't compress and push out over the flats. And then here, you know, she, she comes up, but she's just off on her timing. So when she comes back in, the nose catches. And that's just not the kind of surfing you want to do on finals day. Pushing hard is Betty Lou, unable at the moment to find these completions and these connections here. She's still looking for a score. Meanwhile, great number in for Tatiana Weston Webb. Seven, eight, three, multiple visits to the lip for her on a running left-hander. Just kept providing sections, and she was good enough and aggressive enough to go at it. Seven, eight, three, solid. I gotta, I mean, I'd have to, like, start thinking about pressure on a day. Like today, third event of the year, you've done so well to start the year. Are you thinking about trying to get that yellow jersey on your back kind of a thing, you know, if you're Betty Lou and, and you know, she's got a, a second and a third. I mean, she's really ripping in to this, this season. Uh, this is a, a really crucial heat for her in the scope of it. Yeah, huge, huge opportunity. But you got to overcome something like this. Look at this 7.83 for Tatiana Weston Webb. Utilizing the forehand again. And Paul, just sharp, crisp, beautiful snaps. Yeah, really nice. I'll tell you the other thing about Tati as well. We can see from this angle pretty well on replay. After she does good turns, she gets that little kind of wicked grin as she resets to go into the next section as if she's really enjoying what the wave just continues to provide for her. And just relentless, really. I mean, the, talk about surfing the critical section, the way the steepest part. She's all over that. Every time this wave offered a steep section, she belted it, maintains the speed, the control throughout, and showing us glimpses, really, of that 2022 Tati that was all the way for a victory here in Peniche, Portugal. And a great way to kick things off this morning. Slower heats, there are longer lulls, there are gaps, and there is that headspace that's going to come to play. And when you've got the points on the board, you can breathe much easier. Yeah, when you talk about heat control for Tatiana Weston, we have a big lead. She's got Sakura in a combination to add on to that. She has priority. She is just controlling everything right now. And it seems like quarterfinal number two is another one-sided affair uh, to get the day going, Strider. Yeah, 100%. Um, and, and like we, we, we talked about a little bit, it might be that added pressure of being wanting to be number one in the world or thinking about that. Um, you know, who's to say that's the, what's going on in her head right now? But we haven't seen her kind of this kind of off kilter all event. Time for a bonsai brew break, a chilly morning. Leo and Ramsey are checking things out. Men's quarterfinals, they're coming up soon. Join us some more live action from Panish real soon.
rekindling that winning feeling from 2022 is the job of work facing Tetchana Weston Webb here. Fond memories for her. She was aggressive into the lip belting sections and really such an intense competitor. And we saw that in this display from her. Didn't matter who she was up against, absolutely ripped this wave apart. And she was delighted to get a win out here. A really cool moment in her career. And it set her up for the last couple of seasons as a world title contender and flying that Brazilian flag with pride. I tell you what, she's going all right in this one and kicking off some of that vintage form already in this heat. 783, the high number for Western Webb. And she's all over Betty Lou at the moment, who's struggled, got nothing on the board. She's caught two ways, fallen off on both of them. Tatiana, on the other hand, just two ways ridden for her. And they're both scores 12 3, three her total, pretty decent numbers. Just going to shadow, you know, right now with that priority and, and really just play this thing down and don't give your opponent any room. Take away their options and make sure that you can uh, capitalize on on a moment if it happens. Betty Lou's best interest here would just be to, you know, sell her on a wave, get some space and try to open up after that. Uh, it's going to it's going to be hard. Not, not a, a crazy amount of opportunities out there as the tide goes down, as the swell kind of s sucks away from the coastline. Yeah. And, and for Tatiana, we rolled into this heat with that vision of 2022 when she was able to win out here. Today seems pretty similar to that finals day back in 2022 for Tatiana Weston Webb. And you can see that touch of south wind Ooh. out the back there kind of approaching you see how glassy the inside is and the outside waters have a little bit of uh, a ripple on it uh, that's on its way here so you know we've been, that's forecasted to arrive as the as the low tide happens just thinking at this stage in the heat if you are betty lou what we've really appreciated from her this year is just how aggressive she's been and she's been posting huge numbers there's no safety surfing from her she's all attack whether it's deep barrels whether it's massive turns the two ways she's had in this heat, she's kind of drawn out those bottom turns and really attacked the lip pretty hard, and, it, and it's not worked out for her. I'm just wondering, does she start to think in her own mind if she gets another wave, maybe just go a little safer, maybe just try and get this multiple turns in? Yeah, it's, uh, soft shoe, right? Like sometimes you got to dance the soft shoe. You can't always have, you know, uh, you can't always be stomping with the tap shoes, making a bunch of noise and stuff. Sometimes you have to put on the ballet slippers and just kind of <laughs> <laughs> soft shoe around it. I'll, I, I will say that when you when you back off a swing in golf, it doesn't look right. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like it's, it can be the same thing here. I think I think she just got to go for it. It's finals day. Or, you know, she's in the quarterfinals. Let's see if she can get something done. Let's find out. Here goes Betty Lou on a nice looking right hander into the lip. This wave a touch softer. It will be multiple maneuvers, but it's sticky on the second one. So she'll go in, complete the wave, just flattened out underneath her. That's part of the reason why Tati was happy to let it go. Not the number she was looking for. Yeah, nah, no, not at all. You, you could see almost at that last turn, the board just stopping and almost, almost like pushing water. At the same time, she'll get a small number in for it, but in 20 minutes out there, that's the first time she's actually finished a wave. So at, at, at one point, that's going to feel better to build up a bit of flow. I mean, she's paddled in for two, and she's ended up underwater on both of them. So at least she was able to finish a wave here and get some speed going down the line, but a two, not really the number she's after. Yeah, this is where I want to check it out. Just that, you could see, you know, there was, it just stalled. I have to say that the, the CI Pro that she's riding has yeah. a lot of tail rocker, and she's been riding waves that have a lot of power yeah. and a lot of curve in them, and the, the you know the playing field's changed a lot. So maybe that board a little bit different for her. She needs to you know try and find those waves that are going to continue to cup out because she's she's good when it's hollow, and, and that's what she needs to stay on those waves that have the the. A cup in him that she can utilize that tail rocker on. You read my mind. Yeah, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Strider, on, on that. Here's uh, but she's had a good year, Paul. Look at look at her results coming into stop number three. Absolute banger of a season for her early on in Hawaii. Semis and a final 
That's really, really solid from Betty Lou, and she's been around for a couple of years. Amazing to think she's still just 18, which is kind of wild, really, just how cool yeah. she is and how collected. Yeah, and that's why she has 16 on her jersey. That's when she qualified for the championship tour. She's come a long way, and, and you know, as a 16-year-old when she qualified, she had to make a decision whether to continue her high school <laughs> education at Wailua High School. They don't have an online program, and they, she had to just, like, you know, it was a fork in the road for, for a youngster. Like, okay, am I, am I gonna, I, I made the championship tour. Am I gonna commit to this lifestyle? Am I gonna commit to this job and walk away from normal high school life? Uh, yeah, that's a, that'd be a, you know, hey mom, <laughs> what do you think? Uh, but uh, yeah, there's a, another youngster, but Caroline Marks, a world champ. Yeah. Woohoo! Talk about that. The youth brigade is just amazing right? on the women's side at the moment. Just how much, you know, strength is coming. She's coming up against a veteran in Lakey Peterson. Yeah, Lakey with a couple of finals appearances here at Panish. So uh, that's going to be an exciting one. Here goes Betty Lou on a left this time, and that's much better stuff from her. Again, tagging it from the bottom of the wave, nice and vertical. And she'll deal with the end section as well. So her best wave for sure. It won't be the perfect 10. She needs to go to first. But it will certainly help her cause. It will bring down the requirement as well. And it could set us up for an interesting remaining six minutes. I like this. Um, uh, she put, placed the board where it needed to go. Although there wasn't much behind the turns, the, she definitely had um, you know, a good positioning on the wave, which is great for you know, Betty Lou. And it definitely has changed her tempo in the heat for me. She's going to now have enough time to get back out there and back it up to you know, put herself in a much better position to have a chance at, at winning this heat and, and continuing a role that's just been phenomenal for the young Hawaiian surfer. Yeah, she's right back in it, like you said, Strider, and uh, you can see the needs have changed a lot less for Sakura. Yeah, very achievable for her. She needs a six, six, seven, because she's just got a five, six, seven, so bringing that total right down. We're game on here. This is the kind of heat we we're expecting from the start. She has not been at the races at all in this one, but right now, she won't have priority, but she can find herself a wave. But, I mean, she caught that wave under priority, right? Because Tatiana was sitting out there with it, so, it was definitely, you know, there was a question there of whether Tatiana had to make that decision. Do I let her go or not? Is this going to better my position? Um, you know, defense. Now she's probably thinking, I'll, I'll sit around, try and hold out. She's going to go again here. Go for the right this time. Loading up the speed, pulling Whoa. in, traveling. Is she going to come out here? Betty Lou will force her way out of a tight tube. Technical surfing from her. And wow, let's see where this goes with the number. 4.50 remaining on the clock. And she's got a spring in the step she paddles out. You know what was really cool about that? When I, when I was watching it and I watched her take off, it was like a little backdoor bowl that somebody else didn't identify and she did. Do you know what I mean when you, when you see that? That's, that's some keen eye surfing right there and really a, a, a beautiful shot of her executing a well-read wave. Yeah, the one thing, I mean, look at the barrel, looks good. I'm gonna pay attention to the exit here. You know, and, and she's she came out here, she's selling it as a make. That's a make. And jumps off, putting the hands up. I don't know, you called me out on it earlier. No, man. no, I mean, I, I, <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm a, you know, if I, if I even, if my fins even reconnect on an air, I made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if I'm being too critical, Paul, but it would have been nice just to really sell that as as a make. Yeah, I think I, I think it's a make, but I think it, it what's in question is just she was quite low. It was a small tube. She was kind of low in it, and the way she came out took us sort of a while. We saw quite a lot of, of her pushing through the curtain, didn't we? So not the cleanest of exits. Let's see. That's with the panel. The brake is known as super tubes. Yeah. It's in the criteria. Let's see where that one goes. I've not seen barrels ridden for big scores so far this morning. This is a really interesting stage of this heat. I wonder what Tati's thinking at the moment as well. Well, I don't think there would have been any, like, 
crowd roar or indication from the beach. Oh, numbers in. So oh. Betty Lou, it comes in just under the requirement. A 6-5 for her. 6-5. And she's brought the requirement down again because that does replace her high score. 5 eight, four, the number for her. She's clawing back at this. The bad news is under three minutes remaining. Yeah. There's the, here's the numbers here, and we did have a judge out of the five give her the number that she needed to take, to take the lead. So there's the spread from the panel. The average of that, the 6-5, so it just comes up 0.2 of a point short from the requirement to go to first. But really interesting to see how she... Well, we asked the question, we are talking, what, what does she think and what does she do here? Does she change the way she's approaching this heat? What she's done is quite simple. It's just caught waves, basically. So going to the left, multiple turns, and then finding that hollow right and getting a pretty healthy number. Second highest score of the heat for her. So Tati now has let her go a couple of times and she's let her build her score from nothing. What are you going to do with two on the clock in terms of covering and using priority oh. sets approaching oh. here, boys? The plot thickens, especially if there's a couple of waves in this set. All right, here we go. So a bit of a redirect north as these two get the motorboats out and really start trying to put themselves in position. Oh, Betty Lou tried to get on that right, which was actually kind of stretched out and was closing out anyway, but just trying to find a bit of separation. She might be able to sneak away here. Oh, oh that no. was a good way. Wow, so a left just rattles through the peak here, under 90 on the clock. It's still the 2022 champ, Tatiana Weston Webb, at the moment with that lead. She's still got priority as well. But I tell you what, Betty Lou's got a sniff here, and she is looking for an opportunity to go again and find a 5-8-4, so just slightly higher than a low score. We just want more waves to come through. This one's really entertaining. Yes, we do. My favorite part is how close they are in the lineup, and Betty Lou looked over her shoulder, and Tati was just sitting right behind her. Just it was, All she would have gotten was a big blonde flash. Here we go. And the paddle. Let's hope for one to come. So Tati's going to go here for sure. Here she goes, uses her priority on this left, off the bottom, bang, into the lip. Nice spray, nice speed. Again, slightly different turn. And another jams it up, and she likes it. So 30 on the clock. She'll bring this in. 4-5, the low score. Yeah, she li she likely improved uh, on her scoreline with that last effort. Yeah, I feel like she stacked some chips on the table right there on the bet line, and now she's going to wait for Betty Lou to see if she'll see the bet. The way she finished that turn and just straightened out and came in, she wasn't really looking out the back either. It felt like she knew there was, was just that one wave. There was nothing behind it either, and she will be absolutely delighted. She will head into semi-finals, where she'll face a rejuvenated Tyler Wright. That's a great-looking matchup. This is an interesting heat to watch, really. This was a great, well-composed heat from the beginning and right through to the end for Tatiana Weston Webb. Scores built early on in the heat, an extended period of inactivity, and then when it really mattered, made the priority count the final minute of that heat, getting... A solid-looking wave. She will improve the advantage over Betty Lou. It'll be insignificant anyway in terms of the outcome because she was already in the lead. Betty Lou didn't ride another wave. But a semi-final once again here in Paniche for Tati. Actually came in as a 6-0-3. Let's get another look. Yeah, she's just, you know, put every bit of uh, what she had left on the table on the bet line right there. I love it. She just took it down. She knew she was going to stack up a better score and, and, you know, extend her lead over Betty Lou, who was going to make Betty Lou's job even harder. Tatjana Westerweb heads to semifinals to face Tyler Wright. Betty Lou, Sakura Johnson. A stellar start of the season. Quarterfinals a reasonable result. She would have loved to go better. Looking forward to seeing her compete in Australia. We'll keep going with the world champ Caroline Marks taking on Lakey Peterson. We'll bring in Joe and Jesse for the call. Stay tuned.
So right now we have in the water quarter final number three with the rest Caroline Mark and Julian G D Kim Bro, both from US Bank. Good luck for a couple of things. She was the one who could be so long ago. The Ukraine for the moment of the LFJ at Wall Street in the Yacht Caroline Mark. Not to make that. Now let's go ahead and see the G and see the problem. The one who did really turn off. It is the third stop of Rising Tide to the 2024 World Surf League Championship Tour season, and we are here in Peniche, Portugal, at the event site, at Super Tubos. I took up surfing 40 years ago. When I started surfing, we were only like three girls in the whole country. I think it's really important to have this event, and I want to thank WSL for bringing this here. It's hard to describe how much less intimidating it is to paddle out with a group of your girls around you. If Katie Simmers is out there with you telling you, hey, you've got this, go on this wave, you gotta go. Okay, wait, go, 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 go. Woo! Ah! Here in Super Tubos, we're Katie Simmers. The best here for in the world. Yeah. I think that it's just like so much fun to spend time with like the next generation of girls and see that they're all absolutely ripping. It's incredible like where women surfing is right now. Oh, I'm feeling the movement. Like if you look around here, there's so many young girls that are like excited to surf and surfing at a really high level. This year in women's surfing, we have reached a new level and it's undeniable. And here at Super Tubos, it's the next iteration of that because the girls who are coming here to surf today, they saw that at Pipeline and they recognize, oh, this is a moment, this is a movement in women's surfing and I can be a part of it. Rising We absolutely love the Rising Tides program presented by Pura Vida. It means a lot to Betty Lou and Tatiana as they talk about that last quarterfinal. Tati letting Betty Lou back in that heat after she had her comboed. Betty Lou getting the barrel, almost got the score to turn it, but Tati gets the win to take on Tyler Wright in semifinal number one. Caroline Marks now taking on Lakey Peterson, an all USA matchup. Caroline from Florida, Lakey from California, and the spot on the semifinals is on the line. Fun conditions, three to four feet on the face, real clean, light offshore conditions. Incredibly rippable. Lakey and Caroline would have a lot of comparisons to a day like this back home in Southern California. Caroline moved over to San Clemente. Uh, quite a few years back now and Lakey from Santa Barbara but lives in San Clemente as well so they see each other all the time this could just be another day at T Street down by San Clemente Pier Joe Trapella, Jesse Mendez uh, CT standout and joining us for the call once again coming through with uh, some really fun peaky conditions looks like we might get a start but what are you seeing in the waves today I'm seeing a lot of sim um, similarities to two years ago for finals days. Remember when we had actually Lakey in the finals? Um, so she might be feeling very comfortable right there. Gosh, good point. This is a rematch from the final that Lakey and Caroline had together back in 2019. There was a lot on the line that year for these two. Kind of in the same camp, uh, working you know, formally with Mike Parsons back in the day. They've done a lot of mock heats. That year in 2019, there was a spot for the Olympic Games on the line. Caroline got the win in the final, went on to finish in second over Lakey, who finished in third. It was that close at the season finale. Caroline got the spot to represent USA in Tokyo 
2020 as we watch the opening ride from Caroline Marks. Yeah, nice um, first setup right there. She overran the, the wave just a little touch. I think with the water getting a little bit um, less water on the banks, the wave starts to run a lot. But this wave actually was pretty slow on the back. As you see right here, she cuts it short, thinking the wave's going to go down the line. But it was quite slow, so she could have got maybe a little bit more aggressive on that first turn. Second turn was beautiful, though. And then once again, the wave just kept providing. If she got in on timing on that first big turn right there and really put it, um, it down. She was going to be looking to a big score, but still a nice start for her right there. Caroline so quick on a fun size left like that. 5-1-7 to start to take the lead early on here over Lakey Peterson. Let's catch up now with Tatiana Weston Webb with AJ. Yeah, Joey Tati back in the same place she's been for the third straight year now. The semifinals here in Portugal. That heat against Betty Lou. I heard you guys coming up and you said, I can't believe you got a barrel, but there were so many different sort of strategies and waves. How did you pick yours? Um, shoots, I don't know. I just, I just really was focusing on trying to get the best wave and um, just surf solid, not fall. And um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> In a heat like that, when you've had the lead for the majority of the heat and then you see Betty Lou start getting some rhythm back, how do you find yours again towards the end? Yeah, I, I knew Betty Lou was going to fight till the very end. She's such a fighter and I spar with her all the time. And um, obviously because of Ross and John and our team. So um, I just knew it wasn't going to be over until the horn buzzed. And I was like, I just need to stay on top of her because obviously she's super driven right now. She's really feisty. She's surfing so good. And um, I'm just like an older school version. I, I feel like of her except a goofy footer. And um, yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to like use my breathing and my confidence in, in, in that heat and strategy and sit on her and not give her much room. But then all of a sudden she kept coming back and I was like, dang. Got to stay on it. And so, yeah, till the very end, I got that last wave and um, kind of just closed the heat out and it felt really good. As it should. So on to the semifinals before we let you go. Um, você ganhou aqui porque, uh, porque você ama este onda e lugar? Uh, eu amo essa onda porque uh, eu acho que, não sei, eu gosto muito do lugar, eu gosto da onda mesmo. Eu acho que essa onda é bom para mim. E before I go, I just really quickly want to say something in English. Um, happy 60th birthday to my dad. I love you so much, dad. I wish I was with you. Um, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. What a nice birthday present for Pops. Uh, so cool to see Tati in that kind of form. Started off so strong and got exciting at the end when Betty Lou started coming back with the left and then that running barrel that almost looked impossible to make. Great job to Betty Lou. Great performance and a great comeback because she started off with a ton of falls as we get caught up with Caroline's back end here, Jesse. Wow, that was a very critical turn, and that's what I was, I was mentioning right there. See how critical that just that first turn was, and the judges love to see that. Obviously, this wave was a kind of a closeout, so she had to just aim for that one big section, but just very vertical, critical, and on a nice um, big section for a day like today. Caroline, 5.17 on the left, 5.33 on the right, and Lakey just with a 1.0. Caroline trying to win this event for the second time in her career. And Lakey's come close, making a couple of big finals, but trying to close this one out this season. And for Lakey, the goal is to be a world champion, I want to be in the title race this season and really experience what it's like to be in the WSL Final Five. Caroline got it done last year. and It had been a long time since there was a USA world champion focusing on the women's side. You know. Before Caroline won last year, it was going back to the great Lisa Anderson in 1997. Lisa with four world titles. Before Lisa, it was Frida Zamba, who also got four, which was kind of the era where the USA women surfers were, were really dominating, going from Debbie Beecham in the early 80s to Kim Barrick, then to Frida Zamba, and then Lisa Anderson came a little bit later. But Caroline uh, enjoying her time as the reigning world champion. She said it gave her a lot of confidence coming into a brand new season. Sometimes there's this big weight that's lifted off your shoulders and you'll see in a world title defense, it could sometimes be their worst year on tour. You, I always talk that 
story with uh, Martin Potter following his world title. He just kind of relaxed <laughs> and really kept celebrating in 1990. Uh, same was for Derek Coe. Derek Coe had his uh, toughest season to follow his world title year. Um, saw the motivation change for Adriano de Souza, and he uh, ended up retiring soon after. So it's cool when you see someone really fired up to, to try to go back to back. Totally. And I mean, she's just very driven, a young surfer that, I mean, she has so much more to gain still, so much more to develop inside the water in a jersey and as a surfer. Because when you think of someone that has that, reached that level of surfing already and still that young, like, what's the limit for them, really? It's a good point. You kind of could see the, the similarities here. It's interesting how Tati said she feels like she's the goofy footed version of Betty Lou and the older version of that. I wonder if Lakey and Caroline would almost have a similar conversation because they've had they've shared the same coach in the past. Now we've got Caroline with Luke and this year Lakey with Micro. But you see when Lakey came on she was really progressive getting a lot out of the panel score wise. She had a lot of 19 plus totals in the early days almost getting near perfect heat scores in her early interviews. She was really focused on really pushing progression in heats. Remember where Caroline, especially in the, the Surf Ranch event, doing like those big tail wafting type maneuvers and bringing a lot of flair to the, the championship tour when she first qualified. Yeah, it's, it's very impressive. I remember because Lakey and me are a little bit more close in age and as we see Lakey up and riding. Lakey now on a running left. It's actually shutting down. It didn't run and she'll just get one backhand hammer in and ride away. So starting off trying to play a comeback role with Caroline Marks. I love how Lakey kind of uses the the Grom word a lot. You know, if she, she feels like, you know, she's a veteran. She wants to keep that younger new school in their place. I love the fire and competitive factor that Lakey brings to the tour. Totally. And you see here up and right into waves, like I mentioned, they're going to start to stretch a lot with the lower tide. But that was a very critical turn. Um, just perfect timing. Her backhand is usually on point and just showing right there. Just, I think Caroline up and right now. Caroline, a little inside corner. How fun is that? A little tap on the end section. She sinks on the inside corner. But just a fun size left for Caroline. She could surf waves like this all day long. Totally obsessed with surfing as Caroline puts it, as we check this one out again. Yeah, I just want to mention how tight these transitions are. There's no water under them right now. As you see it right there, just trying to fit in the pocket in the third one, she just literally had no room. And her body was in an awkward spot, but beautiful first turn right there, air dropping, right here pushing it even more. And then this, the wave is a straight flat bottom right there, so it, it makes it very tricky for you to um, put your board on rail. But this, this first turn here was money. Just right on this perfect spot, throwing a lot of water. Very calm. You can see it in her face. She's just waiting for that moment. And just once again, pushing it even a little bit more. And that's what I'm saying. Like, see how flat the bottom is. It just gets it tricky for you to set up the bottom turns and actually get tight enough for you to fit those turns. It's not easy out there right now. As much as it looks very fun and it's clean, it's, it's challenging. We always talk about lower trestles in San Clemente, but Lakey and Caroline would have a lot of beach breaks in San Clemente to surf on. This would be one of the better days for the beach breaks in San Clemente, that's for sure. Nice and glassy, bowly sections at T Street area, world famous from a lot of the best growing up on that wave. As we look at Lakey on a speedy right-hander, Drills the first turn out in front for the wrapping cutback, and she'll step off. Her one maneuver section on her backhand came in at a five. So Lakey gunning for a five-five on this wave. Yeah, nice wave here. First critical turn for her. And then the second one, the wave just started to disappear. She was able to give it a good crack, give it a good wrap around, but um, the wave was already dissipating. But first turn was um, very nice. And that's what's going to happen. The last water, the waves are just going to start to disappear pretty quick. See here from another angle, just getting up there very vertically. Air dropping off the sky. I'm not sure where, it, where it's going to come. She needs a 5.5 right now, it looks like. I think Caroline came with the 3.93 on the last wave. 
Yeah, throwaway score for Caroline on her third effort, so keeping her fives that she opened up the heat with. Lakey, which if she gets a 5-5, five, five, will take the lead, and scores coming through under a 4-1-7 for Peterson. Caroline with the lead and priority with 14 minutes on the clock. Both these surfers in the lineup have six championship tour wins to their name. Caroline getting those six wins in 12 finals. Lakey getting six wins in 17 finals. There was an era where Lakey was just finishing runner up in those finals and she just couldn't wait to, to break that streak of seconds as we look at Lakey on the left again. Hollow section there, she really rips into it. Catching up to the lip line again, but just a little too late. Only good for one move. Still chasing the 5.5. Unfortunately there for Lakey, because that first turn was very critical, but the wave just ran out a little bit too much. Didn't give her um, room to get up there for the second time. I mean, it did give her, but just not enough time, and she was kind of in an awkward spot. Right here, you see the first turn, nice and critical in the pocket, and second one just kind of ran away from her because she was gonna, she was gonna look very good after that second turn if she finished it. See a first turn, one of the best turns of, off the, um, off this heat so far. But she was able to combo it up. It would have been very nice. Beautiful approach off the bottom turn. Arms are just in the perfect spot. Very tight, throwed a lot of spray. But then she kind of just got a little bit behind the section right there and she had to try and force it. And just ended up hitting the back on the lip and just, yeah, falling forward, unfortunately. It's cool how fun these peaks look and we see it corner off or peel down the, the sand bank, but you're talking about those tight transitions. What does that mean for your bottom turns and the lines that you have to really adjust for that tight pocket today? Yeah, it just it's just gives you not much room. You usually have a little bit more like I feel like two days ago we were talking sometimes down at um, at Molly Lash that we needed a little bit more curve on the wave sometimes. Um, but here it's almost it's exactly the opposite. Like this wave is so dumpy and with the low tide and how small the waves are right now, it's getting very tricky the transitions in between. So it makes it a little bit more tricky for them to actually um, get those good angles to get vertical. Joanne DeFay grabbing her Apple Watch as she prepares for Luana Silva in quarterfinal number four. The male Rip Curl Pro Portugal presented by Corona is brought to you by Rip Curl, the ultimate surfing company. By Shiseido, official sunscreen of the World Surf League. By Bon Soy, official milk of the World Surf League. And by Eventbrite, on or off your board, you've got plans with Eventbrite. 
great opportunity to download True Surf, True Surf, and you know what? We could give it away for free right now from the App Store or Google Play. Tap WSL Events to play Virtual Male Rip Curl Pro. The judges at Super Tubos are looking for you to go big today. Big airs, big ramp sections, and big turns in these tight pockety sections that we have on hand for the quarterfinals. Caroline Marks in the lead over Lakey Peterson as Lakey holds priority needing a 5.5. Lakey's last wave, 467, way before 417, so it's still an extremely close heat at the moment. For a spot in the semifinals. Lakey rolls in on her backhand, sets up the lip line. Nice blast there, and she will be late to the second effort. Jesse, her first turns have been solid on her couple of waves previous. She's just waiting for a good section to combo it up on a second or a hopefully third turn, and she'd easily get the lead change. Yeah, if you see her um, her best two scores right now, she's seen it's basically one turn waves. Um, she had the five point rider, the big crack, and the 4.67 is actually the wave that she did one big turn and felt that we were talking about the transition in between the maneuvers. And if she can combo it up, she's going to be looking very good because she's very fast right now, just looking good on rail. And right here, another nice bottom turn, getting vertical up there. This wave a little bit smaller. But just once again, the wave is, and that's what's going to happen. The, the lower the tide gets, the faster the wave's going to be. So see um, Glenn Hall right there. Just he knows that he's one turn away from making this heat. Caroline late to that lip line, and she goes straight down. Hasn't had an adjustment in her top two in a few waves now. 7.30 to go here in quarter number three. Lakey hoping to find some space now with priority. Lakey's mom, former Guinness record holder in swimming back in the 80s. Speaking of Guinness record holders, big shout out to our co-commentator, Laura Enever. Getting a bomb at cloud break in that super session. Laura, you continue to inspire us. And she's probably watching this heat right now with seven on the clock. But yeah, Lakey coming from a very athletic family. Her mom, Sue, always supporting her as she paddles into this one. Lakey looks like she's got a nice glassy wall to work with. Perfect timing. Second turn is going to challenge her again. And Glenn just doesn't know what to do, so he'll just punch Lakey's husband in the arm a couple of times for some frustration. Man, Thomas knows how close that was to getting the lead. Yeah, I, you know, I got to say, like, the other ones weren't missed opportunities, but this one, it seems like she had time, enough time to get up there, which she did, and she was very smart to put the board kind of sideways and not get too critical, um, even though the section was critical. But when she was landing, just she kind of got stuck. It was unfortunately because that's a massive turn to start right here. That was a beautiful turn straight to it right there, vertical. Kept the board flat, which is going to help you um, um, right out of it. Check this out, first turn, beautiful, second one, getting up there, kept the board um, flat and just kind of got into a wobble and maybe needed to really hold her stance down and get low on the board to make sure she was going to ride out of that one because that's, that was going to be a massive score for her. Another missed opportunity. Looked like she had it in time, got there to the landing early enough, but couldn't push through in front, in front of the rebound section. So Lakey, 2.5 on her wave previous, waiting for her last score to come through because the first connection was solid. The judge is still thinking about that, looking at the replay. Lakey Peterson riding Channel Island surfboards. Britt Merrick actually flew in late because he went snowboarding with Caroline's shaper, Matt Biolas at Mammoth Mountain. Mammoth's an incredible place to, to ride in the snow. And Matt loves it. Britt loves it. Britt actually said it was the first time he really got to spend some quality time with Biolis outside of just quick contest wraps. And they really had a great time laying down tracks and different type of setting outside of the ocean. Both of those guys, one of the two of the most impactful shapers in the world right now, especially when it comes to the world title race. 
Numbers in from Lakey's last with the fall, 5.10, almost had enough on just one move. Yeah, she was looking to get close to an excellent wave right there with that finish. Um, maybe not excellent, but close by maybe a 7.5. Um, that would have been, yeah, 100% sure the best wave of the heat. And I feel like it was, it was an easy call. Maybe the first mistake for her of the day because the other waves are very tricky. This one gave her the opportunity. If you check out the recap, Caroline loving these lefts. Here for the quarterfinals, looking quick. A nice combination of turns. Throwing down that downward slash to get a 5-1-7, then went backhand and got her best number at a 5-3-3. Yeah, that was a very critical turn. Air dropping, coming out clean, and this is when Lake starts to turn up right there. First one just kind of identified the way it was going to close out, just gets up there vertical, almost matches um, Caroline's best score with one turn as well. Caroline throws away this wave, just great surfing, ended up falling up um, on the last turn right here. And then Lakey Peterson with some opportunity to turn it, winds up for a big aggressive connection there, real clean backhand snap, but just missed the landing. And that cost her the lead change. 5-1-0, only chasing a 5-4. Here comes Lakey again. Nice clean backhand whip. Smaller wave, but she will get the second turn. She's hoping for enough speed to tap it. She'll get there. Three maneuvers on a smaller wave than she had previous. Now 250 to go. Yeah, um, I guess we'll do some comparison here, but first turn was very critical. I like that, but then the wave just disappears on her and she has to go through this flat section and she was actually did a very good job to get another turn right there, but I don't see this coming as a 5.4 would be the best wave of the heat. Um, we've seen Caroline some 5.17 and is she going to get another wave already? Lakey up again, moving quickly on this left, backhand float. That one's going to keep her behind. And you can just already make your comparisons at home. One maneuver section, her attempts before were much bigger. So expecting another throwaway with two minutes on the clock. Britt Merrick starting to pace. Lakey's husband from Bells Beach. Holding his breath as we have now a minute 55 on the clock. Will she get another chance, especially with Caroline having priority, expecting her to play some Serious defense to shut this one down. Yeah, um, Caroline is doing a good job to hold her, holding her off and just um, kind of giving her the waves, but just those waves that are not enough and letting the clock run down. But it's dangerous because literally she's very close. You can see him shoulder to shoulder, paddling, even connecting a little bit there. They've known each other for a very long time. They love having heats like this where they'll just leave it all in the water. Minute 15 on the clock. Caroline rolling into an overhead section. Big wind up, speed turn off the lip. Flying down the line, she'll trim it with a float and step off. Next wave, Lakey Peterson will let go. Smart move there as it just shut down. 55 seconds. Lakey trying to watch the clock and seeing what her options might be. She will commit. Setting up her first turn. Nice blast there. She'll control it. Whips it again out in front. She'll pass Caroline on the inside corner and throw another turn into the pocket. Looking for maybe one more and she'll step off. Britt Brit can't, can't even, even watch anymore. We've got, got Micro Mike. starting to celebrate. Yeah, Thomas is starting to smile now, so maybe they're seeing something in that last wave. What a way to finish the heat, right? Like both getting the opportunity. I actually think Caroline missed um, missed a good opportunity right there, getting the best wave of the heat by far. That was a beautiful, clean wave. I think she went a little bit too safe. And on the other side, Lakey was actually able to finish her second turn. This is a critical first turn right there. Coming back a second decent turn as well, just bringing it all the way around. and. The third turn was the wave was already dying, but it's it's a, it's a bonus. It's it, it will count, and this is very nice. Just super critical and vertical, and I love this second one right here. It's straight to it, beautiful bottom turn. 
and brings it all the way around. As you see it redirecting the nose, almost touching the, the whitewash. Comes back, goes around Caroline and gets a little extra section. But man, I don't see Caroline bettering her score. As you see right here, biggest wave of the day so far. Goes too lateral. Played a little bit too safe and when she had to finish big, she just kind of did an early floater and yeah, she had the opportunity, but I don't know if she's going to capitalize. I'm with you there, Jesse. Just a little bit too safe. Had the wave, though. What a racetrack this was. Yeah, that was by far the best wave I've seen all morning. Um, she was eyeing it down too much forward, and then right here, she kind of went halfway through that bottom turn and went sideways and just safety kind of early floater. And she knows she's not happy right there with how she did that last um, maneuver. I got a glimpse of Luke Egan's face after that wave too. He was just a little disappointed with the approach as well. Scores coming through for Caroline, a four. So not changing her lead. It's coming down to Lakey's final wave. She got a few turns off. Is it a five four? What an incredibly close heat from two longtime friends, longtime rivals, working with Parsons back in the day. Now with Micro for Lakey, Luke Egan for Caroline. They've seen a lot of each other surfing and especially here in Peniche. This was the final a couple of years back where Caroline won. Did Lakey just get revenge on that heat a few years later? Yeah, I, I, I see that coming in a 5.4. Um, I think that was the best wave of the heat served. Numbers. Starting to drop in now. Lakey Peterson waiting. Needs a 5-4. There's a 5-7, 5-8. There's one no coming under the requirement. She's what freaking out watching that right now. She can't believe she's staring at the 4-8, just going, no way. Two more choices. There's another yes in a strong fashion. 5-5-7. Five, five, Lakey gets it on the last wave and goes on into the semifinals. Goes straight to her camp to enjoy that win that she worked incredibly hard for. Yeah, he had this goal like, like three times and then it was like, yeah. oh, you should have heard us. The one I did the turn that they gave me a five on and I fell on the big It flipped it over like on the beach when I, I thought it was going to make it. Lakey Peterson with a cool adrenaline rush of the debrief with her camp and a crucial win for Peterson. Further back on the rankings from Caroline Mark, so a crucial result for her with her run to make it past the midseason cut. Lakey will be in semifinal number two. Coming up next, Luana Silva takes on Joanne DeFay here in Peniche.
quarterfinals continue here on a nice, beautiful morning in Peniche, Portugal. The peninsula providing some fun, rippable waves at Super Tubos. Luana Silva is in the quarterfinals to take on a veteran named Joanne DeFay. Lulu, such a kind-hearted human being from the North Shore of Oahu, representing Brazil on tour. We'll get things started on her back end. Attacking the lip, and she'll just treat that as a warm-up in these colder conditions. Wow, it was freezing this morning, air temperature-wise, and just waiting for your heat. It's kind of hard to stay warm. What happened here? It was a nice wave. It had a good pace to it. Um, she just went a little too early on that turn, so she ended up having to force a little bit too much and got stuck. The wave just didn't match the power. Um, the energy of the wave was a little bit ahead of her, probably about three, four feet, a meter, a meter and a half in front of her. Just getting things going, you know, like sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a new day. You got to start fresh and she's going to realize for that for the next one. So 1.93, that gets uh, priority started. Pr uh, Joanne DeFay will start her role here in the quarterfinals. She's had so much experience around the world where Lulu's really just getting started. She kind of paces her way through there. As we know, Lulu qualified in the past, fell off the tour, came back last year through a strong run on the Challenger Series. So this just her ninth event, CT-wise. Growing up with really good rivals like Betty Lou, Sakura Johnson, and really getting comfortable with really powerful conditions at a very young age. As we look at a little left-hand wall and getting stuck as well as Joanne DeFay. So similar type of rhythm in this seat. It's interesting how you have two different surfers and sometimes you just end up matching each other, kind of like we saw in the heat before. And you definitely don't want to match it that way. You know, you see your opponent um, committing a mistake and not capitalizing on the first wave. And then you're like, okay, this is, this is a good moment for me to just sit, have priority, just choose the right wave and start strong. But didn't happen there for Joanne. Um, you see it right here, just a, a wave that was hard to generate speed. So she tried to like put the board vertical and gain speed and momentum for the second turn, but just kind of got caught a little bit right there after she was in transition for second turn, as you see it. Just caught the inside edge right there and ended up falling forward and Lulu up and riding. Glassy one setting up for Lulu. Nice patience there and she'll place that turn off the lip. See that air drop there on this low tide. It's really bottoming out quickly. So it doesn't have that easy transition. You almost have to ollie off the lip sometimes to make sure your nose doesn't poke in the flats. She did well just to make sure she got the completion there. Her best score so far. Yeah, that was much better for her. Just a little bit calmer off the bottom turn. So really taking her time to identify the critical section and went straight vertical. As you see right there, placing the board in the right place bringing the board back under her chest. Just very stable, solid turn for her. Um, you know, she's warming up. All USA heats are always a blast, AJ, but Lakey getting the score at the end, how good was that? I don't know if Lakey was having as much fun in the water, saving the best for last. As you're going through that heat, how did you keep the confidence up to know that you could get that score in the literal final seconds? Gosh, I like I just kept swinging and I kept falling and I was getting so annoyed. Um, I was just like, come on, you got to land something at some point. But with that lower tide, it's making it um, it just kind of dumps and closes out real quick after that first turn. So it was really tough to get enough time to get a second turn up there. Um, and I kind of knew before the heat too, like, you know, five, five, that could also just be one big turn similar to my first wave or a couple of Caroline scores. So, um, I was just on the hunt and I was tired and at the very end I was like, you can get back out so quickly right now. So that's why I just kept swinging and she was kind of letting me go and I was like, okay, well, let's just keep trying. And, um, in a way I got lucky cause the wave she took off me when she had priority in the final seconds looked like a really great wave. So anyone I think would have gone on that. Um, but I knew, you know, there was probably something behind it. So 
Yeah, stoked to get the win and keep rolling. I feel like I'm surfing good. I just got to get a bit more consistent in the next heat. Well, and we talked before the season, and you told me that you feel like your best surfing is ahead of you. And here you are on to your first semifinals of 2024. How much does that validate all of the work that you put into the offseason to see this progressive improvement with each event? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, it's easy to get really head noisy. And for me in particular, I think just having that inner belief in myself has always been something I've struggled with. And this year, it's been a big goal of mine just to keep believing in myself, whether I lose first round or win the entire contest, it doesn't matter. And just keep keep showing up and keep trying. So um, that's what I'm doing. And yeah, hopefully I keep making heats. Can't wait to see you show up for the semis. Congratulations. Thanks, AJ. Thanks, everyone at home who stayed up late. I don't know what time it is for you, morning, night. Uh, but thank you, guys. Love you. Well done. A lot of fans for Lakey Peterson back home in California. And her second home would be Bells Beach because that's where her husband's from. So back in California, it's almost 2 a.m. Yeah, so that's a big commitment, but worth it, especially for Lakey fans that saw that last effort to get the score. 10 6 7 combined total and into the semifinals. Still with a chance to win this event. I bet her mom was watching and I don't think she's going to bed after that buzzer beater. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Everyone's wide awake now. Cool little slingshot on the carve and she'll get a nice tight jam on a very small inside corner. Lulu working with Leandro Dora. He's getting the shot. Always has positive energy. Amazing surfer as well. That's uh, had a lot of successful years coaching, including the Adriano de Souza World title year. As we see Joanne DeFay getting a closeout hack on her forehand. So still some warming up going on out there. Yeah, a little bit slower start for those two surfers. Obviously, like um, Lakey mentioned, let's see here first. Nice critical turn, um, coming out clean. But as you see right here, a touch, touch late, but just because of the circumstances, I don't think she could have gone up there any quicker. She just had a very straight wave. And here, Lulu, nice wrap around. The wave kind of splits up right there. She goes over, and the wave just kind of disappears on her. And then also this left-hander here during the interview. Joanne DeFay got a couple of nice turns in, so solid approach there for DeFay. We were catching up with Lakey, and then on the right as well was Lulu. Punching out the first section and tapping it shut, so a very important split peak that just went down in quarterfinal number four. Joanne famous for a solid backhand. She's going to run after it again. Quick whip there in the pocket, second turn, throws some water. Nice flow there through all of her points, and She'll step off. Uh, Jesse, it's so amazing how quickly these conditions can change with the tides being extreme here in Europe. We saw how different the lineup got yesterday through the men's round of 32 and round of 16. And even just in the few heats we've run this morning with the tide getting even lower, it's making it, the transitions even tighter. It's bottoming out really quick. You can see the degree of difficulty really increase in quarterfinal number four. Definitely. and. Um the lower the tide would get, the straighter the wave would be, and also less water on the bottom of the wave, so it just makes the transitions um, very difficult. But Joanne on her 6.17, one thing that I've noticed that was very nice, um, not this wave, but let's check this wave out again. This is the one turn, just a big crack off the lip, just kind of hitting the lip line very nicely and just very dramatic. That was like good effort for her, you know, like made it critical. Um, didn't have much opportunity on that wave, but still made the most of it. But her left, that I was mentioning, she had a high line and she gained speed in the beginning um, for then to do the turns. And a lot of times the surfers are having to take off and go straight vertical with not so much speed. And that, that was a point of difference for her. She was able to read the wave a little bit down the line, generate speed, and then go big. I think that might be it. See right there, that high line. And that's very hard to do in a small wave. And then she gained so much speed for that first turn and the second one back to back. So that was beautiful surfing from her and beautiful read. So easy for you to just take off and um, get ahead of herself and try to get vertical mostly in very fast waves. But sometimes in order to go fast, you have to slow yourself down a little bit. And also stylistically, the high line to hack is just always looks good. Always you know, looks great. Forehand, backhand, gaining speed through that flow. 
Looks great. Lulu has an opportunity on her back end. Overhead on that first section, and she will knife it. Nice flow through the bottom turn, jams it again. Third turn, she'll throw some water, and she's just trying to ride away, but that white water is making it difficult. Coach loves it. Two great turns. Smooth approach from Luana Silva. Joanna Faye digging in now. First blast, solid off the lip, super powerful and just absolutely ripping. DeFay's got a fired up corner as well. Just love how low and compact she could get. It kind of reminds me of the similar type of conditions where she won the US Open. It was about a foot, maybe, well, probably a little smaller even almost, and she could get so tight and still has power. Yeah, just. Her approach, her position, her body position on top of the board, how she's able to get vertical and generate speed throughout the turns on her backhand, it, it's her bread and butter. Obviously, growing up in Reunion Islands helped her out develop that um, on that left. Uh, it's word famous, but see it right here. Transitions are so small right there, but she was able to get vertical, generate speed throughout the turn, and just straight up again. You see it right here, bringing those shoulders um, around and then getting very vertical. And then the hard part about it, it's not just to get vertical, but to bring the board back under. And she did that very well. But here, just huge turn for Lulu right there. Straight off the bottom turn and another big turn again. Just a beautiful wave, a little bit taller, gave her more room um, and she was able to unleash it. We, we're gonna have a heat in our hands right now. As you see it, Lulu taking her time off the bottom. Straight up vertical right there, very critical turn upside down and then once again just another pretty much the same turn right there just very beautiful the wave was pretty tall um, for a day like today and then right here she pushed a little bit too hard lost the fins and then she got a little bit stuck on the white wash right there but the damage was done before and but it was very smart of Joanne as well because Lulu's going to come with a big score but Joanne's probably going to better her 4.83 and we're gonna have a good 50 minutes end of the heat. Wow, they set this one up so well. DeFay, so solid on her back end, winning at Uluwatu. We saw it even at the Surf Ranch where she got big scores going left. She picked up a major CT win there. Leandro sending the positivity out there to Luana Silva. Also more world titles for him besides the De Souza world title run. Also Lucas Silvera winning a world junior title under the coaching of Leandro a few years back. Great human being, loves punk rock music, loves surfing, loves coaching. Here comes Joanne now, speedy little left. She'll kind of gain her composure just to kick out. Lulu, last score starting to come through. And DeFay's previous as well will be a keeper of a 6.0. Lulu with a 6.83. So Silva with priority now needs a 5.34. Joanne DeFay is out in front since she had the 6.17 earlier. Similar type of scenario. Lulu needing a five range score just like Lakey did in the heat previous. A lot of really close battles today. And we'll see if Lulu is going to be inspired to get that score to move into the semifinals. She knows how stressful the CT can be when you're just feeling Margaret River looming in the distance with the midseason cut. She's went through that. She went through that before, and I feel like she's really inspired this year, seeing all the success from her childhood friend Betty Lou Sakura Johnson doing so well the first three stops of the season. We talk about how winning can be infectious, and be like Lulu really got inspired in the round before. I mean, she was the one that took out Katie Simmers in this event. Yeah, it's um, and with Katie, the, um, the difference point that she had, she was just um, smart on riding the right waves, you know, the whole time. And just looks like that she's on point in this event. She's looking great right now, sitting in priority with the best score of the heat. Defay moving quickly through two turns. Knew she didn't have time to really go down to the bottom and just kept that energy off the lip. She will look to improve on one of her sixes, doing two turns in a short space. Yeah, what I think it's impressive about Joanne in this heat is just the fact that 
she haven't sat with priority for the, probably the past seven minutes and as you see it right here she's just trying to make the most on the opportunities that she get and trying to capitalize and she already came with two sixes without priority right there just beautiful surfing from her just somehow just being a veteran as usual just getting um not the best waves but making the most of it so joanne de Fay doing a great job didn't have to deal with the elimination round Lulu was sent to that second elimination round heat, but ended up getting the walkthrough since Brisa got hurt. Always sending Brisa a lot of love and a speedy recovery from blowing out her eardrum the other day in competition. At the moment, DeFay out front over Lulu with 12 minutes to go. Male Rip Curl Pro Portugal presented by Corona is brought to you by Mail, official title partner of the Male Rip Curl Pro Portugal. By EDP, official partner of the Male Rip Curl Pro Portugal. And by Yeti, built for the wild. Beautiful morning in Peniche here on the peninsula. Great peak setting up for some great matchups in the quarterfinals today. DeFay out front. Lulu still chasing a 5.34 to move on to the semifinals. And I think I just saw the Waz there on the beach with some surfboards. Strider, what do you got downstairs? We got a couple of surfers in the water and they're riding the sharp eyes. So we've got a pretty beautiful uh, synergy model here for Lulu. She's riding a 5.9, a little shorter than what uh, you know, we've got out there for Joanne DeFay. So Joanne DeFay is on the 77 model, the Toledo model from Sharp Eye. They're both round pins, two different fin setups, though. We got an FCS system over here for uh, Joanne DeFay, and then we got the future fin system going on for Lulu. You know, it's interesting, though, that, you know, I think that Joanne DeFay is uh, uh, not as tall as Lulu, but definitely strong. But, you know, the, the, the size of boards are different. And then we got Lulu on a shorter board when you think maybe because she's taller, she'd be riding a bigger board. So. All these little differences coming into play out here for the surfers, but uh, definitely Sharp Eye putting out some of the best boards on tour at the moment. I agree, Strider. Yeah, it's been a movement from Sharp Eye. He's uh, been around for a very long time, but more recently with obviously the connection of world titles from Felipe Toledo and back-to-back -back years, we saw so much excitement when Kanoa Garashi made the switch at that famous event at Jeffrey's Bay when he went on to the semifinals and brought so much flair. And then it was just everyone was ordering up sharp eyes, trying to keep up with it. Jesse got on some as well. Um, a really reliable shaper that really was at certain times in the last few years, definitely the front runner in, in producing some big heat wins all over the world. No doubt his boards um, are magic, obviously. I'm biased to say because I ride them, but um, What do they feel like? Why do they feel so good? I think just the transitions, the speed that they carry through the transitions and how easy they are to um, get on rail and lay it down on rail, and you can push it very hard as well. So it's a kind of a good combination, right? It's cool. It's uh, fun to see what surfers do as far as mixing it up with their equipment. Joanne DeFay has ridden uh, great 
great boards over her career, but more recently connecting with Sharpie as we had a couple of waves during the break. None of these factored into the top two as DeFay got tangled up at the end and then the little speed track wall for Luana Silva. As she got a nice first turn in and got to the wrapping cut back, but hopped out. But yeah, Lulu staying active again. Last two waves in the three range. Cool looking float. You could tell she's in form, but not in the lead. With all those waves ridden, Lulu still has priority. Seven minutes on the clock, chasing a 5.34. Yeah, in her situation right now, she's actually doing a good job. She's um, sitting on that left peak, which is like there, there, there's that special wave. We've seen Caroline wave come in. We see, um, saw one from Tati come in. Um, we saw one from Lulu already in this heat, and it comes with a little bit more water. It takes a little, takes a little while for them to come, but they have more room and gives you more time to actually um, apply some, some big turns. And she kind of sits in a situation that she has to do there. Obviously, she doesn't need that big of a score, but with priority right now, you expect if she doesn't get that wave, most likely Joanne will, so might as well you be in that position. So smart of her. She has to pull the trigger by the end of the heat and try and scratch through something yeah pull it but now it's time to just wait for the decent sized wave that comes with a little bit more water in the bank Tyler Wright will be taking on a Tatiana Weston Webb in semifinal number one winner of this heat will take on Lakey Peterson in semifinal number two men's quarterfinals coming up next all California matchup Jake Marshall taking on Crosby Colapinto some big heats already set up for the men's quarters. Cool to see Ramsey Bulkayam make his first quarter final of his CT career. It'll be a first for Crosby as well once we get to that round. But I think it's time for a very important update on the event. Renato Hickel is with AJ. We knew that we were going to be watching the tides this morning, Renato, to see how it affected competition. What's very the latest? Closely, very closely. And uh, as we anticipate, that low tide is still a huge tide today. Just killed the conditions, right? So still decent for this last quarterfinal of the women. But we don't want to risk on the first quarterfinal of the men. A lot on the line for, for these guys. And uh, so we're putting on hold, putting the, the event on hold after this quarterfinal fought of the women. Next call. 10.45 a.m. local time for a possible 11.03 restart with men's quarterfinals. So if you go away, come back to check it. That's the latest. We'll send it back to you. Love it, AJ. Thanks so much, Renato. His on-camera presence is amazing. He's been doing this a long time. As we now see a left setting up for Joanne DeFay. A couple of big blows there, but she will overturn on that last section. I loved it, though. And I think she's probably feeling the numbers that she's already had already, knowing, hey, I might as well go for broke on a similar type of turn. And instead of getting stuck repeating yourself with the same numbers, so I didn't mind the fall. I did not mind as well. I, I think she was going to be looking in that five point to six point range. And um, if she had just finished it strong like she's did it um, on the waves before. But right here is just a point of difference, getting a, a tail release, like more of a blow tail turn. And, um, generating a lot of speed in that, and she would have probably combo it up with something else. Good effort for her. She had to go big. Otherwise, she was going to just kind of stay stuck in the same spot. So we got into that last wave quickly after the update from Renato. So once again, we will be going on hold until 1045 local time. It's 9.05 in the morning right now in Panish. So seeing the tide really low, kind of similar to what we did yesterday to see if we will get the quarterfinals going with Jake Marshall and Crosby Colapinto standing by. Here's the recap from quarter four. Battle of two regular foots, Brazil versus France. Lulu kind of in a new space, just in her ninth CT event. Joanne DeFeo, a longtime veteran of the tour, showcasing her power, both forehand and backhand. Lulu did well on this left, really set it up well in the pocket, got upside down to turn in her best number. A 6 8 3, it's also the best score of the heat so far. Yeah, Lula just um, finding that special wave, but John just going into work, realizing that she, she doesn't have priority most of the heat and she's just making the most of what she's getting, actually going beyond. And you see here, people are probably surfing where that guy's standing right there about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at that. 
It's almost like a tide pool that you could sit in on the beach. It's so far out to sea now, which uh, what you're very accustomed to when you travel to Europe to go surf. Tides can be very extreme, and you expect a lot of holds to happen through the championship tour events. But uh, yesterday, it was a very smart hold and came through with probably some of the best high performance conditions we've had in a long time. So we'll see what happens today. And as much as it looks fun, like Renato said, like for people that live in Europe and are used or people that are used to those big tides, they, they will understand this. But for the people who doesn't understand, like literally 20 minutes, this is just going to disappear and turn into a straight one foot closeout. So this corners that they're finding right now is just it's a matter of time that is just going to go away. And it changes that quick. You'll be fun for now. And then it's almost if you're looking from the beach and it looks fun, you're, you're too late for it because it's just going to disappear. So it's a good call for them. And we're going to come back with a little bit more water and it's going to get fun again. Smart move using a lot of the day today. Got days left in the waiting period as well. They were focusing on today potentially for a finals day, which still might happen. Also tomorrow looking fun as well. Maybe not as clean win wise, but maybe a touch bigger. We'll see what they want to do for the rest of the day. Minute 10 on the clock. It's still up to Lulu to chase down a 5 3 4. She had the 6 8 3 earlier, so she knows what she's looking for. Moving right next to Joanne DeFay. DeFay is so good at this, even without priority, she knows how to just shadow her competitor. Now Lulu spinning 45 seconds and putting it together on this wave. Here comes the first turn. Nice connection for Luana Silva quickly whipping it in the pocket. Looking for more on the inside. Lulu winds up and will redirect with the tap on the inside corner and she's feeling good but DeFay's on the one behind it. And Joanne kicks out of the inside section. Wow, another heat coming down to the final exchange. How good is this? Uh, Leandro is psyching on that last wave from Lulu. Talk about being clutch. You could probably be feeling a lot of nerves knowing it's coming down to one wave, and she looked really strong there, Jesse. Definitely. Um, I want to see what Joanne did as well on the wave behind because we kind of saw the last bit of it, but hey, she was clutch. She had to wait for this wave. That's what I was talking about. A little bit more water in the bank. First beautiful turn opening up and then brings it back around. The wave splits up, but she was very calm right here. I would have loved to see her go maybe a little bigger on that closeout, but the damage was done on the first turn. That was a big turn. She doesn't need much. She needs a 5.34. It's, it's going to be very close. Everyone's very stoked. And I just loved how clutch she was. She waited for what she needed and she got it. And right here, Joanne. Nice second turn. I don't see that. Yeah, Joanne's not going to better her um, situation, so it's really going to be 100% to what Luana gets on this last wave. But what a dramatic finish we had the last three heats. Well, the judges have all the time in the world because we've gone on hold for the men's quarterfinals. So if they feel like it, they can pull up some replays, make comparisons to what they've seen before. First, congratulations to these two athletes putting on a show on this lower tide. It takes a, a special skill set to really get speed and transition hard in the pocket like they both did. A lot on the line for both of them as far as world titles, mid-season cut here at stop three in Paniche. And what a cool story with DeFe, a, a 2014 Rookie of the Year, taking on the new school of Luana Silva. So both scores still yet to come in. Joanne with a two turn combo. Look comfortable, nice and compact and powerful throughout the matchup, catching 11 waves. Lulu a touch more selective, catching eight waves. And Lulu waiting to see if she did enough. Yeah, this is going to be so close. Just a nail biter once again. Grillo is stoked right there. It, like, no matter the outcome, I think she was just very clever on that heat. Getting good waves, very calm and selective. 
it's going to be up to the judges now because it's a close one. Lulu and Joanne anticipating the numbers. It's always stressful when there's some time going by without a decision. That's when they know it's incredibly close. We'll stand by and wait for the scores here before we go on hold for the men's quarterfinals to see who will be joining Lakey Peterson. Scores coming through for Luana Silva of 5.10. Not enough. Joanne DeFay doesn't need her last wave and will be surfing in the semifinals against Lakey Peterson. The veterans survive on the back half of the draw. And great performance from DeFay showcasing her power. And Luana maybe needing a bit more on that end section to show the judges that she could turn the heat. Yeah, I guess um, that finishing turn was, I guess, the, the turning point that kind of went um, a little bit under the requirement that Luana needed because Joanne also didn't better her score. So it was really down to that last wave that Luana had and the judges thinking that probably Joanne was a little bit more aggressive on her turns and just a little bit more solid and that was the point of difference. Wow, so the semifinals are set now for the women and it's kind of a veteran showcase from Tyler Wright and Tatiana Weston Webb to Joanne DeFay and Lakey Peterson. A lot of experience in the final four left in the event. And Joanne DeFay can enjoy that moment. Starting to smile and break down the heat. Excited to see her in the semifinals as this event continues. Coming up next, we're going to have a Corona update show with Paul Evans and Kaipo Guerrero as we anticipate the men's quarterfinals. We'll be right back.
Once again, good morning from Portugal and welcome to the Corona update. Picking the eyes out of title conditions this morning, women's quarterfinals have run. Let's hear from our fourth winning quarterfinalist, Joanne Defey is with AJ. Yeah, that's right, Joanne coming in. Tense moments after that heat, waiting for Luana's score. What was going through your head? Um, yeah, well, I kind of saw the wave behind, like from behind, and um, I thought it was kind of a good one. And but I got the chance right be after to like get another score. Well, I didn't improve, but um, um, yeah, just tense. I don't know. You never know with those waves, you know. Like it's hard to tell from behind. And I was like, well, it's in a judge's hand, and um, I put in my mind that she was gonna get it because I was like, okay, it's just better, no, a bit less disappointment. But then I was super happy, <laughs> obviously. As you should be, the semifinals already guaranteed your best result here in Portugal. How have you built momentum through this competition? Yeah, um, well, I think I think we had some good calls. Like it was hard before the event, you know, it was kind of stormy, and um, and then they managed to like move to Mololeste, and we can I don't know. Uh, also coming from Puerto Rico, I feel like I've been in a camp for like six weeks straight. <laughs> Hawaii, Puerto Rico, here. Um, even yesterday, I was like, "Oh wow, the girls like the quarters are on the call, so I need to wake up again." And then, but we didn't surf, which was good because um, I needed a rest day. And um, so, um, yeah, just you know, being one day after another and, and trying to just keep focused and excited. Speaking of exciting, we were looking at the stats. Women surfing this year has been so much about the next generation and what they are bringing to the sport. But you look at the semifinals here, all of you with at least eight years on tour. What does it say for the veterans that you guys are showing up? <laughs> Yay! Um, I don't know, maybe some experience out here on the cold and stuff. Um, the last few days I was like, oh, you think the Challenger Series is hard, but it's pretty hard, like the condition here and stuff. And the cold, like we said, um, it does doesn't make it easy. I was in a in a like drier way to drier room earlier before my heat to get my feet a bit more warmer and stuff. So yeah, I don't know. Um, I tried to put pressure a little bit on, on Luana too. Um, I was catching a lot of wave, you know, I was like trying to make her lose priority too. Um, it didn't work. She had she had a good <laughs> she had a good good mental and, and, and good mindset and um, um, she also got a wave at the end, but didn't make the score. So super happy to make it. And um, I mean, um, Luana is surfing super well. So I know she got a great future. <laughs> Congratulations. You have anything you want to say to friends and family back home? <laughs> oui, merci beaucoup d'avoir regardé. Merci à tous ceux qui sont sur la plage, bien sûr. Et uh, continue à m'envoyer des bonnes vibes. Franchement, j'ai envie d'aller au bout. <laughs> See you then. Merci. Thanks, AJ. Joanne Defay wants to go all the way to the end. She was saying there she's close to doing that, a couple of heats away. She's through to semis. We've gone through women's quarterfinals here this morning. We had this outgoing tide, and we were keeping an eye on conditions throughout. Plenty of waves out there when they came, but it was about being selective and finding the right moment, Jesse. Definitely. Uh, mostly with these conditions, every wave is very similar, but there's that special wave that comes with a little bit more water in the bank, and gives you a little bit more time to really open up on the bottom turn and get better angles. So the, per the people who found that had advantage. Thoughts on what we've seen so far this morning, Kaipo? Uh, wow, some dramatic heat. <laughs> and, we, and with to Jesse's point, with you kind of the lack of, of, of waves and the lack of consistency, you have to be really strategic out there and those strikes. Um, and I guess the other thing that came out of that interview too is, you know, we talked so much about the new school, didn't we, with the women? And it showed up that the uh, stop number three, it's all about the veterans uh, on semifinals and on. We did have that matchup of youth versus experience in the heat that saw Betty Lou Sakura Johnson taking on Tatiana Weston Webb. Let's check the recap of that encounter. And we have talked about surfers in the past rekindling the fire of previous victories. Betty Lou had all the momentum coming out of Hawaii, but this woman, Tatiana, she's a former champ here. She looked really good in these lefts. You know, these lefts and the way that Tatiana was able to surf, it just reminded me of her performance back in 2022, where she came up on top as a champ over here. It looks like she utilized just the same kind of surfing technique, quick snaps, Great decision making on the waves that she did go on. Great use of priority as well. And that is when the veterans will have an advantage 
over some of these younger surfers. You know, Sakura just couldn't get started out there, really. I mean, it was a challenge going. She got this barrel. This was her highest score, trying to squeak out of there, but never really got going. She had a couple of false starts at the beginning, and that cost her. Meanwhile, Tatiana just strong. I mean, looking forward to the semis and the finals. It's my pick. So quarterfinal results sees Tatiana go to semis and looking to repeat that performance from two years ago as she went all the way here. She set up the platform. She's shown she's got a great read on the ocean here and making key decisions in that heat. She'll look to bring that back when we recommence hostilities with women's semi-finals. Meanwhile, we saw the world champ in the water taking on another veteran in Lakey. And Jesse, I'm surprised to see maybe a couple of errors here from Caroline Marks. Yeah, I think so. I think this wave was um, clutch for the heat because she outran the wave. Like that first section was very nice. You were probably expecting with the low tide, the wave running a little bit too much, but that wave actually held. And she outran the wave and didn't get too critical in the beginning. This turn here was beautiful though, just straight vertical. And she actually got a better score on this wave than the other one. And that just showed kind of a missed opportunity on the other wave. And Lakey on the other hand started off kind of like um, Caroline right here with one big crack getting around a five point ride. And then kind of had a lot of mistakes like Ended up falling, getting stuck. I think this is one of the waves. She goes for a second turn, and as soon as she was riding it out and getting the score, she ended up um, just getting buckled off. And right here on the end, when you think everything was done, she lets um, Caroline go on the first wave. She comes in the second one, just two beautiful turns, bringing the board all the way around under her chest. And yeah, finish it off very strong for Lakey. Just Impressive from her to fight back. It is a tight heat that's set up for a really dramatic finish. Peterson ran straight back up into the Rebel Athlete Zone. She was watching her score come on the screen in here. It was good news for her. She's delighted. Another semi-final show. And let's check out the bracket for the women and have a look at those two semis. And experience is going to come to play. They've all got plenty of it. But it's interesting to see the veterans bouncing back here in Portugal, Pipo. Yeah, and... Um Hey, I'm not that I have a crystal ball, but I'd love to see a Tatiana Weston Webb and Lakey Peterson repeat of the final uh, this year. I wouldn't be opposed to that as well. <laughs> <laughs> and just from your point of view, mate, insights into Tati's camp. How's she feeling in this event compared to other events where you've seen her go really well in the past? I think I think this event is special for her because just she feels comfortable. Like she feels comfortable in the place, and that's the first thing you need to have in order to do good in a place. You gotta love. You gotta love the place, and then everything kind of translates in the water. Looking forward to men's quarterfinals. Let's check out the bracket and see the eight surfers remaining on the men's side of the draw. A dramatic day of competition yesterday. There are only eight left. Let's have a look at these quarters. What we like in the look of here, guys? Uh, I like the look of guys like Jake Marshall, Crosby, Cola Pinto, and Ramsey all in their first quarterfinals. Uh, Jake, uh, Jake did make a quarterfinal in 2022 over at Sunset, but that was, that's was that been his best result so far. So it's fresh air for those three. But then you look at the other guys, you're looking at uh, some guys who have done really, really well here in Portugal, Jesse. Yeah, and I like that you picked the first two because I'm actually looking more to the bottom. I think the two most informed surfers of the event would be Gabriel and Griffin. They've been surfing so good. Yesterday, there were standouts. And I think with the conditions of today, kind of running fast beach breaks, they could bring it to the air and they, they're going to look deadly. Yeah. Well, you'd have to pick Medina at this point Just, as the favorite. He is so informed. Yeah. And yeah. There he he's is. out there. <laughs> he's warming up, too. The anticipation ahead of these men's quarterfinals will build because tide and time waits for no man. And we've got a low tide at the moment and ultimately made the decision that we need a little bit more water on the bank to give proper opportunity opportunity for everybody. So we're going to just let that tide go out, bottom out, swing around. It came in really fast yesterday. And when it did, it was almost like as soon as we got underway, things fired up again. What are we expecting that to do this afternoon with a slightly smaller swell in the water? Exactly the same. Like I was just mentioning on the last heat, like it looks very fun right there right now. But in 10 minutes, it just, just disappears. That's how much water moves around here in Europe. For the European people, they're very used to that. But for people that don't have those big ties, they're like, what are you doing? But then 
on the same way around. Like when the water starts getting in the bank, it's going to get super fun again. Obviously, not like yesterday because it was bigger, but still very fun conditions. Well, we're going to let that tide go out. We're going to come back a 10.45 call for an 11 o'clock restart here when we get a bit more water on the bank. Men's quarterfinals are next. Some great looking matchups. Join us at worldsurfleague.com for all the action when we recommence. Will it tarnish my legacy if I stay too long? I don't know. I mean, look, I won Pipeline two years ago. Aloha Kakahiaka with a double shaka. Opening day of the season. It is on. The championship tour is the pinnacle. This is the dream for pro surfers. It is the best waves in the best conditions all around the world. Surfing as a whole has been looked at so many different ways, but we're here competing. You have winners and you have losers, and there's no in-between. Every time these surfers paddle into their field of play, the ocean, anything can happen. There is going to be a moment in your career, if not several, where you're fearing for your life. The pressure that's on some of those surfers below that mid-year cut line, it's do or die situation. These are elite athletes who put their entire lives into preparing for this tour. Chris Moore, I'm 31 years old and I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii. Five time world champion. John Florence. Gabriel Medina. The young 20 year old world champion making history. Third. That sounds so old, huh? <laughs> yeah. I'm 31 years old. <laughs> I'm 18. This is where they've wanted to be their whole life. 
Same mullet, same me. <laughs> yeah, what a day. Let's go. The WSL Championship Tour is surfing's biggest stage. Oh, man, Mamiya! What is happening? They're here to win a world title, plain and simple. You're either a champion or you're a failure. I think this is a turning point in women's surfing. Caitlin Simmers dominating. The brutality of sport is that it's all about winning and losing. To the victors go the spoils. This is the WSL's Inside Pro Surfing, the Lexus Pipe Pro. It's actually going to be crazy waves go down today. Scary is one way to describe the small stretch of reef that is the most significant place in the world of surfing. Pipeline is definitely one of the most iconic waves on the world tour. There's serious consequences at this wave. People have died out there, but then people's whole careers have been made on just a single wave out here. Oh my goodness, Pipeline is coming alive. It's kind of like the red carpet of surfing. Like this is where you want to like show and strut your stuff. The greats of this sport have put on performances out here. To be able to perform here, to hold your own, to get the results here, I think it just like solidifies that you're one of the best. There's a saying, you don't know unless you go. Here he is, look at that back door, Kate. Oh my Lord, have mercy. The reality of any wave with a reef underneath them, your risk of hitting the reef is very high. You hit that reef, you're, you know, you're in trouble. There's just big stumps like that that are sticking out. He's gonna be under the lip, grabbing the rope. Those moments are defining of whether or not that you have the ability to get back on the horse to catch another wave. Oh, and gets the guillotine. Check on him, Hawaiian Water Patrol. People are lying if they say they're not scared out there, and I'll be the first to admit it, I absolutely am, but I think that's what makes it such a great challenge, is if you can know how to navigate that fear, you're gonna have a really good outcome in this event. We are at the Media Day, WSL Media Day. I am on stop number three, my favorite stop, the social stop. For the best surfers in the world, the 2024 season officially begins in a few days. Say, I'm Griff and I'm Cries, and we're going to quiz each other. Sure, go for it. I'm Griff. <laughs> in 2024, everyone is raising the stakes. We have seen the best surfers in the world get even better. There is no getting warmed up. It starts at Pipeline. You have to be on point. So hands up. Yeah, and then three, two, and action. It's all smiles for Hawaiian Carissa Moore. The five-time world champion is following her heart and stepping all away right. from competition. Sweet, thanks guys. I'm leaving the door open. I, I'm not looking this at this as like a retirement. I'm looking at this as I'm stepping away for now and I'm gonna explore all the different things that life has to offer at this moment. It's a nerve-wracking decision um, because it's the biggest change I've, I've had in my whole life. But I'm also really, really excited about what lies ahead and the opportunities to evolve and grow and challenge myself. This was a special one this year in Maui, the end of 2018. The waves were fire, like some of the best waves I think we've ever gotten on Maui. I just remember it was a super solid swell, but it was like the most perfect direction. It is so hard to sum up Carissa Moore because she is so all-encompassing. She is one of the best female pro surfers that we have ever seen in the surfing world. She's the modern idol for these young girls right now who are dreaming of becoming professional surfers. I definitely think like the first world title was super special. Just getting to like reach that level that I had dreamed of my whole life and being like, oh, I, I can do this. I, I, like, I did it. It's been 13 years that I've competed on the championship tour, and there's been some incredible highs, but also a few lows, too. 
to see her go through that devastation of losing a world title, having it slip through your fingers, not once, but twice. No one had ever gone through that in surfing history before, and that was devastating. Your new world champion, Caroline Marks. Yeah, I mean, it was. It was super hard. It was super hard losing the final event two years in a row after, like, finishing leading the season. It was heartbreaking. And regardless of the outcome, like, I tried my best. And I would have loved to have come out on top, but you know what? It didn't work out that way. Whether you are here or all there, we don't care. We are happy that the Lexus Pipe Pro is on like popcorn. Heat number one, elimination round for the women's division. In the red, Carissa Moore. In the blue, Betty Lou Sakura Johnson. I've dedicated most of my life to competitive surfing and being in a jersey, and I, I want to go on surf trips again. I want to make a movie. I would love to dive more into my nonprofit. I want to spend more time with my husband and maybe start a family at some point. I know, I got kind of emotional getting my jersey. <laughs> As we see Carissa Moore pulling in to her first wave, oh. and she almost oh. makes it out. Yeah, almost. Uh, you know what? She had to fight through that little chandelier, and that, I think, slowed her down. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson has the flow. Belting it. Nice, clean finishing move there. Yeah. Yeah. Carissa making a move. About a minute on the clock. Gets a little bit speed out in front. She pulls into the come first on, section, on, but she it. can't come yeah. out. She goes down, chasing a 3.86. All surf fans hoping to see that fairy tale story. I've seen her back in a final here at Pipeline, but it will be an elimination round loss for the five time world champion. This is not the end of Chris Amore's career, I feel. I think a new chapter in life may recharge her. We never know. One thing I've learned about Chris Amore is never, ever count her out. With Carissa moving on, a new generation of women are taking over surfing's biggest stage. Uh, legends are leaving. However, that's opening up space for people to step into that spotlight. New faces that want to prove themselves. They want to be here. Kelly Slater, this is his 31st pipe event. Oh. There's just that, always that question mark, you know what I mean? Like, what's Kelly gonna do? How's he gonna surf? What's he gonna ride? It's always exciting. You really have to be present in this moment of his career because we don't know. When is he gonna decide to walk away? I'm not gonna make an announcement. I think I'm just gonna retire when I do. When I step away from full-time competition, I won't be at a loss, you know? It'll be, for me, it's a celebration. Kelly Slater up and running with five, four, three, two, one. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the last of Kelly Slater, a nine, two, three. The undisputed greatest surfer of all time is entering his 31st season on the championship tour. Will it tarnish my legacy if I stay too long? I don't know. You're kind of only as good as your last heat in some people's minds but I don't think that whatever I do now is going to erase 11 world titles. Do you think you can still contend for a world title at this stage in his career? Honestly, probably not. At some point, it's like gravity. He's competing against guys that are like 22 years old, 23 years old, people in the absolute prime of their life. <laughs> hey, Kelly, how are you? Hey, good. I got to get the shade. Too much sun. Yeah. <laughs> good to see you, buddy. Right, buddy. Yeah, it's good. The proof is in the pudding. He has slowly declined. and. Um, he's 52 years old, but what do you expect? It's hard when you hear somebody read, say, or write those things. It's hard when your life is public, when there's opinions about you out in the world. It stings a little when you hear somebody say that. Whether it's true or not, oh, yeah. it doesn't matter. Let's surf. All right. What's amazing is him actually even being relevant and being able to compete. He only won a couple years ago. Kelly Slater has just won his eighth Billabong Pro Lifeline. I committed my life to this, you know, all the heartbreak, but I just savor this, and this is the best one in my life. I mean, Kelly's such a freak, you know what I mean? Like, the fact that he's mixing it up and winning events is insane. 
even just getting out of bed and competing with these young guys is a big deal. Like that's a major accomplishment to be able to compete at a high level physically as a 52 year old. He's been on this tour for longer than anybody. It's a miracle that he's still here. It's not normal. The GOAT, Kelly Slater. For Kelly Slater, my 2024 year is just celebrating my career as a champion and walk away with my head hell high. How are you guys? Good to see you. How you been? Let's go. Cool. How are you? What's up, man? Good to see you. Another mic. I only have two on. Can't you just tap into these things? No. Jesus Christ. There's a reason for so many mics. The surfing world always wants to hear what Slater has to say, and more importantly, when he plans to walk away. When you turn 50, things are different. You're with family and work and goals and desire. All right. Competition's been my platform for so long. I don't really know much else. When I step away from full-time competition, I won't be at a loss, you know? It'll be, for me, it's a celebration. What's motivating me okay. is pipeline. I love right. surfing pipeline. All right, I'm done. Let's surf. Yeah. Morning, guys. How you doing? Good. All right. Ethan Ewing coming up against the eight-time pipe you. champion, Kelly Slater. Kelly Slater is about to paddle out into his 31st appearance at Pipeline. His fountain of youth is Pipeline. It's the one wave where he is timeless. It's where he belongs. When we talk about surfers having a relationship with a wave, top three of all time, it has to be Pipeline and Kelly Slater. Here we go, Kelly, up and riding in a barrel, at back door, disappeared, and Kelly Slater is going to keep traveling and does not reach the opening. Ethan Ewing, late drop, side slipping into the barrel, he's deep, he's disappeared, and Ethan Ewing is coming out! Double E! Slater right behind him, pulls into a barrel of his own, gets through some turbulent water there. He goes down, still seeking a completion. Kelly Slater, look at the break, that 12.66 combo gets in the barrel, sits under the curtain, comes out, and going for the alley-oop, and lands it. Kelly now, leading a 9.66. Here we go, Slater, straight into it, winding Aww. down the line. We see Kelly Slater bow out of competition. You know, I can blame the ocean, but it was really my impatience. I was really looking forward to this event. I think it's really important for all of us who've been watching Kelly forever or if you're just watching him for the first time, you really have to be present in this moment of his career because we don't know. When is he going to decide to walk away? And that would be the greatest of all time moving on. I'm not going to make an announcement. I think I'm just going to retire when I do. Just kind of step away, but we'll see. Molly putting her head down, grabs the rail of the pipeline, pulls up and under. Your last score, perfect 10. That semi-final heat was history made. I don't think we've ever seen women surf to that caliber at pipeline ever. Betty Lou dropping in, grabbing rail. It was just monumental for women in not just surfing, but sport as well. We're on standby for the score. There's been many major milestones in women's surfing, and their performance standards continue to be pushed, especially at Pipeline. Moana, wow. the young phenomena, continues her assault at the Bonsai Pipeline. It all started with a few female icons paving the way. When we look back at the really iconic female surfers at Pipe, there's been a bunch of women throughout generations who have put time in here in this lineup and, and really fought to get some waves. You think about who came before for this moment, and you have to think about Marga Oberg, Rochelle Ballard, Lisa Anderson, Megan Abuba, Kiala Kennelly. I had to just go and get burned and get stuffed and take really gnarly wipeouts and stuff behind guys just to get the respect. This is the most competitive lineup in the world. Being able to surf pipeline with no one else in the lineup is so important to the growth and evolution of women's surfing because they've never, we've never been given the opportunity. And now we have the opportunity to showcase to the world that this is where women's surfing is going. Bigger backdoor section, pulls straight in, driving through, comes out. Good golly, Miss Molly. They told me to stand still, so I'ma keep on running. Women have really staked their claim here at Pipeline, and not just sitting out there in the lineup, they're packing bombs. In the barrel, Tyler Wright comes out. 
you're seeing more confidence, taking off deeper, getting deeper in the barrel. Because there's an event out here, that has really helped professional women surfing at Pipe and Backdoor. There's gonna be a massive shakeup. Some of these younger girls coming up the ranks that are feeling really established, like a Betty Lucifer, a Johnson, Molly Pickwell, they have that confidence from being rookies already. They're starting to really believe that they belong. It's just really cool to see how many of the new generation are really progressing the sport. You can see it in their eyes. They've got this determination and you can tell they want it. That's what it takes is a holistic effort of everybody backing women surfing to surf the craziest, most dangerous wave in the world. I think this is a turning point in women surfing. It's gonna push all of us to like do things we never thought we could. Shining. I'm still feeling this change in the guard. I'm still feeling this new generation coming into play. And when we look at the quarterfinals, Katie Simmers has so much courage in her surfing. She draws different lines to the other girls, you know? She charges and it seems like she reads the ocean really, really well, which is really crucial for the girls to get into positions to catch hard waves. Tati's fearless. She hits any big section more than I think than almost any other girl on tour. This is going to be a test for our women. The girl that wins a pipe pro today will have to have left her fears at home. The women's quarterfinals, Tatiana Weston-Webb in the blue, Caitlin Simmers in the red. Caitlin has first priority right now. Caitlin Simmers at back door. Oh, Simmering, boiling on the stove and coming out. Wow. Jesus. Behind the pig, completely backdooring that section. That is what we love to see. 917 for Katie Simmers. She's out. Tati finding some room to move in pipeline. She'll still be chasing Katie's lead. We are in a gladiator pit. I mean, when there's when there's a lot of people in the water, here we go. Oh, Katie Simmers grabbing the rail. Wow. Her technique is just absolutely textbook. She is an icon of the sport. Caitlin Simmers dominating over Tatiana Weston Webb. Those were my two only waves I've had my whole season here. Like, I kind of can't really get waves here, so I was terrified out there, but I'm glad I got some. Yay! <laughs> Quarterfinal number three Caroline Marks, Betty Lou Sakura Johnson. Pipeline has offered Sakura her best CT result. That was a semi-final placing. She's just still a teenager. Oh, She's got uh, open eyes. She's learning. So what I expect from her is a little more maturity. And that's a dangerous combo because she's got a lot of talent. Caroline Marks, six years on the championship tour. She's already won a world title at just 21 years old. Having the world title with you, you, you become a new person. There is that experience to draw on. And if you can focus on that, the second one will come. This is Caroline Marks versus Betty Lou, Sakura Johnson. Both of these women charge. Caroline goes pipeline, gets behind the barrel. The easy one for Caroline Marks. Back doorway for Sakura. Pops through there. Strains out for completion. Sakura's got a strong lead over Caroline Marks. Big sets coming through here. And Sakura's on the move. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this one. Sakura, this thing's a beast. Spin through Sakura right. Johnson. Comes up. That thing was a spooky, scary, wide, dredging backdoor barrel. Coming after the spin, that was just perfectly reading. That was the best wave of the day so far on the woman's side. That was as good as it gets for backdoor. That's everything today is committing to those waves early, committing to the drop, and then she was rewarded with the barrel. That was the easy part. A 9.7. Her highest single wave score of her professional career. Betty Lou, Sakura Johnson, moving on into semi-final two. 
you just have to keep putting time, especially here at Pipe. And yeah, just really happy to get these conditions, these waves. And I think all of us girls, all, even the men, are just, these are the days we dream of. Absolutely stole the show. Sakura was ready for the moment. She's put in the time in all aspects of her surfing. And we're starting to see that confidence that she has in herself, in the water, in how she wants to win come through. Imai has first priority. He's going to swing at this backdoor section. Behind the curtain, Imai looking for the exit. No. Fiovanti airdrops it, comes screaming out. John up and riding in the barrel and coming out with the spin. 50 seconds. Can John John come back? Hold the horses. Here comes John John. Deep in pipeline, looking for the oh. exit. Welcome back to the Lexus Pipeline Pro. Good morning, everybody, and what a Saturday morning that we have for you for the Lexus Pipe Pro, the Hawaiian Water Patrol activated for finals day. It's pumping and it's eight to 10 feet with some wild peaks. It's uh, like a 13 second interval. Makes the waves move really kind of slower, but they stand up on the reef super tall. So it's going to be, you know, an epic day of finals. Let's go. The stage is set, glassy conditions, big wide open caves if you want it. The quarterfinals get underway and Emai Kalani DeVault comes close to perfection. Emai on the takeoff, pulls in late. Deep, behind the curtain. Emai looking for the exit, no. Oh my God. That was a 10. That was exciting. Oh, I had it, that was my. Quarter final number two is gonna be Baron Mamiya taking on Jordy Smith. The past three years, I kind of went into a little bit of a slump. This off season was just all about training. Surfing came second for once. I'm not the youngest guy on tour anymore, so you got to kind of put in extra effort and extra hours. I still have the same fire. I still have the same burn to win. I grew up watching, you know, all the best surfers in the world surf pipe. I always knew that, like, if I wanted to be one of the best surfers at pipe, I would have to win the pipe contest. And pipes, like, up there with winning a world title. That's at the pinnacle for me, for sure. As we get set up for this classic, Jordy Smith locking in against Momia. Big deep cave, and that one explodes <laughs> and takes down the South African local boy, Para Mamiya. Nice to take off right behind him with the arm bar and comes out without a problem. Jordy made a bit of a mistake there. He probably needed to do one big pump. He would have made that barrel. Yeah, that was radical. Absolute fireworks to start this heat. Mamiya without priority. Oh, man, Jordy's going to be kicking himself. As Jordy comboed within a few minutes. An absolute show from the North Shore local boy. He's really playing with it. This is so last minute. The first time I surfed out here, I think I was eight or, or nine, or I was, I was pretty young. Uncle Derek took me out, and my first wave, I just cartwheeled down the face, and I was like, wow, this is, this is crazy. I just got pounded, but then my next wave was fun, and yeah, I just fell in love with wave ever since. John Florence is a former two-time world champion and considered the most talented surfer in the world. But even the best have challenges to overcome. Yeah, I think the mindset and the confidence for me ebbs and flows. I think it's, uh, I spent a lot of my career chasing what that motivation is, you know? For me, competing has always been a really cool kind of platform in that way. Last year, I struggled with it. John John Florence comboed and a nearly impossible task. Medina, 19 point, two wave total. John John going down. I think last year was perfect for this year. And what I mean by that is it was kind of irritating for him finishing eighth. He was pissed, he was hungry. You know, he obviously wanted to finish really high. Oh my God, inside I was like screaming, just uh, uh, tearing the, down the scaffolding, like, no, don't talk to me. I don't want to, I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to be here. <laughs> I just I internalize it. John's a pretty low key guy and mellow. So when he has that extra fuel, I think it's a good thing. I honestly feel like John sees the next few years as like a really important chapter in his life of like being at that apex part of his surfing career physically, psychologically, 
And I feel like he's planning on having a massive year. Barrel at pipeline, John John. He's getting older and surfers keep getting better and better. It's been a few years since he's won, you know, so there's always those challenges you need to overcome mentally to like get back into the winner's circle. Still going. Come on. I think if I were to win another world title at this stage of my career, it will definitely be different. I just feel like I have a little bit of unfinished business. It's just all part of this process, trusting myself and going to the heat, taking a deep breath, letting go and just surf. Like almost smiling and just saying like, I can't wait for my first wave to come right now. Like that would be pretty satisfying. Quarterfinal four, John John Florence versus Leonardo. I mean, obviously John is the favorite. This is the quarterfinal I've been looking forward to. A two-time world champ, eight event wins, and we're celebrating John John's 100th career event here at Pipe. Leo, he's one of the gnarliest guys I hear at Pipe. I think we're gonna see some fireworks before the end. Here we go, back door. Fiovanti airdrops into this one. It's a wide open barrel. Fiovanti comes screaming out. Battle back very easy. That was a beautiful way for him and very smart. Can John John come back? Pipeline. He sees this wave, has potential. He just gets deep enough, gets the speed out, and he's gonna get rewarded. He's done that about 10,000 times out here. <laughs> Pretty cool. Here goes Leo. He just needs a three-point ride. Make it, make it, make it. That should do it. A voracious competitor. Finish it off as well. Like, he knows how important every little bit is. He did a 2.84. He got a flat three-point ride. No time on the clock, really. It's a 50 second, guys. 50 seconds. Hold the horses. Here comes John John. John John Florence. Oh. Big girthy pipe barrel. John John comes out. John John need a 4.67. Look at the numbers coming through. An 8.0. John wins the heat. John John has just turned the heat in the final 30 seconds. Wow. I knew we were gonna have a nail biter, but man, that was incredible. I ended up being a little deeper than I thought I was, and then I got a good pump though, and it was, it was just a fun, fun wave. I was just thinking, I was like, if I make this heat, I'm, I'm changing my strategy the next one. <laughs> Insane finish. Epic for John John, and I can't wait to see the girls next. Can't wait. 30 seconds remaining, first priority blue. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson now in position for a bomb. Super gnarly, oh, committed drop. I think this was a moment in women's surfing history. It will go down as one of the greatest heats ever. The stage is set here at the Bonsai Pipeline. Glassy conditions, big wide open caves if you want it. It'd be so fun. It's actually going to be crazy waves go down today. I think I'm going to go biggest board I got and just yeah into a couple of eight. Everyone on the beach is super excited, especially us up in the tower. I genuinely think this is probably the best day that we've seen and it's going to be firing. It's going to be well double overhead, I reckon, for the whole day. Ooh, perfect day to crown some champions. The girls have been knocking on the door to some great performances for a long time. The girls just need to trust how good they are and take some risks and they're going to have a wide open canvas and be able to have a lot of space to maybe take the best wave of their life. Coming into semi-final two, we've got a great matchup. It's Molly Pickham taking on Betty Lou. Molly and Betty have grown up sparring against each other their whole lives. They bring this intensity together, which I think is going to be amplified in this heat. She's a great competitor. She's hard to beat. She's got some little tricks up her sleeve. Betty Lou is all fireworks. Sakura is so competitive on anything. Yes. She likes to get the claws out. She's like a spicy one. She's crazy. She's feisty. I'm spicy. She's like, you know, do whatever she wants to get what she wants. And then all of us are like, well, we will, we will do that too then. Me and Molly like love to compete against each other. We have a great understanding of where we're coming from and how bad we want to get there. And whatever it is, we're going to like fight for it. Semi-final heat number two. Quite the storybook matchup right here. These two want to beat each other more than anything. Betty Lou just lunging into daylight. What an easy make for the North Shore local. She saw that one coming in. You can just tell she knows what she's looking for out there. Molly will want to go anything. 
She wants a vault and she wants that Hail Mary moment. She wants the 10. Here we go, out in the back. Molly putting her head down, grabs her around the pipeline, pulls up and under. She's still going and gets the exit. Oh my goodness. This was absolutely insane. Grabs the rail, pulls up underneath the lip, comes flying out with the spit. Molly has a dial. She is so sure of herself. Molly Picklow, your last score was a perfect 10. I'm so stoked for her. That is an iconic wave. What a moment for her to remember forever. This heat is far from over. Molly Picklow swinging again. This one spitting her out into the channel. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson now in position for a bomb. Dropping in, pipeline barrel pulls in under the hook, spat out. Betty Lou and Molly Picklow yeah. absolutely charging. Such a moment for women surfing. It honestly is bringing tears to my eyes. This is history being made right now. Betty Lou has dreamed of this. It's her last chance to try to turn this heat. And here she goes, looking for an 8.61. She pulls in. She salutes the hometown crowd. Stand by for the last score. Betty Lou, an 8-3-3. Molly Picklum survives oh. and moves on to the final. This is crazy. As little kids, we would have been dreaming of this. And to be fair, a lot of older women would have been dreaming of that for women surfing. And I'm so honoured to be taking that opportunity and taking the charge with Betty Lou and all these girls who are amazing surfers, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. As much as they both wanted to beat each other, they also wanted to empower each other. It was just monumental for women in not just surfing, but sport as well. At the age of 18, Caitlin Simmers is becoming the face of female surfing. Caitlin Simmers, two big wins in her rookie season. Katie Simmers coming from a place called Oceanside, California. There's this kind of grit to it. Katie Simmers is really proud to be like that OG Oceanside. Her parents are awesome. Katie's dad, he's an electrician by trade. Katie's mom, a hospice nurse, and just like kind of that American story of just working hard and keeping things simple. Impeccable surfing, new school, designed with some old school line. She draws different lines to the other girls. It seems like she reads the ocean really, really well, which is really crucial to get into positions to catch hard waves. You know, I'm super impressed with Caitlin Simmers and some of the new crop. I've never seen like such a new young generation so excited to serve pipeline. And this is just the beginning of what we're gonna see in the many years to come. It's time for the final. Caitlin Simmers taking on Molly Picklum. Thank you so much, guys. Molly has come into this year so strong, so focused. Nothing is getting to her. But Katie can be a dark horse and to take that win. Molly Picklum locks in, pulls in, standing tall, and gets blown out at back door. Here goes Katie Simmers pulling in. Huge back door section. And she reappears. And right when you see Molly start with a 927, Caitlin does have an answer back. Opportunity setting up for Katie Simmers. Drills it. How about that hack? Molly Picklum, she needs a score of a 339. Katie's just got to just hold it for a couple minutes. Molly up and riding, grabbing rail in the barrel. Can she thread it out? No. Katie Simmers is your champion of the Lexus Pipe Pro presented by Yeti. Yeah, girl. Katie, congratulations. Pipeline for the f girl. That's all I have to say. This is terrifying. I respect everyone who wants a part of it, and I respect everyone who doesn't want a part of it. She has always been doing things that are kind of just right over the edge of like what people can do. I swear she can, she can almost do anything. You're a champion. The magnitude of her performance, stuff we never seen in surfing history. It was showing to the world that she's gonna be the best ever someday. Let's get behind your women's champion, Katie Simmers. We just saw the bar go so high for women surfing. Today inspired me 100%. However, I always knew the women had it in them if we had the opportunities.
It's always been known kind of that the girls can like surf pipe, but I hope this event shows everyone like the girls can do it. I'm really happy to be a part of it, but I'm just proud of all the girls who like are even out there and friggin' hearts racing and really scary. <laughs> It's come down to these two surfers, John John Florence, Baron Mamiya. Here we go, the battle. John John pulling in. That's what we want to see. Baron, not to be outdone, he wants the answer back. Baron, oh! Baron Mamiya! What is happening? Are you kidding me? The crowd has gathered at Ehukai Beach Park. Pipeline, the playing field. We saw a WSL buoy out there disappear. That's a clear indicator that there's some waves coming. On standby for the storm. The numbers were excellent for John John Florence. He's going to be into the final. Baron Mamiya with eyes on the lineup right now. This could be a breakthrough event for Baron Mamiya. The North Shore is Baron Mamiya's backyard, and Pipeline is his playground. Oh, here goes Baron Mamiya. We call him Barrel Mamiya and Pipeline pulling in. Coming in. I love surfing pipe. It's my favorite wave in the world. I grew up surfing it. He's got a special relationship with this wave for sure. I mean, when he was a kid, they started calling him Backdoor Baron. Man, I don't think there's been a barrel this whole season that he hasn't made. He knows every part of the reef. He knows exactly where he wants to be. He believes in himself, having won Sunset, you know, the other year. Year 2022, Hurley Pro champion, Baron Mamiya! I really want to beat the best guys, you know, John, Medina, Philippe. If you're on this tour and you don't think you can beat those guys, then you probably shouldn't be on tour. Growing up watching John, you know, every kid from here wants to be like him. John John Florence wins his very first Pipe Masters trophy. I always knew that, like, if I wanted to be one of the best surfers at Pipe, I would have to win the Pipe Contest, and I really want to do that. Pipe's, like, up there with winning a world title for me. Baron Mamiya in blue. Connor in red. Semi-final number two out in the water to set our finals. What about this battle right here with open priority? Connor O'Leary looking pipeline. Baron says, I'll go back door, but a simultaneous barrel. Connor and Pipe coming out. Baron at back door. Oh wow. He's coming out. Firing. Wow. What a start to this heat for Connor. I feel like if he's gonna have a go at Baron, he's gotta go right and take some opportunity off Baron. Backdoor again, barrel in, Baron Mamiya deep. He pumps and he's coming out. Holy moly. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. That first pump, Rocky, set him up, driving all oh. the way through that hollow section. Then the second section, he makes it through. Baron backdoor, Baron drags through this in a cavern, disappears second section from Mamiya. And Baron comes flying out. It's definitely the best heat I ever had on CT. <laughs> uh, I just felt like, I don't know, it was just like, I just felt like every good wave was coming to me. You said that winning the pipe event would be the pinnacle for you, and now you're one heat away. How do you keep the focus and get ready for that next heat? Yeah, just uh, keep the same, same focus, same goal. Um, just one more heat. A total win for the North Shore of Oahu. As you see where we are here at Pipeline, well, that's the school that both these guys went to. What a school to grow up in, huh? <laughs> Amazing, right across from Pipe. Oh man, just finish school and come straight check the waves. It's just too good to be true when you look at the final. Baron Mamiya, John Florence, both look North Shore local boys, both the best at Pipe and Backdoor, and it's like two different generations slightly. You know, for Baron, he looked up to everything John did, wanted to emulate his style, how late he was taken up under the lip, but then he also probably dreamed of beating him too. You gotta appreciate the history these two have and uh, the history that they're about to make. Here we go, the battle. Both surfers looking at this one, a little shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow. And here goes Baron Mamiya, he's going. 
Baron tapping right. Baron's gonna get the first wave, locks in, trying to burn off some speed. He'll get pumped out. There's a make. Definitely in his happy place. Hasn't been tested yet, but here's John stretched out, wave it back door. John winning the opening exchange out in front with the lead and priority. John John pulling in, barrel to pipeline, coming out and oh, going oh, on. Finds the exit, John John Florence. Baron, not to be outdone, he wants the answer back. He's on the takeoff, grabbing rail, pipeline, deep section here, looking for the exit. Baron! Oh, man, Mavia! What is happening? Are you kidding me? Is this real life? <laughs> no, Rocky, I don't think so. Last score for Baron Mamiya, a perfect 10. 10 straight across the board for Baron Mamiya. Baron's in first with a 10.0 and a six. We'll count this down. Five, four, three, two, one. The final is over. Give it up for your Lexus Pipe Pro 2024 champion, Baron, Baron, Mamma, Mamma! Oh my God, dude, I can't believe it. That 10, I, I literally couldn't believe I made it. I was in the barrel and I just couldn't believe I came out. I was like, baffled. <laughs> This win for Baron will definitely cement him as one of the legends from Hawaii. I think everyone's gonna remember who he had in the final, which makes it even more incredible. You wanna beat the best. On finals day, John was the guy to beat, and Baron proved that he could mix it up with the best at backdoor and pipeline. Yeah, John. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bob. It's a pleasure to be out there with you. Baron Mamiya, your champion. And now number one in the world, he'll be wearing yellow over at Sunset Beach. On the next episode of WSL's Inside Pro Surfing, the Hurley Pro Sunset Beach gets underway. Wave raises up, pickles up into the lip. Big explosion behind her, and what a turn. Molly Picklum, radical. Here comes Robinson laying down that rail, hangs on to it, transitions in the barrel. Jack Robinson punches free. Oh my goodness. Will it tarnish my legacy if I stay too long? I don't know. I mean, look, I won Pipeline two years ago. Aloha Kakahiaka with a double shaka. Opening day of the season. It is on. The championship tour is the pinnacle. This is the dream for pro surfers. It is the best waves in the best conditions all around the world. Surfing as a whole has been looked at so many different ways, but we're here competing. You have winners and you have losers, and there's no in-between. Every time these surfers paddle into their field of play, the ocean, anything can happen. There is going to be a moment in your career, if not several, where you're fearing for your life. The pressure that's on some of those surfers below that mid-year cut line, it's do or die situation. These are elite athletes who put their entire lives into preparing for this tour. Carissa Moore, I'm 31 years old, and I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii. Five-time world champion. John Florence. Gabriel Medina. The young 20-year-old world champion making history. Third. That sounds so old, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm 31 years old. <laughs> I'm 18. This is where they've wanted to be their whole life. Same mullet, same me. <laughs> yeah, what a day. Let's go. The WSL Championship Tour is surfing's biggest stage. Oh, Mamiya! What is happening? They're here to win a world title, plain and simple. You're either a champion or you're a failure. I think this is a turning point in women's surfing. Caitlin Simmers dominating. The brutality of sport is that it's all about winning and losing. To the victors go the spoils. 
This is the WSL's Inside Pro Surfing, the Lexus Pipe Pro. It's actually going to be crazy waves go down today. Scary is one way to describe the small stretch of reef that is the most significant place in the world of surfing. Pipeline is definitely one of the most iconic waves on the world tour. But serious consequences at this wave, people have died out there, but then people's whole careers have been made on just a single wave out here. Oh my goodness, Pipeline is coming alive. It's kind of like the red carpet of surfing, like this is where you want to like show and strut your stuff. The greats of this sport have put on performances out here. To be able to perform here, to hold your own, to get the results here, I think it just like solidifies that you're one of the best. There's a saying, you don't know unless you go. Here he is, look at that back door, Kane. Oh my lord, have oh, mercy. The reality of any wave with a reef underneath them, the risk of hitting the reef is very high. You hit that reef, you're, you know, you're in trouble. There's just big stumps like that that are sticking out. He's gonna be under the lip, grabbing the rail. Those moments are defining of whether or not that you have the ability to get back on the horse to catch another wave. Oh, and gets the guillotine. Check on him, Hawaiian Water Patrol. People are lying if they say they're not scared out there, and I'll be the first to admit it, I absolutely am, but I think that's what makes it such a great challenge, is if you can know how to navigate that fear, you're gonna have a really good outcome in this event. We are at the Media Day, WSL Media Day. I am on stop number three, my favorite stop, the social stop. For the best surfers in the world, the 2024 season officially begins in a few days. Say, I'm Griffin, I'm Cries, and we're gonna quiz each other. Oh, sure, go for it. I'm Griffin. <laughs> in 2024, everyone is raising the stakes. We have seen the best surfers in the world get even better. There is no getting warmed up. It starts at Pipeline, you have to be on point. So hands up. Yeah, and then three, two, and action. It's all smiles for Hawaiian Carissa Moore. The five-time world champion is following her heart and stepping right. away from competition. Sweet, thanks guys. I'm leaving the door open. I, I'm not looking this at this as like a retirement. I'm looking at this as I'm stepping away for now and I'm gonna explore all the different things that life has to offer at this moment. It's a nerve-wracking decision um, because it's the biggest change I've, I've had in my whole life. But I'm also really, really excited about what lies ahead and the opportunities to evolve and grow and challenge myself. This was a special one this year in Maui, the end of 2018. The waves were fire. Like, some of the best waves I think we've ever gotten on Maui. I just remember it was a super solid swell, but it was like the most perfect direction. It is so hard to sum up Carissa Moore because she is so all-encompassing. She is one of the best female pro surfers that we have ever seen in the surfing world. She's the modern idol for these young girls right now who are dreaming of becoming professional surfers. I definitely think like the first world title was super special. Just getting to like reach that level that I had dreamed of my whole life and being like, oh, I, I can do this. I, I, like. I did it. It's been 13 years that I've competed on the championship tour and there's been some incredible highs, but also a few lows too. To see her go through that devastation of losing a world title, having it slip through your fingers, not once, but twice. No one had ever gone through that in surfing history before and that was devastating. Your new world champion, Caroline Marks. Yeah, I mean, it was. It was super hard. It was super hard losing the final event two years in a row after, like, finishing leading the season. It was heartbreaking. And regardless of the outcome, like, I tried my best. And I would have loved to have come out on top, but you know what? It didn't work out that way. Whether you're here or all there, 
We don't care. We are happy that the Lexus Pipe Pro is on like popcorn. Heat number one, elimination round for the women's division. In the red, Carissa Moore. In the blue, Betty Lou Sakura Johnson. I've dedicated most of my life to competitive surfing and being in a jersey, and I, I want to go on surf trips again. I want to make a movie. I would love to dive more into my nonprofit. I want to spend more time with my husband and maybe start a family at some point. I know, I got kind of emotional getting my jersey. <laughs> As we see Carissa Moore pulling in to her first wave, oh. and she almost oh. makes it out. Yeah, almost. Uh, you know what? She had to fight through that little chandelier, and that, I think, slowed her down. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson has the flow, belting it. Nice, clean finishing move there. Yeah. Yeah. Carissa making a move about a minute on the clock. Gets a little bit speed out in front. She pulls into the first section, but she can't come out. She goes down, chasing a 3.86. All surf fans hoping to see that fairy tale story of seeing her back in a final here at Pipeline, but it will be an elimination round loss for the five time world champion. This is not the end of Chris Amore's career, I feel. I think a new chapter in life may recharge her. We never know. One thing I've learned about Carissa Moore is never, ever count her out. With Carissa, that's opening up space for people to step into that spotlight. New faces that want to prove themselves. They want to be here. Kelly Slater, this is his 31st pipe event. Oh. There's just that, always that question mark, you know what I mean? Like, what's Kelly gonna do? How's he gonna surf? What's he gonna ride? It's always exciting. You really have to be present in this moment of his career because we don't know. When is he gonna to decide to walk away? I'm not gonna make that announcement. I think I'm just gonna retire when I do. When I step away from full-time competition, I won't be at a loss, you know. It'll be, for me, it's a celebration. Kelly Slater up and running with five, four, three, two, one. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the last of Kelly Slater, a 9-2-3. The undisputed greatest surfer of all time is entering his 31st season on the championship tour. Will it tarnish my legacy if I stay too long? I don't know. You're kind of only as good as your last heat in some people's minds, but I don't think that whatever I do now is going to erase 11 world titles. Do you think you can still contend for a world title at this stage in his career? Honestly, probably not. At some point, it's like gravity. He's competing against guys that are like 22 years old, 23 years old, people in the absolute prime of their life. <laughs> hey, Kelly, how are you? Hey, good. I gotta get the shade. Too much sun. Yeah. <laughs> good to see you, buddy. All right, buddy. Yeah, good. The proof is in the pudding. He has slowly declined, and um, he's 52 years old, but what do you expect? It's hard when you hear somebody read, say, or write those things. It's hard when your life is public, when there's opinions about you out in the world. It stings a little when you hear somebody say that. Whether it's true or not, oh, yeah. it doesn't matter. But surf, all right? What's amazing is him actually even being relevant and being able to compete. He only won a couple years ago. Kelly Slater has just won his eighth Philibach Pro Pipeline. I committed my life to this, you know, all the heartbreak, but I just savor this, and this is the best one in my life. I mean, Kelly's such a freak, you know what I mean? Like, the fact that he's mixing it up and winning events is insane. Even just getting out of bed and competing with these young guys is a big deal. Like, that's a major accomplishment to be able to compete at a high level physically as a 52-year-old. He's been on this tour for longer than anybody. It's a miracle that he's still here. It's not normal. The GOAT, Kelly Slater! For Kelly Slater, my 2024 year is just celebrating my career as a champion and walk away with my head hell high. How are you guys? Good to see you. How you been? Let's go. Howdy. How are you? What's up, man? Good to see you. Another mic. I only have two on. Can't you just tap into these things? No. Jesus Christ. There's a reason for so many mics. The surfing world always wants to hear what Slater has to say, and more importantly, when he plans to walk away. When you turn 50, things are different. With family and work and goals and desire. All right. 
competition's been my platform for so long, I don't really know much else. When I step away from full-time competition, I won't be at a loss, you know? It'll be, for me, it's a celebration. What's motivating me okay. is pipeline. I love right. surfing pipeline. All right, I'm done. Let's surf. Yeah. Morning, guys. How you doing? Good. All right. Ethan Ewing coming up against the eight-time pipe champion, Kelly Slater. Kelly Slater is about to paddle out into his 31st appearance at Pipeline. His fount of youth is Pipeline. It's the one way where he is timeless. It's where he belongs. When we talk about surfers having a relationship with a wave, top three of all time, it has to be Pipeline and Kelly Slater. Here we go, Kelly, up and riding in a barrel, at back door, disappeared, and Kelly Slater is going to keep traveling and does not reach the opening. Ethan Ewing, late drop, side slipping into the barrel, he's deep, he's disappeared, and Ethan Ewing is coming out! Double E! Slater right behind him, pulls into a barrel of his own, gets through some turbulent water there. He goes down, still seeking a completion. Kelly Slater, look at the break, that 12.66 combo gets in the barrel, sits under the curtain, comes out, and going for the alley-oop, and lands it. Kelly now, leading a 9.66. Here we go, Slater, straight into it, winding Aww. down the line. We see Kelly Slater bow out of competition. You know, I can blame the ocean, but it was really my impatience. I was really looking forward to this event. I think it's really important for all of us who've been watching Kelly forever or if you're just watching him for the first time, you really have to be present in this moment of his career because we don't know. When is he going to decide to walk away? And that would be the greatest of all time moving on. I'm not going to make an announcement. I think I'm just going to retire when I do. Just kind of step away, but we'll see. Molly putting her head down, grabs the rail of the pipeline, pulls up and under. Your last score, perfect 10. That semifinal heat was history made. I don't think we've ever seen women surf to that caliber at pipeline ever. Betty Lou dropping in, grabbing rail. It was just monumental for women in not just surfing, but sport as well. We're on standby for the score. There's been many major milestones in women's surfing, and their performance standards continue to be pushed, especially at Pipeline. Moana, wow. the young phenomena, continues her assault at the Bonsai Pipeline. It all started with a few female icons paving the way. When we look back at the really iconic female surfers at Pipe, there's been a bunch of women throughout generations who have put time in here in this lineup and, and really fought to get some waves. You think about who came before for this moment, and you have to think about Marga Oberg, Rochelle Ballard, Lisa Anderson, Megan Abuba, Kiala Kennelly. I had to just go and get burned and get stuffed and take really gnarly wipeouts and stuff behind guys just to get the respect. This is the most competitive lineup in the world. Being able to surf pipeline with no one else in the lineup is so important to the growth and evolution of women's surfing because they've never, we've never been given the opportunity. And now we have the opportunity to showcase to the world that this is where women's surfing is going. Bigger backdoor section, pulls straight in, driving through, comes out. Good golly, Miss Molly. They told me to stand still, so I'ma keep on running. Women have really staked their claim here at Pipeline, and not just sitting out there in the lineup, they're packing bombs. In the barrel, Tyler Wright comes out. You're seeing more confidence, taking off deeper, getting deeper in the barrel. Because there's an event out here that has really helped professional women surfing at Pipeline Backdoor. There's gonna be a massive shakeup. Some of these younger girls coming up the ranks that are feeling really established, like a Betty Lucifer, a Johnson, Molly Picklum, they have that confidence from being rookies already. They're starting to really believe that they belong. It's just really cool to see how many of the new generation are really progressing the sport. You can see it in their eyes. They've got this determination, and you can tell they want it. That's what it takes, is a holistic effort of everybody backing women surfing to surf the craziest, most dangerous wave in the world. I think this is a turning point in women's surfing. It's gonna push all of us to like do things we never thought we could.
shining. I'm still feeling this change in the guard. I'm still feeling this new generation coming into play. And when we look at the quarterfinals, Katie Simmers has so much courage in her surfing. She draws different lines to the other girls, you know? She charges and it seems like she reads the ocean really, really well, which is really crucial for the girls to get into positions to catch hard waves. Tati's fearless. She hits any big section more than I think than almost any other girl on tour. This is going to be a test for our women. The girl that wins a pipe pro today will have to have left her fears at home. The women's quarterfinals, Tatiana Weston Webb in the blue, Caitlin Simmers in the red. Caitlin has first priority right now. Caitlin Simmers at back door. Oh, Simmering, boiling on the stove and coming out. Wow. Easy. Behind the pig, completely backdooring that section. That is what we love to see. 917 for Katie Simmers. She's out to prove that she means business. The smile coming off of her face right now is incredible. As we see now, Tati finding some room to move in Pipeline. She'll still be chasing Katie's lead. We are in a gladiator pit. I mean, when there's when there's a lot of people in the water, here we go. Oh, Katie Simmers grabbing the rail. Wow. Her technique is just absolutely textbook. She is an icon of the sport. Caitlin Simmers dominating over Tatiana Weston Webb. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Those were my two only waves I've had my whole season here. Like, I kind of can't really get waves here, so I was terrified out there, but I'm glad I got some. Quarterfinal number three, Caroline Marks, Betty Lou Sakura Johnson. Pipeline has offered Sakura her best CT result. That was a semi-final placing. She's still a teenager. She's got open eyes. She's learning. So what I expect from her is a little more maturity. And that's a dangerous combo because she's got a lot of talent. Caroline Marks, six years on the championship tour. She's already won a world title at just 21 years old. Having the world title with you, you, you become a new person. There is that experience to draw on, and if you can focus on that, the second one will come. This is Caroline Marks versus Betty Lou Sakura Johnson. Both of these women charge. Caroline goes pipeline, gets behind the barrel. The easy one for Caroline Marks. Back doorway for Sakura. Pumps through there. Strains out for completion. Sakura's got a strong lead over Caroline Marks. Big sets coming through here. And Sakura's on the move. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this one. Sakura, this thing's a beast. Spin through Sakura right. Johnson. Comes up. That thing was a spooky, scary, wide, dredging backdoor barrel. Coming after the spit, that was just perfectly reading. That was the best wave of the day so far on the woman's side. That was as good as it gets for backdoor. That's everything today is committing to those waves early, committing to the drop, and then she was rewarded with the barrel. That was the easy part. A 9.7. Her highest single wave score of her professional career. Betty Lou, Sakura Johnson, moving on into semi-final two. You just have to keep putting time, especially here at Pipe, and yeah, just really happy to get these conditions, these waves, and I think all of us girls, all, even the men are just, these are the days we dream of. Absolutely stole the show. Sakura was ready for the moment. She's put in the time in all aspects of her surfing, and we're starting to see that confidence that she has in herself, in the water, in how she wants to win come through. Imai has first priority. He's going to swing at this backdoor section. Behind the curtain, Imai looking for the exit. No. Fiovanti airdrops it, comes screaming out. John up and riding in the barrel and coming out with the spin. 50 seconds. Can John John come back? Hold the horses. Here comes John John. Deep in pipeline, looking for the exit. Oh. 
Welcome back to the Lexus Pipeline Pro. Good morning, everybody, and what a Saturday morning that we have for you for the Lexus Pipe Pro, the Hawaiian Water Patrol activated for finals day. It's pumping and it's eight to 10 feet with some wild peaks. It's uh, like a 13 second interval. Makes the waves move really kind of slower, but they stand up on the reef super tall. So it's gonna be, you know, an epic day of finals. Let's go. The stage is set, glassy conditions, big wide open caves if you want it. The quarterfinals get underway and Emai Kalani DeVault comes close to perfection. Emai on the takeoff, pulls in late. Deep, behind the curtain. Emai looking for the exit, no. Oh my God. That was a 10. That was That was my. Quarterfinal number two is going to be Baron Mamiya taking on Jordy Smith. The past three years, I kind of went into a little bit of a slump. This off season was just all about training. Surfing came second for once. I'm not the youngest guy on tour anymore, so you got to kind of put in extra effort and extra hours. I still have the same fire. I still have the same burn to win. I grew up watching, you know, all the best surfers in the world surf pipe. I always knew that, like, if I wanted to be one of the best surfers at pipe, I would have to win the pipe contest. And pipe's, like, up there with winning a world title. That's at the pinnacle for me, for sure. As we get set up for this classic, Jordy Smith locking in against Momia. Big, deep cave, and that one explodes. <laughs> and takes down the South African local boy, Paramamia, knifes the takeoff right behind him with the arm bar and comes out without a problem. Jordy made a bit of a mistake there. He probably needed to do one big pump. He would have made that barrel. Yeah, that was radical. Absolute fireworks to start this heat. Mamiya without priority. Oh, man, Jordy's going to be kicking himself. As Jordy comboed within a few minutes. Absolute show from the North Shore local boy. He's really playing with it. This is so last minute. The first time I surfed out here, I think I was eight or, or nine, or I was, I was pretty young. Uncle Derek took me out, and my first wave, I just cartwheeled down the face, and I was like, wow, this is this is crazy. I just got pounded, but then my next wave was fun, and yeah, I just fell in love with wave ever since. John Florence is a former two-time world champion and considered the most talented surfer in the world. But even the best have challenges to overcome. Yeah, I think the mindset and the confidence for me ebbs and flows. I think it's, uh, I spent a lot of my career chasing what that motivation is, you know? For me, competing has always been a really cool kind of platform in that way. Last year, I struggled with it. John John Florence comboed in a nearly impossible task. Medina, 19 point, two wave total. John John going down. I think last year was perfect for this year. And what I mean by that is it was kind of irritating for him finishing eighth. He was pissed. And he was hungry. You know, he obviously wanted to finish really high. Oh my God, inside, I was like screaming, just uh, uh, tearing the, down the scaffolding. Like, no, don't talk to me. I don't want to, I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to be here. <laughs> I just I internalize it. John's a pretty low key guy and mellow. So when he has that extra fuel, I think it's a good thing. I honestly feel like John sees the next few years as like a really important chapter in his life of like being at that apex part of his surfing career, physically, psychologically. And I feel like he's planning on having a massive year. Barrel at Pipeline, John John. He's getting older and surfers keep getting better and better. It's been a few years since he's won, you know, so there's always those challenges you need to overcome mentally to like get back into the winner's circle. Still going, come on. I think if I were to win another world title at this stage of my career, it will definitely be different. I just feel like I have a little bit of unfinished business. It's just all part of this process, trusting myself and going to the heat, taking a deep breath, letting go and just surf. Like almost smiling and just saying like, I can't wait for my first wave to come right now. Like that would be pretty satisfying. Quarterfinal four, John John Florence versus Leonardo. I mean, obviously, John is the favorite. This is the quarterfinal I've been looking forward to. A two-time world champ, eight event wins, and we're celebrating John John's 
100th career event here at Pipe. Leo, he's one of the gnarliest guys I hear at Pipe. I think we're gonna see some fireworks before the end. Here we go, back door. Fiovanti airdrops into this one. It's a wide open barrel. Fiovanti comes screaming out. Battle back very easy. That was a beautiful way for him and very smart. Can John John come back? Pipeline. He sees this wave, has potential. He just gets deep enough, gets the speed out, and he's gonna get rewarded. He's done that about 10,000 times out here. <laughs> Pretty cool. Here goes Leo. He just needs a three-point ride. Make it, make it, make it. That should do it. A voracious competitor. Finish it off as well. Like, he knows how important every little bit is. He needed a 2.84. He got a flat three-point ride. No time on the clock, really. It's a 50 second, guys. 50 seconds. Hold the horses. Here comes John John. John John Florence. Oh. Big girthy Let's pipe go. barrel. John John <laughs> comes out. John John needs a 4.67. Look at the numbers coming through. An 8.0. John wins the heat. John John has just turned the heat in the final 30 seconds. Wow. I knew we were going to have a nail biter, but man, that was incredible. I ended up being a little deeper than I thought I was, and then I got a good pump though, and it was, it was just a fun, fun wave. I was just thinking, I was like, if I make this heat, I'm, I'm changing my strategy the next one. Insane finish. Epic for John John, and I can't wait to see the girls next. Can't wait. 30 seconds remaining, first priority blue. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson now in position for a bomb. Super gnarly, committed drop. I think this was a moment in women's surfing history. It will go down as one of the greatest heats ever. The stage is set here at the Bonsai Pipeline. Glassy conditions, big wide open caves if you want it. It is so fun. It's actually going to be crazy waves go down today. I think I'm going to go biggest board I got and just yeah into a couple of like. Everyone on the beach is super excited, especially us up in the tower. I genuinely think this is probably the best day that we've seen and it's going to be firing. It's going to be well double overhead, I reckon, for the whole day. Ooh, perfect day to crown some champions. The girls have been knocking on the door to some great performances for a long time. The girls just need to trust how good they are and take some risks and they're going to have a wide open canvas and be able to have a lot of space to maybe take the best wave of their life. Coming into semi-final two, we've got a great matchup. It's Molly Pickham taking on Betty Lou. Molly and Betty have grown up sparring against each other their whole lives. They bring this intensity together, which I think is going to be amplified in this heat. She's a great competitor. She's hard to beat. She's got some little tricks up her sleeve. Betty Lou is all fireworks. Sakura is so competitive on yes. anything. She likes to get the claws out. She's like a spicy one. She's crazy. She's feisty. I'm spicy. She's like, you know, do whatever she wants to get what she wants. And then all of us are like, well, we will, we will do that too then. Me and Molly like love to compete against each other. We have a great understanding of where we're coming from and how bad we want to get there. And whatever it is, we're going to like fight for it. Semi-final heat number two. Quite the storybook matchup right here. These two want to beat each other more than anything. Betty Lou just lunging into daylight. What an easy make for the North Shore local. She saw the one coming in. You can just tell she knows what she's looking for out there. Molly will want to go anything. She wants a ball, and she wants that Hail Mary moment. She wants the 10. Here we go, out in the back. Molly putting her head down, grabs her rail of pipeline, pulls up and under. She's still going and gets the exit. Oh, goodness. This was absolutely insane. Grabs the rail, pulls up underneath the lip, comes flying out with the spit. Molly has it dialed. She is so sure of herself. Molly Picklow, your last score was a perfect 10. I'm so stoked for her. That is an iconic wave. What a moment for her to remember forever. This heat is far from over. Molly Picklow swinging again. This one spitting her out into the channel. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson now in position for a bomb. Dropping in, pipeline barrel pulls in under the hook, spat out. Betty Lou and Molly Picklow yeah. absolutely charging. 
such a moment for women surfing. It honestly is bringing tears to my eyes. This is history being made right now. Betty Lou has dreamed of this. It's her last chance to try to turn this heat. And here she goes, looking for an 8.61. She pulls in. She salutes the hometown crowd. Stand by for the last score. Score, score. Molly Picklum survives oh. and moves on to the final. This is crazy. As little kids, we would have been dreaming of this. And to be fair, a lot of older women would have been dreaming of that for women surfing. And I'm so honoured to be taking that opportunity and taking the charge with Betty Lou and all these girls who are amazing surfers, for sure. As much as they both wanted to beat each other, they also wanted to empower each other. It was just monumental for women in not just surfing, but sport as well. At the age of 18, Caitlin Simmers is becoming the face of female surfing. Caitlin Simmers, two big wins in her rookie season. Woo! Katie Simmers coming from a place called Oceanside, California. There's this kind of grit to it. Katie Simmers is really proud to be like that OG Oceanside. Her parents are awesome. Katie's dad, he's an electrician by trade. Katie's mom, a hospice nurse, and just like kind of that American story of just working hard and keeping things simple. Impeccable surfing, new school, designed with some old school line. She draws different lines to the other girls. It seems like she reads the ocean really, really well, which is really crucial to get into positions to catch hard waves. You know, I'm super impressed with Caitlin Simmers and some of the new crop. I've never seen, like, such a new young generation so excited to start Pipeline. And this is just the beginning of what we're going to see in the many years to come. It's time for the final. Caitlin Simmers taking on Molly Picklum. Thank you so much, guys. Molly has come into this year so strong, so focused. Nothing is getting to her, but Katie can be a dark horse and take that win. Molly Picklum locks in, pulls in, standing tall, and gets blown out at backdoor. Here goes Katie Simmers pulling in. Huge backdoor section. And she reappears. And right when you see Molly start with a 927, Caitlin does have an answer back. Opportunity setting up for Katie Simmers. Drills it. How about that hack? Molly Picklum, she needs to score the 339. Katie's just got to just hold it for a couple minutes. Molly up and riding, grabbing rail in the barrel. Can she thread it out? No. Katie Simmers is your champion of the Lexus Pipe Pro presented by Yeti. Yeah, girl. Katie, congratulations. Pipeline for the girl. That's all I have to say. This way it's terrifying. I respect everyone who wants a part of it, and I respect everyone who doesn't want a part of it. She has always been doing things that are kind of just right over the edge of like what people can do. I swear she can she can almost do anything. You're a champion. The magnitude of her performance, stuff we never seen in surfing history. It was showing to the world that she's gonna be the best ever someday. Let's get behind your women's champion, Katie Simmers. We just saw the bar go so high for women surfing. Today inspired me 100%. However, I always knew the women had it in them if we had the opportunities. It's always been known, kind of, that the girls can, like, surf pipe, but I hope this event shows everyone, like, the girls can do it. I'm really happy to be a part of it, but I'm just proud of all the girls who, like, are even out there and friggin' hearts racing and really scary. <laughs> It's come down to these two surfers, John John Florence, Baron Mamiya. Here we go, the battle. John John pulling in. That's what we want to see. Baron, not to be outdone, he wants the answer back. Baron, oh! Baron Mamiya! What is happening? Are you kidding me? The crowd has gathered at Ehukai Beach Park. Pipeline, the playing field. We saw a WSL buoy out there disappear. That's a clear indicator that there's some waves coming. On standby for the score. The numbers were excellent for John John Florence. He's going to be into the final. 
Baron Mamiya with eyes on the lineup right now. This could be a breakthrough event for Baron Mamiya. The North Shore is Baron Mamiya's backyard, and Pipeline is his playground. Oh, here goes Baron Mamiya. We call him Barrel Mamiya and Pipeline pulling in. Coming in. I love surfing pipe. It's my favorite wave in the world. I grew up surfing it. He's got a special relationship with this wave for sure. I mean, when he was a kid, they started calling him Backdoor Baron. Man, I don't think there's been a barrel this whole season that he hasn't made. He knows every part of the reef. He knows exactly where he wants to be. He believes in himself, having won Sunset, you know, the other year. Year 2022, Hurley Pro champion, Baron Mamiya! I really want to beat the best guys, you know? John, Medina, Philippe. If you're on this tour and you don't think you can beat those guys, then you probably shouldn't be on tour. Growing up watching John, you know, every kid from here wants to be like him. John John Florence wins his very first Pipe Masters trophy. I always knew that, like, if I wanted to be one of the best surfers at Pipe, I would have to win the Pipe Contest, and I really want to do that. Pipe's, like, up there with winning a world title for me. Baron Mamiya in blue, Connor in red. Semi-final number two out in the water to set our finals. What about this battle right here with open priority? Connor O'Leary looking pipeline. Baron says, I'll go back door, but a simultaneous barrel. Connor and pipe coming out. Baron at back door. Oh, wow. He's coming out. Firing out there. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Wow. What a start to this heat for Connor. I feel like if he's going to have a go at Baron, he's got to go right and take some opportunity off Baron. Back door again, barrel in, barrel Mamiya deep. He pumps, and he's coming out. Holy moly. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. That first pump, Rocky, set him up, driving all the way through that hollow section. Then the second section, he makes it through. Baron back door, Baron drags through this in a cavern, disappears second section from Mamiya. And Baron comes flying out. It's definitely the best heat I ever had on CT. <laughs> uh, I just felt like, I don't know, it was just like, I just felt like every good wave was coming to me. You said that winning the pipe event would be the pinnacle for you, and now you're one heat away. How do you keep the focus and get ready for that next heat? Yeah, just uh, keep the same, same focus, same goal. Um, just one more heat. A total win for the North Shore of Oahu. As you see where we are here at Pipeline, well, that's the school that both these guys went to. What a school to grow up in, huh? <laughs> Amazing, right across from Pipe. Oh man, just finish school and come straight check the waves. It's just too good to be true when you look at the final. Baron Mamiya, John Florence, both look North Shore local boys, both the best at Pipe and Backdoor. And it's like two different generations slightly. You know, for Baron, he looked up to everything John did, wanted to emulate his style, how late he was taken up under the lip, but then he also probably dreamed of beating him too. You gotta appreciate the history these two have and uh, the history that they're about to make. Here we go, the battle. Both surfers looking at this one, a little shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow. And here goes Baron Mamiya, he's going. Baron, up and right. Baron's gonna get the first wave, locks in, trying to burn off some speed. He'll get puffed out. There's the make. Definitely in his happy place. Hasn't been tested yet, but here's John, stretched out, wave at back door. John winning the opening exchange, out in front with the lead and priority. John, John, pulling in, barrel at pipeline, coming out, oh, and oh, oh. on. Finds the exit, John, John, Florence. Baron. Not to be outdone, he wants the answer back. He's on the takeoff, grabbing rail, pipeline, deep section here, looking for the exit, bam! Oh! Oh, man, Mamiya! What is happening? Are you kidding me? Is this real life? <laughs> no, Rocky, I don't think so. Last score for Baron Mamiya, a perfect 10. 10 straight across the board for Baron Mamiya. Baron's in first with a 10.0 and a six. We'll count this down. Five, four, three, two, one. 
The final is over. Give it up for your Lexus Pipe Pro 2024 champion, Marilyn Baron Mamma Mamma. Oh my God, dude, I can't believe it. That 10, I, I literally couldn't believe I made it. I was in the barrel and I just couldn't believe I came out. I was like baffled. This win for Baron will definitely cement him as one of the legends from Hawaii. I think everyone's gonna remember who he had in the final, which makes it even more incredible. You wanna beat the best. On finals day, John was the guy to beat, and Baron proved that he can mix it up with the best at backdoor and pipeline. Yeah, John. <laughs> Thank you so much, John. Good pleasure to be out there with you. Baron Mumia, your champion. And now number one in the world, he'll be wearing yellow over at Sunset Beach. On the next episode of WSL's Inside Pro Surfing, the Hurley Pro Sunset Beach gets underway. Wave raises up, pickles up into the lip. Big explosion behind her, and what a turn. Molly Picklum, radical. Here comes Robinson laying down that rail, hangs on to it, transitions in the barrel. Jack Robinson punches free. Oh my goodness. Will it tarnish my legacy if I stay too long? I don't know. I mean, look, I won Pipeline two years ago. Aloha Kakahiaka with a double shaka. Opening day of the season. It is on. The championship tour is the pinnacle. This is the dream for pro surfers. It is the best waves in the best conditions all around the world. Surfing as a whole has been looked at so many different ways, but we're here competing. You have winners and you have losers, and there's no in-between. Every time these surfers paddle into their field of play, the ocean, anything can happen. There is going to be a moment in your career, if not several, where you're fearing for your life. The pressure that's on some of those surfers below that mid-year cut line, it's do or die situation. These are elite athletes who put their entire lives into preparing for this tour. Carissa Moore, I'm 31 years old, and I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii. Five-time world champion. John Florence. Gabriel Medina. The young 20-year-old world champion making history. Toad, that sounds so old, huh? <laughs> yeah. I'm 31 years old. <laughs> I'm 18. This is where they've wanted to be their whole life. Same mullet, same me. <laughs> yeah, what a day. Let's go. The WSL Championship Tour is surfing's biggest stage. The barrel on it, Mamiya! What is happening? They're here to win a world title, plain and simple. You're either a champion or you're a failure. I think this is a turning point in women's surfing. Caitlin Simmers dominating. The brutality of sport is that it's all about winning and losing. To the victors go the spoils. This is the WSL's Inside Pro Surfing, the Lexus Pipe Pro. It's actually going to be crazy waves go down today. Scary is one way to describe the small stretch of reef that is the most significant place in the world of surfing. Pipeline is definitely one of the most iconic waves on the world tour. There's serious consequences at this wave. People have died out there, but then people's whole careers have been made on just a single wave out here. Oh my goodness, Pipeline is coming alive. It's kind of like the red carpet of surfing. Like this is where you want to like show and strut your stuff. The greats of this sport have put on performances out here. To be able to perform here, to hold your own, to get the results here, I think it just like solidifies that you're one of the best. There's a saying, 
You don't know and unless you go. Here he is, look at that back door, Kane. Oh my Lord, have mercy. The reality of any wave with a reef underneath them, your risk of hitting the reef is very high. You hit that reef, you're, you know, you're in trouble. There's just big stumps like that that are sticking out. He's gonna be under the lip, grabbing the rope. Those moments are defining of whether or not that you have the ability to get back on the horse to catch another wave. Oh, and gets the guillotine. Check on him, Hawaiian Water Patrol. People are lying if they say they're not scared out there, and I'll be the first to admit it, I absolutely am. But I think that's what makes it such a great challenge, is if you can know how to navigate that fear, you're going to have a really good outcome in this event. We are at the Media Day, WSL Media Day. I am on stop number three, my favorite stop, the Sochi stop. For the best surfers in the world, the 2024 season officially begins in a few days. Say, I'm Griffin, I'm Cries, and we're going to quiz each other. Sure, go for it. I'm Griffin. <laughs> in 2024, everyone is raising the stakes. We have seen the best surfers in the world get even better. There is no getting warmed up. It starts at pipeline. You have to be on point. So hands up. Yeah, and then three, two, and action. It's all smiles for Hawaiian Carissa Moore. The five-time world champion is following her heart and stepping right. away from competition. Sweet, thanks guys. I'm leaving the door open. I, I'm not looking this at this as like a retirement. I'm looking at this as I'm stepping away for now and I'm gonna explore all the different things that life has to offer at this moment. It's a nerve-wracking decision um, because it's the biggest change I've, I've had in my whole life. But I'm also really, really excited about what lies ahead and the opportunities to evolve and grow and challenge myself. This was a special one this year in Maui. The end of 2018, the waves were fire. Like, some of the best waves I think we've ever gotten on Maui. I just remember it was a super solid swell. It was like the most perfect direction. It is so hard to sum up Carissa Moore because she is so all-encompassing. She is one of the best female pro surfers that we have ever seen in the surfing world. She's the modern idol for these young girls right now who are dreaming of becoming professional surfers. I definitely think like the first world title was super special. Just getting to like reach that level that I had dreamed of my whole life and being like, oh, I, I can do this. I, I, like. I did it. It's been 13 years that I've competed on the championship tour and there's been some incredible highs, but also a few lows too. To see her go through that devastation of losing a world title, having it slip through your fingers, not once, but twice. No one had ever gone through that in surfing history before. And that was devastating. Your new world champion, Caroline Marks. Yeah, I mean, it was. It was super hard. It was super hard losing the final event two years in a row after, like, finishing leading the season. It was heartbreaking. And regardless of the outcome, like, I tried my best. And I would have loved to have come out on top, but you know what, it didn't work out that way. Whether you are here or over there, we don't care. We are happy that the Lexus Pipe Pro is on like popcorn. Heat number one, elimination round for the women's division. In the red, Carissa Moore. In the blue, Betty Lou Sakura Johnson. I've dedicated most of my life to competitive surfing and being in a jersey, and I, I want to go on surf trips again. I want to make a movie. I would love to dive more into my nonprofit. I want to spend more time with my husband and maybe start a family at some point. I know, I got kind of emotional getting my jersey. <laughs> As we see Carissa Moore pulling in to her first wave, oh. and she almost oh. makes it out. Yeah, almost. Uh, you know what? She had to fight through that little chandelier, and that, I think, slowed her down. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson has the flow, belting it. Nice, clean finishing move there. Yeah. Yeah. Carissa making a move. About a minute on the clock. Gets a little bit speed out in front. She pulls into the first oh, section, but she can't come out. 
She goes down, chasing a 3.86. All Surf fans hoping to see that fairy tale story of seeing her back in a final here at Pipeline, but it will be an elimination round loss for the five time world champion. This is not the end of Chris Amore's career, I feel. I think a new chapter in life may recharge her. We never know. One thing I've learned about Carissa Moore is never, ever count her out. With Carissa moving on, a new generation of women are taking over surfing's biggest stage. Uh, legends are leaving. However, that's opening up space for people to step into that spotlight. New faces that want to prove themselves. They want to be here. Kelly Slater, this is his 31st pipe event. There's just that, always that question mark, you know what I mean? Like, what's Kelly gonna do? How's he gonna surf? What's he gonna ride? It's always exciting. You really have to be present in this moment of his career because we don't know. When is he gonna decide to walk away? I'm not gonna make that announcement. I think I'm just gonna retire when I do. When I step away from full-time competition, I won't be at a loss. You know, it'll be, for me, it's a celebration. Kelly Slater up and running with five, four, three, two, one. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the last of Kelly Slater, a nine, two, three. The undisputed greatest surfer of all time is entering his 31st season on the championship tour. Will it tarnish my legacy if I stay too long? I don't know. You're kind of only as good as your last heat in some people's minds, but I don't think that whatever I do now is going to erase 11 world titles. Do you think you can still contend for a world title at this stage in his career? Honestly, probably not. At some point, it's like gravity. He's competing against guys that are like 22 years old, 23 years old, people in the absolute prime of their life. <laughs> hey, Kelly Hope. Hey, good. I gotta get the shade. Too much sun. Yeah. <laughs> good to see you, buddy. All right, buddy. Yeah, good. The proof is in the pudding. He has slowly declined, and um, he's 52 years old. But what do you expect? It's hard when you hear somebody read, say, or write those things. It's hard when your life is public, when there's opinions about you out in the world. It stings a little when you hear somebody say that. Whether it's true or not, cool, yeah. it doesn't matter. Let's surf. All right. What's amazing is him actually even being relevant and being able to compete. He only won a couple years ago. Kelly Slater has just won his eighth Philibon Pro. I committed my life to this, you know, all the heartbreak, but I just savor this and this is the best one in my life. I mean, Kelly's such a freak, you know what I mean? Like the fact that he's mixing it up and winning events is insane. Even just getting out of bed and competing with these young guys is a big deal. Like that's a major accomplishment to be able to compete at a high level physically as a 52 year old. He's been on this tour for longer than anybody. It's a miracle that he's still here. It's not normal. The GOAT, Kelly Slater. For Kelly Slater, my 2024 year is just celebrating my career as a champion and walk away with my head hell high. How are you guys? Good to see you, how you been? Let's go. Buddy. How are you? What's up, man? Good to see you. Another mic, I only have two on. Can't you just tap into these things? Jesus Christ. There's a reason for so many mics. The surfing world always wants to hear what Slater has to say, and more importantly, when he plans to walk away. When you turn 50, things are different. With family and work and goals and desire. All right. Competition's been my platform for so long. I don't really know much else. When I step away from full-time competition, I won't be at a loss, you know? It'll be, for me, it's a celebration. What's motivating me is okay. pipeline. I love right surfing pipeline. All right, I'm done. Let's surf. Good morning, guys. How you doing? Good. All right. Ethan Ewing coming up against the eight-time pipe champion, Kelly Slater. Kelly Slater is about to paddle out into his 31st appearance at Pipeline. His fountain of youth is Pipeline. It's the one wave where he is timeless. It's where he belongs. When we talk about surfers having a relationship with a wave, top three of all time, it has to be Pipeline and Kelly Slater.
Here we go, Kelly, up and riding, in a barrel, at back door, disappeared, and Kelly Slater is going to keep traveling and does not reach the opening. Ethan Ewing, late drop, side slipping into the barrel, he's deep, he's disappeared, and Ethan Ewing is coming out! Double E! Slater right behind him, pulls into a barrel of his own, gets through some turbulent water there. He goes down, still seeking a completion. Kelly Slater, look at the break, that 12.66 combo, gets in the barrel, sits under the curtain, comes out, and going for the alley-oop, and lands it. Kelly now, leading a 9.66. Here we go, Slater, straight into it, winding Aww. down the line. We see Kelly Slater bow out of competition. You know, I can blame the ocean, but it was really my impatience. I was really looking forward to this event. I think it's really important for all of us who've been watching Kelly forever, or if you're just watching him for the first time, you really have to be present in this moment of his career because we don't know. When is he gonna decide to walk away? And that would be the greatest of all time moving on. I'm not gonna make an announcement. I think I'm just gonna retire when I do. Just kind of step away, but we'll see. Molly putting her head down, grabs her around the pipeline, pulls up and under. Your last score, perfect 10. That semifinal heat was history made. I don't think we've ever seen women surf to that caliber at Pipeline ever. Betty Lou dropping in, grabbing rail. It was just monumental for women in not just surfing, but sport as well. We're on standby for the score. There's been many major milestones in women's surfing, and their performance standards continue to be pushed, especially at Pipeline. Moana, wow. the young phenomena, continues her assault at the Bonsai Pipeline. It all started with a few female icons paving the way. When we look back at the really iconic female surfers at Pipe, there's been a bunch of women throughout generations who have put time in here in this lineup and, and really fought against waves. You think about who came before for this moment, and you have to think about Margot Oberg, Rochelle Ballard, Lisa Anderson, Megan Abuba, Kiala Kennelly. I had to just go and get burned and get stuffed and take really gnarly wipeouts and stuff behind guys just to get the respect. This is the most competitive lineup in the world. Being able to surf pipeline with no one else in the lineup is so important to the growth and evolution of women's surfing because they've never, we've never been given the opportunity. And now we have the opportunity to showcase to the world that this is where women's surfing is going. Bigger backdoor section, pulls straight in, driving through, comes out. Good golly, Miss Molly. They told me to stand still, so I'ma keep on running. Women have really staked their claim here at Pipeline, and not just sitting out there in the lineup, they're packing bombs. In the barrel, Tyler Wright comes out. You're seeing more confidence, taking off deeper, getting deeper in the barrel. Because there's an event out here that has really helped professional women surfing at Pipeline Backdoor. There's gonna be a massive shakeup. Some of these younger girls coming up the ranks that are feeling really established, like a Betty Lucifer, a Johnson, Molly Piccolo, they have that confidence from being rookies already. They're starting to really believe that they belong. It's just really cool to see how many of the new generation are really progressing the sport. You can see it in their eyes. They've got this determination, and you can tell they want it. That's what it takes, is a holistic effort of everybody backing women surfing to surf the craziest, most dangerous wave in the world. I think this is a turning point in women surfing. It's gonna push all of us to like do things we never thought we could. I'm still feeling this change in the guard. I'm still feeling this new generation coming into play. And when we look at the quarterfinals, Katie Simmers has so much courage in her surfing. She draws different lines to the other girls, you know? She charges and it seems like she reads the ocean really, really well, which is really crucial for the girls to get into positions to catch hard waves. Tati's fearless. She hits any big section more than I think than almost any other girl on tour. This is going to be a test for our women. The girl that wins a part pro today will have to have left her fears at home. The women's quarterfinals, Tatiana Weston-Webb in the blue, Caitlin Simmers in the red.
Caitlin has first priority right now. Caitlin simmers it back door. Oh, Simmering, boiling on the stove and coming out. Wow. Behind the pig, completely backdooring that section. That is what we love to see. 917 for Katie Simmers. She's out to prove that she means business. The smile coming off of her face right now is incredible. As we see now, Tati finding some room to move in Pipeline. She'll still be chasing Katie's lead. We are in a gladiator pit. I mean, when there's when there's a lot of people in the water, here we go. Oh, Caden Simmers grabbing the rail. Wow. Her technique is just absolutely textbook. She is an icon of the sport. Caitlin Simmers dominating over Tatiana Weston Webb. Those were my two only waves I've had my whole season here. Like, I kind of can't really get waves here, so I was terrified out there, but I'm glad I got some. Yay! <laughs> Quarterfinal number three, Caroline Marks, Betty Lou Sakura Johnson. Pipeline has offered Sakura her best CT result. That was a semi-final placing. She's still a teenager. She's got open eyes. She's learning. So what I expect from her is a little more maturity. And that's a dangerous combo because she's got a lot of talent. Caroline Marks, six years on the championship tour. She's already won a world title at just 21 years old. Having the world title with you, you, you become a new person. There is that experience to draw on. And if you can focus on that, the second one will come. This is Caroline Marks versus Betty Lou Sakura Johnson. Both of these women charge. Caroline goes pipeline, gets behind the barrel. The easy one for Caroline Marks. Backdoor wave for Sakura. Pumps through there. Strains out for completion. Sakura's got a strong lead over Caroline Marks. Big sets coming through here. And Sakura's on the move. Look at this. Look at fun. this one. Sakura, this thing's a beast. Spin through Sakura right. Johnson. Comes up. That thing was a spooky, scary, wide, dredging backdoor barrel. Coming after the spin, that was just perfectly written. That was the best wave of the day so far on the woman's side. That was as good as it gets for backdoor. That's everything today is committing to those waves early, committing to the drop, and then she was rewarded with the barrel. That was the easy part. A 9.7. Her highest single wave score of her professional career. <laughs> Betty Lou, Sakura Johnson, moving on into semi-final two. <laughs> You just have to keep putting time, especially here at Pipe, and yeah, just really happy to get these conditions, these waves, and I think all of us girls, all, even the men, are just, these are the days we dream of. Absolutely stole the show. Sakura was ready for the moment. She's put in the time in all aspects of her surfing, and we're starting to see that confidence that she has in herself, in the water, in how she wants to win come through. Emai has first priority. He's going to swing at this backdoor section. Behind the curtain, Emai looking for the exit. No. Fiovanti airdrops it, comes screaming out. John up and riding in the barrel and coming out with the spin. 50 seconds. Can John John come back? Hold the horses. Here comes John John. Deep in pipeline, looking for the oh. exit. Welcome back to the Lexus Pipeline Pro. Good morning, everybody, and what a Saturday morning that we have for you for the Lexus Pipe Pro, the Hawaiian Water Patrol activated for finals day. It's pumping and it's eight to 10 feet with some wild peaks. It's uh, like a 13 second interval. Makes the waves move really kind of slower, but they stand up on the reef super tall. So it's going to be, you know, an epic day of finals. Let's go. The stage is set. Glassy conditions. Big wide open caves if you want it. The quarterfinals get underway, and Emai Kalani DeVault comes close to perfection. Emai on the takeoff, pulls in late, deep behind the curtain. Emai looking for the exit. No. Oh my God. 
monkey. Yeah. That was a tent. That was exciting. Oh, I had it. That was my. Quarterfinal number two is going to be Baron Mamiya taking on Jordy Smith. In the past three years, I kind of went into a little bit of a slump. This off season was just all about training. Surfing came second for once. I'm not the youngest guy on tour anymore, so you got to kind of put in extra effort and extra hours. I still have the same fire. I still have the same burn to win. I grew up watching, you know, all the best surfers in the world surf pipe. I always knew that, like, if I wanted to be one of the best surfers at pipe, I would have to win the pipe contest. And pipe's, like, up there with winning a world title. That's at the pinnacle for me, for sure. As we get set up for this classic, Jordy Smith locking in against Momia. Big, deep cave, and that one explodes. <laughs> and takes down the South African local boy, Para Mamiya. Nice to take off right behind him with the arm bar and comes out without a problem. Jordy made a bit of a mistake there. He probably needed to do one big pump. He would have made that barrel. Yeah, that was radical. Absolute fireworks to start this heat. Mamiya without priority. Oh, <laughs> man, Jordy's going to be kicking himself. As Jordy comboed within a few minutes. An absolute show from the North Shore local boy. He's really playing with it. This is so last minute. The first time I surfed out here, I think I was eight or, or nine, or I was, I was pretty young. Uncle Derek took me out, and my first wave, I just cartwheeled down the face, and I was like, wow, this is this is crazy. I just got pounded, but then my next wave was fun, and yeah, I just fell in love with wave ever since. John Florence is a former two-time world champion and considered the most talented surfer in the world. But even the best have challenges to overcome. Yeah, I think the mindset and the confidence for me ebbs and flows. I think it's, uh, I spent a lot of my career chasing what that motivation is, you know? For me, competing has always been a really cool kind of platform in that way. Last year, I struggled with it. John John Florence comboed in a nearly impossible task. Medina, 19.2 wave total. John John going down. I think last year was perfect for this year. And what I mean by that is it was kind of irritating for him finishing eighth. He was pissed. He was hungry. You know, he obviously wanted to finish really high. Oh my God, inside, I was like screaming, just uh, uh, tearing the, down the scaffolding. Like, no, don't talk to me. I don't want to, I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to be here. <laughs> I just I internalize it. John's a pretty low key guy and mellow. So when he has that extra fuel, I think it's a good thing. I honestly feel like John sees the next few years as like a really important chapter in his life of like being at that apex part of his surfing career, physically, psychologically. And I feel like he's planning on having a massive year. Barrel and pipeline, John John. He's getting older and surfers keep getting better and better. It's been a few years since he's won, you know, so there's always those challenges you need to overcome mentally to like get back into the winner's circle. Still going, come on. I think if I were to win another world title at this stage of my career, it will definitely be different. I just feel like I have a little bit of unfinished business. It's just all part of this process, trusting myself and going to the heat, taking a deep breath, letting go and just surf. Like almost smiling and just saying like, I can't wait for my first wave to come right now. Like that would be pretty satisfying. Quarterfinal four, John John Florence versus Leonardo. I mean, obviously, John is the favorite. This is the quarterfinal I've been looking forward to. A two-time world champ, eight event wins, and we're celebrating John John's 100th career event here at Pipe. Leo, he's one of the gnarliest guys I hear at Pipe. I think we're going to see some fireworks before the end. Here we go, back door. Fiovanti airdrops into this one. It's a wide open barrel. Fiovanti comes screaming out. Paddle back very easy. That was a beautiful wave for him and very smart. Can John John come back? Pipeline. He sees this wave, has potential. He just gets deep enough, gets the speed out, and he's going to get rewarded. He's done that about 10,000 times out here. <laughs> Pretty cool. Here goes Leo. He just needs a three point ride. Make it, make it, make it. That should do it. 
a voracious competitor. Finish it off as well. Like, he knows how important every little bit is. He did a 2.84. He got a flat three-point ride. No time on the clock, really. It's at 50 seconds, guys. 50 seconds. Hold the horses. Here comes John John. John John Florence. Oh. Big girthy Let's pipe go. barrel. John John <laughs> comes out. John John need a 4.67. Look at the numbers coming through. An 8.0. John wins the heat. John John has just turned the heat in the final 30 seconds. Wow. I knew we were going to have a nail biter, but man, that was incredible. I ended up being a little deeper than I thought I was. And then I got a good pump though, and it was, it was just a fun, fun way. I was just thinking, I was like, if I make this heat, I'm, I'm changing my strategy the next one. <laughs> Insane finish. Epic for John John. And I can't wait to see the girls next. Can't wait. 30 seconds remaining, first priority blue. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson now in position for a bomb. Super gnarly oh, committed drop. I think this was a moment in women's surfing history. It will go down as one of the greatest heats ever. The stage is set here at the Bonsai Pipeline. Glassy conditions, big wide open caves if you want it. It be so fun. It's actually going to be crazy waves go down today. I think I'm going to go biggest board I got and just yeah into a couple of like. Everyone on the beach is super excited, especially us up in the tower. I genuinely think this is probably the best day that we've seen and it's going to be firing. It's going to be well double overhead, I reckon, for the whole day. Ooh, perfect day to crown some champions. The girls have been knocking on the door to some great performances for a long time. The girls just need to trust how good they are and take some risks and they're going to have a wide open canvas and be able to have a lot of space to maybe take the best wave of their life. Coming into semi-final two, we've got a great matchup. It's Molly Pickham taking on Betty Lou. Molly and Betty have grown up sparring against each other their whole lives. They bring this intensity together, which I think is going to be amplified in this heat. She's a great competitor. She's hard to beat. She's got some little tricks up her sleeve. Betty Lou is all fireworks. Sakura is so competitive on anything. Yes. She likes to get the claws out. She's like a spicy one. She's crazy. She's feisty. I'm spicy. She's like gonna do whatever she wants to get what she wants. And then all of us are like, well, we will, we will do that too then. Me and Molly like love to compete against each other. We have a great understanding of where we're coming from and how bad we want to get there. And whatever it is, we're going to like fight for it. Semi-final heat number two. Quite the storybook matchup right here. These two want to beat each other more than anything. Betty Lou just lunging into daylight. What an easy make for the North Shore local. She saw the one coming in. You can just tell she knows what she's looking for out there. Molly will want to go anything. She wants a ball, and she wants that Hail Mary moment. She wants the 10. Here we go, out in the back. Molly putting her head down, grabs her rail the pipeline, pulls up and under. She's still going and gets the exit. Oh my goodness. This was absolutely insane. Grabs the rail, pulls up underneath the lip, comes flying out with the spit. Molly has a dive. She is so sure of herself. Molly Picklum, your last score was a perfect 10. I'm so stoked for her. That is an iconic wave. What a moment for her to remember forever. This heat is far from over. Molly picked them swinging again. This one spitting her out into the channel. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson now in position for a bomb. Dropping in, pipeline barrel pulls in under the hook, spat out. Betty Lou and Molly Picklum yeah. absolutely charging such a moment for women's surfing. It honestly is bringing tears to my eyes. This is history being made right now. Betty Lou has dreamed of this. It's her last chance to try to turn this heat. And here she goes, looking for an 8.61. She pulls in. She salutes the hometown crowd. Stand by for the last score. Betty Lou, an 8-3-3. Molly Picklum survives oh. and moves on to the final. 
this is crazy. As little kids, we would have been dreaming of this. And to be fair, a lot of older women would have been dreaming of that for women surfing. And I'm so honoured to be taking that opportunity and taking the charge with Betty Lou and all these girls who are amazing surfers, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. As much as they both wanted to beat each other, they also wanted to empower each other. It was just monumental for women in not just surfing, but sport as well. At the age of 18, Caitlin Simmers is becoming the face of female surfing. Caitlin Simmers, two big wins in her rookie season. Woo! Katie Simmers coming from a place called Oceanside, California. There's this kind of grit to it. Katie Simmers is really proud to be like that OG Oceanside. Her parents are awesome. Katie's dad, he's an electrician by trade. Katie's mom, a hospice nurse, and just like kind of that American story of just working hard and keeping things simple. Impeccable surfing, new school, designed with some old school line. She draws different lines to the other girls. It seems like she reads the ocean really, really well, which is really crucial to get into positions to catch hard waves. You know, I'm super impressed with Caitlin Simmers and some of the new crop. I've never seen like such a new young generation so excited to serve pipeline. And this is just the beginning of what we're going to see in the many years to come. It's time for the final. Caitlin Simmers taking on Molly Picklem. Thank you so much, guys. Molly has come into this year so strong, so focused. Nothing is getting to her. But Katie can be a dark horse and to take that win. Molly Picklem locks in, pulls in, standing tall, and gets blown out at back door. Here goes Katie Simmers pulling in. Huge back door section. And she reappears. And right when you see Molly start with a 927, Caitlin does have an answer back. Opportunity setting up for Katie Simmers. Drills it. How about that hack? Molly Picklum, she needs to score with a 339. Katie's just got to just hold it for a couple minutes. Molly up and riding, grabbing rail in the barrel. Can she thread it out? No. Katie Simmers is your champion of the Lexus Pipe Pro presented by Yeti. Yeah, girl. Katie, congratulations. Pipeline for the girl. That's all I have to say. This wave's terrifying. I respect everyone who wants a part of it, and I respect everyone who doesn't want a part of it. She has always been doing things that are kind of just right over the edge of like what people can do. I swear she can she can almost do anything. You're a champion. The magnitude of her performance, stuff we never seen in surfing history. It was showing to the world that she's gonna be the best ever someday. Let's get behind your women's champion, Katie Simmers. We just saw the bar go so high for women surfing. Today inspired me 100%. However, I always knew the women had it in them if we had the opportunities. It's always been known, kind of, that the girls can, like, surf pipe, but I hope this event shows everyone, like, the girls can do it. I'm really happy to be a part of it, but I'm just proud of all the girls who, like, are even out there and friggin' hearts racing and really scary. <laughs> it's come down to these two surfers, John John Florence, Baron Mamiya. Here we go, the battle. John John pulling in. That's what we want to see. Baron, not to be outdone, he wants the answer back. Baron! Oh! Oh, man, Mamiya! What is happening? Are you kidding me? The crowd has gathered at Ehukai Beach Park. Pipeline, the playing field. We saw a WSL buoy out there disappear. That's a clear indicator that there's some waves coming. On standby for the score. The numbers were excellent for John John Florence. He's going to be into the final. Baron Mamiya with eyes on the lineup right now. This could be a breakthrough event for Baron Mamiya. The North Shore is Baron Mamiya's backyard, and Pipeline is his playground. Oh, here goes Baron Mamiya. We call him Barrel Mamiya and Pipeline pulling in. Coming in. I love surfing pipe. It's my favorite wave in the world. I grew up surfing it. He's got a special relationship with this wave for sure. I mean, when he was a kid, they started calling him Backdoor Baron. Man, I don't think there's been a barrel this whole season that he hasn't made. 
He knows every part of the reef. He knows exactly where he wants to be. He believes in himself, having won Sunset, you know, the other year. Year 2022, Hurley Pro champion, Baron Mamiya! I really want to beat the best guys, you know? John, Medina, Philippe. If you're on this tour and you don't think you can beat those guys, then you probably shouldn't be on tour. Growing up watching John, you know, every kid from here wants to be like him. John John Florence wins his very first Pipe Masters trophy. I always knew that, like, if I wanted to be one of the best surfers at Pipe, I would have to win the Pipe contest, and I really want to do that. Pipe's, like, up there with winning a world title for me. Baron Mamiya in blue, Connor in red. Semi-final number two out in the water to set our finals. What about this battle right here with open priority? Connor O'Leary looking pipeline. Baron says, I'll go back door, but a simultaneous barrel. Connor and pipe coming out. Baron at back door. Oh, wow. He's coming out. Firing out there. Wow. What a start to this heat for Connor. I feel like if he's going to have a go at Baron, he's got to go right and take some opportunity off Baron. Back door again, barrel in, Baron Mamiya deep. He pumps and he's coming out. Holy moly. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. That first pump, Rocky, set him up, driving all the way through that hollow section. Then the second section, he makes it through. Baron back door, Baron drags through this in a cavern, disappears second section from Mamiya. And Baron comes flying out. It's definitely the best heat I ever had on CT. <laughs> uh, I just felt like, I don't know, it was just like, I just felt like every good wave was coming to me. You said that winning the pipe event would be the pinnacle for you, and now you're one heat away. How do you keep the focus and get ready for that next heat? Yeah, just uh, keep the same, same focus, same goal. Um, just one more heat. A total win for the North Shore of Oahu. As you see where we are here at Pipeline, well, that's the school that both these guys went to. What a school to grow up in, huh? <laughs> Amazing, right across from Pipe. Oh man, just finish school and come straight check the waves. It's just too good to be true when you look at the final. Baron Mamiya, John Florence, both look North Shore local boys, both the best at Pipe and Backdoor, and it's like two different generations slightly. You know, for Baron, he looked up to everything John did, wanted to emulate his style, how late he was taken up under the lip, but then he also probably dreamed of beating him too. You gotta appreciate the history these two have and uh, the history that they're about to make. Here we go, the battle. Both surfers looking at this one, a little shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow. And here goes Baron Mamiya, he's going. Baron, up and right. Baron's gonna get the first wave, locks in, trying to burn off some speed, he'll get pumped out. There's the make. Definitely in his happy place, hasn't been tested yet, but here's John, stretched out, wave at back door. John winning the opening exchange, out in front with the lead and priority. John, John, pulling in, barreled at pipeline, coming out, it's going on. Oh, Finds the exit, John, John, Florence. Baron. Not to be outdone, he wants the answer back. He's on the takeoff, grabbing rail, pipeline, deep section here, looking for the exit, bang! Oh! Man, Mamiya! What is happening? Are you kidding me? Is this real life? <laughs> no, Rocky, I don't think so. Last score for Baron Mamiya, a perfect 10. 10 straight across the board for Baron Mamiya. Baron's in first with a 10.0 and a six. We'll count this down. Five, four, three, two, one. The final is over. Give it up for your Lexus Pipe Pro 2024 champion, Baron, Baron, Mamma, Mamma. Oh my God, dude, I can't believe it. That 10, I, I literally couldn't believe I made it. I was in the barrel and I just couldn't believe I came out. I was like baffled.
This win for Baron will definitely cement him as one of the legends from Hawaii. I think everyone's going to remember who he had in the final, which makes it even more incredible. You want to beat the best. On finals day, John was the guy to beat, and Baron proved that he could mix it up with the best at backdoor and pipeline. Yeah, John. Yeah, Baron. Uh, thank you so much, Bob. a pleasure to be out there with you. Baron Mamiya, your champion. And now number one in the world, he'll be wearing yellow over at Sunset Beach. On the next episode of WSL's Inside Pro Surfing, the Hurley Pro Sunset Beach gets underway. Wave raises up, pickles up into the lip. Big explosion behind her, and what a turn. Molly Pickle. Radical. Here comes Robinson laying down that rail, hangs on to it, transitions in the barrel. Jack Robinson punches free. Oh my goodness. Will it tarnish my legacy if I stay too long? I don't know. I mean, look, I won Pipeline two years ago. Aloha Kakahiaka with a double shaka. Opening day of the season. It is on. The championship tour is the pinnacle. This is the dream for pro surfers. It is the best waves in the best conditions all around the world. Surfing as a whole has been looked at so many different ways, but we're here competing. You have winners and you have losers, and there's no in-between. Every time these surfers paddle into their field of play, the ocean, anything can happen. There is going to be a moment in your career, if not several, where you're fearing for your life. The pressure that's on some of those surfers below that mid-year cut line, it's do or die situation. These are elite athletes who put their entire lives into preparing for this tour. Carissa Moore, I'm 31 years old, and I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii. Five-time world champion. John Florence. Gabriel Medina. The young 20-year-old world champion making history. Toad, that sounds so old, huh? <laughs> yeah. I'm 31 years old. <laughs> I'm 18. This is where they've wanted to be their whole life. Same mullet, same me. <laughs> yeah, what a day. Let's go. The WSL Championship Tour is surfing's biggest stage. What is happening? They're here to win a world title, plain and simple. You're either a champion or you're a failure. I think this is a turning point in women's surfing. Caitlin Simmers dominating. The brutality of sport is that it's all about winning and losing. To the victors go the spoils. This is the WSL's Inside Pro Surfing, the Lexus Pipe Pro. It's actually going to be crazy waves go down today. Scary is one way to describe the small stretch of reef that is the most significant place in the world of surfing. Pipeline is definitely one of the most iconic waves on the world tour. There's serious consequences at this wave. People have died out there, but then people's whole careers have been made on just a single wave out here. Oh my goodness, Pipeline is coming alive. It's kind of like the red carpet of surfing. Like this is where you wanna like show and strut your stuff. The greats of this sport have put on performances out here. To be able to perform here, to hold your own, to get the results here, I think it just like solidifies that you're one of the best. There's a saying, you don't know unless you go. Here he is, looking at back door, Kate. Oh my God, have mercy. The reality of any wave with a reef underneath them, your risk of hitting the reef is very high. You hit that reef, you're, you know, you're in trouble. There's just big stumps like that that are sticking out. He's gonna be under the lip, grabbing the rail. Those moments are defining of whether or not that you have the ability to get back on the horse to catch another wave. Oh, and gets the guillotine. Check on him, Hawaiian Water Patrol. People are lying if they say they're not scared out there, and I'll be the first to admit it, I absolutely am, but I think that's what makes it such a great challenge, is if you can know how to navigate that fear, you're gonna have a really good outcome in this event.
We are at the Media Day, WSL Media Day. I am on stop number three, my favorite stop, the social stop. For the best surfers in the world, the 2024 season officially begins in a few days. Say, I'm Griff and I'm Cries, and we're gonna quiz each other. Sure, go for it. I'm Griff. <laughs> in 2024, everyone is raising the stakes. We have seen the best surfers in the world get even better. There is no getting warmed up. It starts at pipeline. You have to be on point. So hands up. Yeah, and then three, two, and action. It's all smiles for Hawaiian Carissa Moore. The five-time world champion is following her heart and stepping right. away from competition. Sweet, thanks guys. I'm leaving the door open. I, I'm not looking this at this as like a retirement. I'm looking at this as I'm stepping away for now and I'm gonna explore all the different things that life has to offer at this moment. It's a nerve wracking decision um, because it's the biggest change I've, I've had in my whole life. But I'm also really, really excited about what lies ahead and the opportunities to evolve and grow and challenge myself. This was a special one this year in Maui, the end of 2018, the waves were fire. Like some of the best waves I think we've ever gotten on Maui. I just remember it was a super solid swell, but it was like the most perfect direction. It is so hard to sum up Carissa Moore because she is so all-encompassing. She is one of the best female pro surfers that we have ever seen in the surfing world. She's the modern idol for these young girls right now who are dreaming of becoming professional surfers. I definitely think like the first world title was super special. Just getting to like reach that level that I had dreamed of my whole life and being like, oh, I, I can do this. I, I, like, I did it. It's been 13 years that I've competed on the championship tour and there's been some incredible highs, but also a few lows too. To see her go through that devastation of losing a world title, having it slip through your fingers, not once, but twice. No one had ever gone through that in surfing history before and that was devastating. Your new world champion, Caroline Marks. Caroline. Yeah, I mean, it was. It was super hard. It was super hard losing the final event two years in a row after, like, finishing leading the season. It was heartbreaking. And regardless of the outcome, like, I tried my best. And I would have loved to have come out on top, but you know what? It didn't work out that way. Whether you are here or all there, we don't care. We are happy that the Lexus Pipe Pro is on like popcorn. Heat number one, elimination round for the women's division. In the red, Carissa Moore. In the blue, Betty Lou Sakura Johnson. I've dedicated most of my life to competitive surfing and being in a jersey. And I, I want to go on surf trips again. I want to make a movie. I would love to dive more into my nonprofit. I want to spend more time with my husband and maybe start a family at some point. I know, I got kind of emotional getting my new jersey. <laughs> As we see Carissa Moore pulling in to her first wave, oh. and she almost oh. makes it out. Yeah, almost. Uh, you know what? She had to fight through that little chandelier, and that, I think, slowed her down. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson has the flow. Belting it, nice clean finishing move there. Carissa making a move, about a minute on the clock. Gets a little bit speed out in front. She pulls into the come first on, section, but on, she can't come on. out. She goes down, chasing a 3.86. All surf fans hoping to see that fairy tale story. I've seen her back in a final here at Pipeline, but it will be an elimination round loss for the five-time world champion. This is not the end of Chris Amore's career, I feel. I think a new chapter in life may recharge her. We never know. One thing I've learned about Chris Amore is never, ever count her out. With Carissa moving on, a new generation of women are taking over surfing's biggest stage. Uh, legends are leaving. However, that's opening up space for people to step into that spotlight. New faces that want to prove themselves. They want to be here.
Kelly Slater, this is his 31st pipe event. There is just that, always that question mark, you know what I mean? Like, what's Kelly gonna do? How's he gonna surf? What's he gonna ride? It's always exciting. You really have to be present in this moment of his career because we don't know. When is he gonna decide to walk away? I'm not gonna make that announcement. I think I'm just gonna retire when I do. I'm gonna step away from full-time competition. I won't be at a loss, you know? It'll be, for me, it's a celebration. Kelly Slater up and running with five, four, three, two, one. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the last of Kelly Slater, a nine, two, three. The undisputed greatest surfer of all time is entering his 31st season on the championship tour. Will it tarnish my legacy if I stay too long? I don't know. You're kind of only as good as your last heat in some people's minds, but I don't think that whatever I do now is going to erase 11 world titles. Do you think you can still contend for a world title at this stage in his career? Honestly, probably not. At some point, it's like gravity. He's competing against guys that are like 22 years old, 23 years old, people in the absolute prime of their life. <laughs> hey, Kelly, how are you? Hey, good. I gotta get the shade. Too much sun. Yeah. <laughs> good to see you, buddy. All right, buddy. Yeah, good. The proof is in the pudding. He has slowly declined, and um, he's 52 years old. But what do you expect? It's hard when you hear somebody read, say, or write those things. It's hard when your life is public, when there's opinions about you out in the world. It stings a little when you hear somebody say that. Whether it's true or not, cool, yeah. it doesn't matter. Let's surf. All right. What's amazing is him actually even being relevant and being able to compete. He only won a couple years ago. Kelly Slater has just won his eighth Billabong Pro Lifeline. I committed my life to this, you know, all the heartbreak, but I just savor this and this is the best one in my life. I mean, Kelly's such a freak, you know what I mean? Like the fact that he's mixing it up and winning events is insane. Even just getting out of bed and competing with these young guys is a big deal. Like that's a major accomplishment to be able to compete at a high level physically as a 52 year old. He's been on this tour for longer than anybody. It's a miracle that he's still here. It's not normal. The GOAT, Kelly Slater. For Kelly Slater, my 2024 year is just celebrating my career as a champion and walk away with my head held high. How are you guys? Good to see you. How you been? Let's go. Buddy. How are you? What's up, man? Good to see you. Another mic. I only have two on. Can't you just tap into these things? Jesus Christ. There's a reason for so many mics. The surfing world always wants to hear what Slater has to say, and more importantly, when he plans to walk away. When you turn 50, things are different. With family and work and goals and desire. All right. Competition's been my platform for so long. I don't really know much else. When I step away from full-time competition, I won't be at a loss. You know, it'll be, for me, it's a celebration. What's motivating me okay. is pipeline. I love right. surfing pipeline. All right, I'm done. Let's surf. Yeah. Morning, guys. How you doing? Good. All right. Ethan Ewing coming up against the eight-time pipe you. champion, Kelly Slater. Fun. Kelly Slater is about to paddle out into his 31st appearance at Pipeline. His fountain of youth is Pipeline. The it's the one wave where he is timeless. It's where he belongs. When we talk about surfers having a relationship with a wave, top three of all time, and it has to be Pipeline and Kelly Slater. Here we go, Kelly, up and riding, in a barrel, at back door, disappeared, and Kelly Slater is going to keep traveling and does not reach the opening. Ethan Ewing, late drop, side slipping into the barrel, he's deep, he's disappeared, and Ethan Ewing is coming out! Double E! Slater right behind him. Pulls into a barrel of his own, gets through some turbulent water there. He goes down, still seeking a completion. Kelly Slater, look at the break, that 12.66 combo, gets in the barrel, sits under the curtain, comes out. And going for the alley-oop and lands it. Kelly now, leading a 9.66. Here we go, Slater, straight into it, winding Aww. down the line. We see Kelly Slater bow out of competition. You know, I can blame the ocean, but it was really my impatience. I was really looking forward to this event. I think it's really important for all of us who've been watching Kelly forever, or if you're just watching him for the first time, you really have to be present in this moment of his career because 
we don't know. When is he going to decide to walk away? And that would be the greatest of all time moving on. I'm not going to make an announcement. I think I'm just going to retire when I do. Just kind of step away, but we'll see. Molly putting her head down, grabs her rail of the pipeline, pulls up and under. Your last score, perfect 10. That semi-final heat was history made. I don't think we've ever seen women surf to that caliber at Pipeline ever. Betty Lou dropping in, grabbing rail. It was just monumental for women in not just surfing, but sport as well. We're on standby for the score. There's been many major milestones in women's surfing, and their performance standards continue to be pushed especially at Pipeline. Moana, wow. the young phenomena continues her assault at the Bonsai Pipeline. It all started with a few female icons paving the way. When we look back at the really iconic female surfers at Pipe, there's been a bunch of women throughout generations who have put time in here in this lineup and, and really fought against waves. You think about who came before for this moment, and you have to think about Margot Oberg, Rochelle Ballard, Lisa Anderson, Megan Abuba, Kiala Kennelly. I had to just go and get burned and get stuffed and take really gnarly wipeouts and stuff behind guys just to get the respect. This is the most competitive lineup in the world. Being able to surf pipeline with no one else in the lineup is so important to the growth and evolution of women's surfing because they've never, we've never been given the opportunity. And now we have the opportunity to showcase to the world that this is where women's surfing is going. Bigger backdoor section, pulls straight in, driving through, comes out. Good golly, Miss Molly. They told me to stand still, so I'ma keep on running. Women have really staked their claim here at Pipeline, and not just sitting out there in the lineup, they're packing bombs. In the barrel, Tyler Wright comes out. You're seeing more confidence, taking off deeper, getting deeper in the barrel. Because there's an event out here, that has really helped professional women surfing at Pipe Backdoor. There's gonna be a massive shakeup. Some of these younger girls coming up the ranks that are feeling really established, like a Betty Lucifer, a Johnson, Molly Piccolo, they have that confidence from being rookies already. They're starting to really believe that they belong. It's just really cool to see how many of the new generation are really progressing the sport. You can see it in their eyes. They've got this determination, and you can tell they want it. That's what it takes, is a holistic effort of everybody backing women surfing to surf the craziest, most dangerous wave in the world. I think this is a turning point in women's surfing. It's gonna push all of us to like do things we never thought we could. I'm still feeling this change in the guard. I'm still feeling this new generation coming into play. And when we look at the quarterfinals, Katie Simmers has so much courage in her surfing. She draws different lines to the other girls, you know? She charges and it seems like she reads the ocean really, really well, which is really crucial for the girls to get into positions to catch hard waves. Tati's fearless. She hits any big section more than I think than almost any other girl on tour. This is going to be a test for our women. The girl that wins a part pro today will have to have left her fears at home. The women's quarterfinals, Tatiana Weston-Webb in the blue, Caitlin Simmers in the red. Caitlin has first priority right now. Caitlin Simmers at back door. Oh, Simmering, boiling on the stove and coming out. Wow. Jeez. Behind the pig, completely backdooring that section. That is what we love to see. 917 for Katie Simmers. She's out to prove that she means business. The smile coming off of her face right now is incredible. As we see now, Tati finding some room to move in Pipeline. She'll still be chasing Katie's lead. We are in a gladiator pit. I mean, when there's when there's a lot of people in the water, here we go. Oh, Kate and Simmer is grabbing the rail. Wow! Her technique is just absolutely textbook. She is an icon of the sport. Caitlin Simmers dominating over Tatiana Weston-Webb. 
Those were my two only waves I've had my whole season here. Like, I kind of can't really get waves here, so I was terrified out there, but I'm glad I got some. Yay! <laughs> Quarterfinal number three, Caroline Marks, Betty Lou Sakura Johnson. Pipeline has offered Sakura her best CT result. That was a semi-final placing. She's just still a teenager. Oh, She's got uh, open eyes. She's learning. So what I expect from her is a little more maturity. And that's a dangerous combo because she's got a lot of talent. Caroline Marks, six years on the championship tour. She's already won a world title at just 21 years old. Having the world title with you, you, you become a new person. There is that experience to draw on. And if you can focus on that, the second one will come. This is Caroline Marks versus Betty Lou Sakura Johnson. Room, Both of these women charge. Caroline goes pipeline, gets behind the barrel. The easy one for Caroline Marks. Back doorway for Sakura. Pumps through there. Strains out for completion. Sakura's got a strong lead over Caroline Marks. Big sets coming through here. And Sakura's on the move. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this one. Sakura, this thing's a beast. Spin through Sakura right. Johnson. Comes up. That thing was a spooky, scary, wide, dredging backdoor barrel. Coming after the spin, that was just perfectly reading. That was the best wave of the day so far on the woman's side. That was as good as it gets for backdoor. That's everything today is committing to those waves early, committing to the drop, and then she was rewarded with the barrel. That was the easy part. A 9.7. Her highest single wave score of her professional career. <laughs> Betty Lou, Sakura Johnson, moving on into semi-final two. You just have to keep putting time, especially here at Pipe, and yeah, just really happy to get these conditions, these waves, and I think all of us girls, all, even the men, are just, these are the days we dream of. Absolutely stole the show. Sakura was ready for the moment. She's put in the time in all aspects of her surfing, and we're starting to see that confidence that she has in herself, in the water, in how she wants to win come through. Imai has first priority. He's going to swing at this back door section. Behind the curtain, Imai looking for the exit. No. Fiovanti airdrops it, comes screaming out. John up and riding in the barrel and coming out with the spin. 50 seconds. Can John John come back? Hold the horses. Here comes John John. Deep in pipeline, looking for the oh. exit. Welcome back to the Lexus Pipeline Pro. Good morning, everybody, and what a Saturday morning that we have for you for the Lexus Pipe Pro, the Hawaiian Water Patrol activated for finals day. It's pumping and it's eight to 10 feet with some wild peaks. It's uh, like a 13 second interval. Makes the waves move really kind of slower, but they stand up on the reef super tall. So. It's going to be, you know, an epic day of finals. Let's go. The stage is set. Glassy conditions. Big, wide open caves if you want it. The quarterfinals get underway, and Imai Kalani DeVault comes close to perfection. Imai on the takeoff, pulls in late, deep, behind the curtain. Imai looking for the exit. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was a 10. Oh, that was my quarter final number two is going to be Baron Mamiya taking on Jordy Smith. The past three years, I kind of went into a little bit of a slump. This off season was just all about training. Surfing came second for once. I'm not the youngest guy on tour anymore, so you got to kind of put in extra effort and extra hours. But I still have the same fire. I still have the same burn to win. I grew up watching, you know, all the best surfers in the world surf pipe. I always knew that like, if I wanted to be one of the best surfers at Pipe, I would have to win the Pipe contest. And Pipe's like up there with winning a world title. That's at the pinnacle for me, for sure. As we get set up for this classic, 
Jordy Smith locking in against Mumia. Big deep cave, and that one explodes. <laughs> and takes down the South African local boy, Para Mumia. Nice to take off right behind him with the arm bar. And comes out without a problem. Jordy made a bit of a mistake there. He probably needed to do one big pump. He would have made that barrel. Yeah, that was radical. Absolute fireworks to start this heat. Mumia without priority. Oh, man, Jordy's going to be kicking himself. As Jordy comboed within a few minutes. An absolute show from the North Shore local boy. He's really playing with it. This is so last minute. The first time I surfed out here, I think I was eight or, or nine, or I was, I was pretty young. Uncle Derek took me out, and my first wave, I just cartwheeled down the face, and I was like, wow, this is, this is crazy. I just got pounded, but then my next wave was fun, and yeah, I just fell in love with wave ever since. John Florence is a former two-time world champion and considered the most talented surfer in the world. But even the best have challenges to overcome. Yeah, I think the mindset and the confidence for me ebbs and flows. I think it's, uh, I spent a lot of my career chasing what that motivation is, you know? For me, competing has always been a really cool kind of platform in that way. Last year, I struggled with it. John John Florence comboed and a nearly impossible task. Medina, 19 point, two wave total. John John going down. I think last year was perfect for this year. And what I mean by that is it was kind of irritating for him finishing eighth. He was pissed, he was hungry. You know, he obviously wanted to finish really high. Oh my God, inside I was like screaming, just uh, uh, tearing the, down the scaffolding. Like, no, don't talk to me. I don't want to, I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to be here. <laughs> I just I internalize it. John's a pretty low key guy and mellow. So when he has that extra fuel, I think it's a good thing. I honestly feel like John sees the next few years as like a really important chapter in his life of like being at that apex part of his surfing career, physically, psychologically. And I feel like he's planning on having a massive year. Barrel and pipeline, John John. He's getting older and surfers keep getting better and better. It's been a few years since he's won, you know, so there's always those challenges you need to overcome mentally to like get back into the winner's circle. Still going, come on. I think if I were to win another world title at this stage of my career, it will definitely be different. But I just feel like I have a little bit of unfinished business. It's just all part of this process, trusting myself and going to the heat, taking a deep breath, letting go and just surf. Like almost smiling and just saying like, I can't wait for my first wave to come right now. Like that would be pretty satisfying. Quarterfinal four, John John Florence versus Leonardo. I mean, obviously, John is the favorite. This is the quarterfinal I've been looking forward to. The two-time world champ, eight event wins, and we're celebrating John John's 100th career event here at Pipe. Leo, he's one of the gnarliest guys I hear at Pipe. I think we're going to see some fireworks before the end. Here we go, back door. Fiovanti airdrops into this one. It's a wide open barrel. Fiovanti comes screaming out. Paddle back very easy. That was a beautiful way for him and very smart. Can John John come back? Pipeline. He sees this wave, has potential. He just gets deep enough, gets the speed out, and he's going to get rewarded. He's done that about 10,000 times out here. <laughs> Pretty cool. Here goes Leo. He just needs a three point ride. Make it, make it, make it. That should do it. A voracious competitor. Finish it off as well. Like, he knows how important every little bit is. He did a 2.84. He got a flat three point ride. No time on the clock, really. It's a 50 second, guys. 50 seconds. Hold the horses. Here comes John John. John John Florence. Oh. Big girthy Let's pipe go. barrel. John John <laughs> comes out. John John need a 4.67. Look at the numbers coming through. An 8.0. John wins the heat. John John has just turned the heat in the final 30 seconds. Wow. I knew we were going to have a nail biter, but man, that was incredible. I ended up being a little deeper than I thought I was. And then I got a good pump though. And it was, it was just a fun, fun way. I was just thinking, I was like, if I make this heat, I'm, I'm changing my strategy the next one. <laughs> Insane finish. Epic for John John. And I can't wait to see the girls next. Can't wait. 
Blue. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson now in position for a bomb. Super gnarly committed drop. I think this was a moment in women's surfing history. It will go down as one of the greatest heats ever. The stage is set here at the Bonsai Pipeline. Glassy conditions, big wide open caves if you want it. It'll be so fun. It's actually going to be crazy waves go down today. I think I'm going to go biggest board I got and just yeehaw into a couple of like. Everyone on the beach is super excited, especially us up in the tower. I genuinely think this is probably the best day that we've seen and it's going to be firing. It's going to be well double overhead, I reckon, for the whole day. Ooh, perfect day to crown some champions. The girls have been knocking on the door to some great performances for a long time. The girls just need to trust how good they are and take some risks and they're going to have a wide open canvas and be able to have a lot of space to maybe take the best wave of their life. Coming into semi-final two, we've got a great matchup. It's Molly Pickham taking on Betty Lou. Molly and Betty have grown up sparring against each other their whole lives. They bring this intensity together, which I think is going to be amplified in this heat. She's a great competitor. She's hard to beat. She's got some little tricks up her sleeve. Betty Lou is all fireworks. Sakura is so competitive on anything. Yes. She likes to get the claws out. She's like a spicy one. She's crazy. She's feisty. I'm spicy. She's like, you know, do whatever she wants to get what she wants. And then all of us are like, well, we will, we will do that too then. And me and Molly like love to compete against each other. We have a great understanding of where we're coming from and how bad we want to get there. And whatever it is, we're going to like fight for it. Semi-final heat number two. Quite the storybook matchup right here. These two want to beat each other more than anything. Betty Lou just lunging into daylight. What an easy make for the North Shore local. She saw that one coming and you can just tell she knows what she's looking for out there. Molly will want to go anything. She wants a ball and she wants that Hail Mary moment. She wants the 10. Here we go, out the back. Molly putting her head down, grabs her rail the pipeline, pulls up and under. She's still going and gets the exit. Oh my goodness. This was absolutely insane. Grabs the rail, pulls up underneath the lip, comes flying out with the spit. Molly has a dial. She is so sure of herself. Molly Picklow, your last score was a perfect 10. I'm so stoked for her. That is an iconic wave. What a moment for her to remember forever. This heat is far from over. Molly Picklow swinging again. This one spitting her out into the channel. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson now in position for a bomb. Dropping in, pipeline barrel pulls in under the hook, spat out. Betty Lou and Molly Picklum yeah. absolutely charging. Such a moment for women surfing. It honestly is bringing tears to my eyes. This is history being made right now. Betty Lou has dreamed of this. It's her last chance to try to turn this heat. And here she goes, looking for an 8.61. She pulls in. She salutes the hometown crowd. Stand by for the last score. Betty Lou, an 8-3-3. Molly Picklum survives oh. and moves on to the final. This is crazy.